I love Ruby. So the I love fucking I love, I love Ruby. I love weapons. I love guns. I love shooting Steven Universe. Oh, I love Ruby. 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 I love from their presence. What's up with me, Robbie Rose here. I'm here to tell you about fucking Ruby. Everyone's fucking wrong, you're all fucking shit. No one knows anything about this show. Everyone believes lies. Hey, farmer guy's a fucking hack. Kill yourself. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> this is the Ruby lecture. Here, take this site. Cool, I don't need to hold that. Now, what do you people know about Ruby? The people in here, the audience, what do you know? I wonder, tell me. Jack shit, I don't, I'm, I've, I've never seen an episode. Radical, big metal shoe. You, what do you know? Cute girls, big guns, big sword, big, big dicks. There you go, that's that's entirely accurate. Go, I don't know God. shit, I think it's fucking sick though. You're fucking right, okay, you in the back. Victor. Uh, uh, Victor hi Yona. everyone, it's me, Victor. Um, are we at Blackwell Academy? <laughs> no. What? What academy are we at? We're we're fucking Beacon right now. Oh. No. I get those mixed up. What do you know? Uh, Ruby really wants to grind on Ragnar the Blood Edge's sword. Is that? It? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> What's up? Okay. So here's how. The, here's. Here's how we're gonna. Here's how it starts. We're gonna go through. We're gonna explain. We're gonna explain the op the opening. The opening season. The opening season. You know what? It's kind of. It's 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 not. It's not terrible. But it's kind of gay. You know. We're just, we're just gonna get. We're gonna get through. Give me that. Give me that. Give me the mask. You pass it around if you want. Whatever. That's what it looks like. The mask's cool. It's got dragons and shit on it. Dragons and shit on it. Yeah, because that's what they look like. Anyways. Map. Anyways, here's here's the main character. Here's your first character you see. It's Ruby Ruby Rose. She's cute. Ruby Rose here. Yeah, she's pretty cute actually. I like her. Yeah. She's cool. Except her voice. Like nah, her fuck voice. you. Don't be don't be weird about I like her it. Her voice. And then I gotta I gotta tape up every fucking character in this wall. All right, this is where our journey begins. <laughs> We got we got Ruby fucking Sieg Heil everybody. <laughs> Yo Ruby, Yo, shout out to the Ruby, white bee. bro. Okay, so op opening opening of the story. Ruby is in uh she's in a she's in a dust shop because we're doing we're doing a send up of the scene where she's in a she's in a store and the store is about to be robbed and she's in there she's listening to her headphones she's looking at like Full Metal Alchemist reference material which is just sitting there on the uh, uh, on a comic stand. Meanwhile, some guy comes up to her and is like. Yo, bitch, get on the fucking ground. And she's like, are you trying to, like, mug me, man? And then she she reaches, like, behind her cloak, and she pulls out a giant fold-out scythe and just fucking murks the man right on the spot, kills him, sends him flying through a window, and then, jump, and then like, jumps outside with a big whoosh, and then fights, like, a bunch of guys, kills them all, and is super cool. Uh, there's oh, yeah, a second it, guy... Is it actually, do they actually die, the people that they beat up? Um, yes, sometimes. Sometimes they're just, like, arrested or whatever. Okay, is it, is it safe to die. say that, char that in terms of cool. establishing the tone, characters only die when they're explicitly killed? Um, characters usually, yes, they only die when they're, they only die when they're explicitly killed. Okay. Did okay. this guy die? Uh, did the guy she just immediately yes. murk? Yeah, he doesn't get back up. He's okay, fucking gone. Yeah, he's fucking dead. <laughs> right. uh, so we open map. with our adorable main character you. murdering someone. Okay. Well, it's like a video game. Okay, movie. meanwhile, there's a ringleader. He's also there. This guy's name is Roman Torchwick. I didn't know that. I did not know that. <laughs> Don't worry. I wrote down all their names on the back. <laughs> Even though I know most of them, but man, some of these fucking last names, I'm like, what? How do you remember that? Who wrote that? <laughs> okay, anyways, here you go. Here, here's Roman Torchwick. He'll be important going forward, so he's gonna go over here. Now, uh, Roman Torchwick, he sees, he sees like, oh shit, there's a fucking girl here. She's got a big gun and a big sight. Cause guess what? Her sight, it folds out into a sniper rifle. <laughs> which is totally sick. 
For real. No, that was fucking For real. Anyways, um, so he sees this, and he's like, fuck this, we out of here. And then him and the rest of his gang, they bug out, they get into like a, into like a bird bird Question. What is dust? We're gonna, Why are they stealing it? We're explaining that in a moment. Okay. Anyway, so, Sorry. uh, so they go to get away, and then, uh, guess what? This lady shows up, and she's there in response. Her name is Glenda Goodwitch. Uh, she's, uh, yeah, that's her name. Her name is Glenda Goodwitch. You gotta get a lot of those names. <laughs> yep. There's some pretty good names in Ruby. I gotta, I'm not gonna lie. So anyway, is there also an what, alphabet? What that name is based is there on also one? a what? Is there also an alphabet? Uh, no, there is not an alphabet. I think there's a name that's kind of close to that. I don't know. You can tell me. Uh, oh, for, for anyone in the audience, uh, including you, folks at home, uh, anytime you spot a, lip, uh, a reference to some kind of fairy tale or something, uh, point it out. Glenda uh, you Good get a, Witch. From the, the, she's the Good Witch from, from L, L. Frank Baum's In the comments down below. Wizard of Oz. Okay, what's up? She sits there because she's not as important. Give, give her the tape. No, give he, her the, he keeps the tape. Okay, you know what? Yeah, yeah you know that, what? It would be smoother. Yeah, it is smoother. Here, pull my drink. Here, yeah. Tape, tape him up. Anyways, while he's taping, while he's taping up the next character. Uh, dust. Uh, here's what dust is. Dust is like there um, in this world. The world is called remnant. Um, there is uh, several continents, but whatever. Most of the uh, technology in the world is based off this thing called dust. Dust is basically magic. You can do whatever the fuck you want with it. There's different types. It's like a whole fucking table of them. Um, for example, there's like fire dust, ice dust, uh, earth dust, gravity dust. Uh, there's all kinds of shit. Uh, basically, like it's just a different color, like Stardust. crystal. Uh, I think so. I think at some point, there's like whatever fucking dust you want. I love that movie. Uh, there's like, is there an Elysian tail dust? There's at least like eight or nine different ones, I think. Um, they power basically everything. So all the society has like, they have like pretty advanced technology for their time period. Uh, so like, you know, they have like holograms and like robots and shit. Uh, uh, but a couple things about technology level. Uh, one, they've never been to space. Because there's a weird thing where whenever you leave the atmosphere, dust like starts to lose, lose effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And then once you break like out of orbit, it just like completely shuts off and stops working. No one knows why that is. So the magic, it's Magitech and it's tied to the planet. Yeah, it's tied to the planet. Okay. It's like Final Fantasy VII or something. When does Sephiroth um, merge with the life stream? That happens in volume three. <laughs> okay, anyways. Uh, continuing back, uh, uh, Ruby, after after helping stop a, a, a bank, a like, robbery for a dust shop uh, for the Sneed Dust Company. That's foreshadowing for later. Uh, uh, this guy, this guy, like, they pull, they bring her in to, like, a, an interview room. They sit her down. They give her some cookies. Because, you know, they're not the police. They're, they're just like, yeah. who the fuck are you? Take the whole plane. Yeah, she's like a 15-year-old girl, and she's got a scythe and like a huge sniper rifle, and they're like, where the fuck you come from? Uh, this dude, he's the headmaster of, and also, like, the leader of the country, because the thing is, all the, so there's five countries, four of them are, have like a big academy that is like in their capital, um, so this guy is the uh, head of Beacon Academy, his name's Ozpin. Doesn't have a last name. I get it. Oz. Like the good witch from the same thing. Yeah. Question. What is the function of these academies? Uh, the academies. They're made to train uh, hunters and huntresses. Basically, badasses that go around and they gotta hunt monsters and like do and like do quests for people. There's like boards around where you can go if you have a hunter's license and you can sign up for a quest and you can do it to help people. And then the government pays you. Um, hmm. Yeah. Uh, they have, so there's there's more academies than just the four, like there's like little small ones, but usually you go to those and then you transfer to a big one. Sometimes you transfer to one that's like out of country if you want that one specifically. Beacon is like the big badass one that everyone wants. It's like in the center uh, of the world. It's like on both players lines. It's like Britain because they made the map. Fuck them. <laughs> Look, we're, 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 South should be on top. That's what we're talking about. The South shall rise again. <laughs> you hear this? The South shall rise again. Put Africa on top. Straight like, up. Fucking God. Put Africa on top. The South shall rise again. Okay. Um. 
So anyways, this is Beacon Academy. Um, it's in the city of Vail in the country uh, that's also named Vail. Um, like New York, New York. Yeah, like New York, New okay. York. Um, so, uh, this guy, he, rec he recognizes something in this girl. Even though she's too young to enroll in the academy, he sees potential in her and he's like, you know what, you can join. We'll, we'll, let you, we'll just bypass the age restriction. We don't give a shit. <laughs> so he's like, even though you're 15, you can train to be a soldier. That's she's cool. totally old enough, guys. She's mature for her age. Um, yeah, she's kind of mature for her age. Um, she's like kind of a ditz, but she's like, she's got like a strong personality. She's like a leader type. Uh, so anyways, Tenacious. after that, next characters, next few characters, really. So, uh, she shows up to Beacon, uh, which she came here just to, uh, straight up, she was just here to visit this girl. This girl is, uh, Yang Zhao Long. Uh, Yang Zhao Long and Ruby Rose, they're sisters. Okay. Biolo they have, biological. They are biological sisters, okay. half-sisters. Uh, they share a dad. Mm. Gotcha. Their dad gotcha. shows up later. His name is a Tai Zhao Long. So that's a, that's a Yang. Is there a Bernie? Um, <laughs> no. Damn it. Close, though. Close. Yeah, There's I one just, that's close. I, I just realized, because, like, Yin is the black one and Yang is the not black one. So that makes sense. Sort of. Yeah, she isn't really a reference. Um. No, she's a reference to something. She's a reference to some Chinese thing. I don't remember. Yeah, go. What's, her, what's Yang's personality like? Uh, Yang's personality. Uh, she's basically a party girl. She doesn't give a fuck. Uh, she's real tough. She beats people up. She's like Pinkie Pie. Oh, okay, so she's literally she's a Pinkie Pie. Uh, yeah, so uh, her weapon is that she has fisticuffs that are gauntlets and also, sh like, not shotguns, but they shoot shotgun, like, flares and rockets. Uh, whenever she punches. And, and, she, like, and to reload, she goes like this, and it, like, cocks, and a bunch of shells shoot out. Uh, she can also use them to, like, launch herself by, like, punching behind her. Uh, it's pretty sick. But is that all of her abilities? Uh, yes. There is actually... Good good job. <laughs> uh, a promotion. You're now, you're now Victor Mignona. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so, something, uh, something that I've kind of glossed over until now. Uh, whenever uh, she showed up to stop... The big vertebrate from getting away. Uh, she 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 waved she waved her wand and shot like a bunch of bolts at it. Uh, uh, Ruby, whenever she dashed out, she like turned into like a spiral with her coat and then like shot out the window. Uh, Yang also has an ability. Uh, these abilities are called semblances. These semblances are like abilities that each person has. They're usually unique-ish. Some of them like share. It's like their My Hero Academia quirk. Kind of. Yeah. Um, uh, there's stuff later where people start asking, like, what even is a semblance? Like, what does it, like, what does it come from? And it's like, some, some cultures believe, like, some countries believe, like, um, uh, like, Mistral. People in Mistral believe that, like, your semblance, like, stems from your personality. And then people in, um, in the starter place, which is Vale, uh, they kind of believe a mix of things. Either um, it's, it enforces your personality, or it creates it, or there's no connection. No one really knows. So it's horoscopes. It's basically horoscopes, mm -hmm. yes. But useful. But useful, because they also give you superpowers. So <laughs> hers is like a speed thing, where she can like go super fast and like turn into like rose petals. Yeah, her body, her, her, the wiki specifically states that her body, like, decomposes on a molecular level and reconstructs as a bunch of rose petals, yes. which allows her to be really, really fast. Yes. Um, the fastest thing known to man, mm -hmm. rose petals. Exactly. Uh, Yang's look. ability is that she, uh, whenever she gets, like, hurt a lot or, like, really pissed off, uh, her eyes turn red and then her hair, like, catches on fire. Uh, and she gets like a huge burst of energy, and afterwards she's like fucking dead. It's a yeah, it's a last breath. Yeah, she has a she has like a last stand mode, basically. Um, like next character, character, next character they meet uh, while on campus. This is this is wife Snee. That's my wife. Yeah, that's 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 your wife. That's right my there. wife. Okay, this is wife Snee. Uh, Snee Weiss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Snee. Uh, remember what the company was called? Snee Dust Company. Yeah. Uh, her her. Uh, her family is like super rich. They have like a fucking monopoly on dust in like most places. Um, her ability 
Uh, well, she has a rapier that has a revolver in the base that's like filled with different types of dust so she can do different shit. So um, her ability is that she can make circles that like can either s like summon and shoot stuff based on whatever... Oh yeah, your, sem uh, your semblance is usually powered by dust or like being forced by dust. So like you use dust to activate it. Um, mm. And when you do different dust, it does different things sometimes. Um, so hers, she can like put in different elements and her circles that she makes, which are like alchemist circles that appear either in the air or on the ground, uh, they can shoot different stuff. Yes. That's why this lecture is useful because I was under the impression that like she, because of her like color scheme and her name, she is like, the character is like largely associated with ice. Yeah. So I thought that it was like a weird overlap between the magic system and her semblance that she could make ice. So, but she needs ice dust like anyone else. Yeah, she needs dust. Otherwise she can't really ice do anything. Okay. Um, some people can do like, Ruby can do Ruby is like kind of fast, but I think she needs her weapon in order to like do her semblance, which is where they store all the dust in. Because it's like temperamental. Like if you drop it, it'll explode. Mm. Yeah. So it's like a it's like a video game fucking red barrel. If you pick it up, <laughs> you better fucking be gentle with it when you put it back down. So when everyone carries stuff around, they carry it in like cases with like padding. Yeah, and shit. It's, it's like locked briefcases. Yeah, locked cases normally. And like they store like super small amounts in like huge cases. Um and then the last character they meet uh, uh, when they show up to school is so this is this is Blake this is Blake Belladonna uh, this is uh, this is not my wife but hey she's totally cool she's awesome um, her semblance is that okay her weapon is also she has a pistol that folds out into a sword like a short sword and also it has like a ribbon on it that's like. 30 feet long or something, and she can use that to, like, swing it around. Does she not have two? Uh, she no, has the she, sheath. Has she holds one. on to the sheath, and that's connected to the She also uses the, the sheath. Sword with the, ribbon. the sheath is, like, a guard that she uses. <sighs> yeah. um, and if she puts the sheath on it, it turns into, like, a kind of short, like, rifle. Um, uh, her semblance is that she can make, she can, like, make a clone of herself that she leaves behind that does stuff based on what element it is. So if it's fire and someone hits it, then it'll explode. If it's ice and someone hits it, it'll like turn into ice and like steal their weapon and like lock it in it. Stuff like that. Um, she's a she's a ninja. She's a furry ninja. Yeah. Uh, so she has doppelganger style. Yeah, she's wearing a ribbon right now, but actually underneath the ribbon, she's hiding like cat ears. Because um, this is a thing that shows up even in season one. Uh, so there's people called Faunus. They're basically furries. Mm. Uh, except like they're pretty minor changes most of the time. They're like also fluoresces. Some people gain like some people gain like a can use their stuff for like a slight ability. So like Blake has like really good hearing. Uh, you can tell because they'll like flip her ears around whenever something happens. No way. And then like they're really good about animating their ears. By the way, it's like kind of impressive. Cool. They have really good expressions. Um, yeah, that's Blake. There's some pretty major abilities later. Like some people just have wings. Yeah. Does she also have human ears on the sides of her head? Uh, yes. yes. So, so, so she has four ears. She has four ears. Got it. I mean, why yeah. not? Yeah. What about yeah. it? Super hearing. So yeah. is 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 uh is the faunus stuff like mostly limited to like appendages, like tail, ears, that kind of thing? Um, yes. Some people have like claws. Some people have like their whole body is like kind of kind of different. Like there's a lady uh, who, who's named Tok who shows up way later who's like a crocodile lady she has like a tail her skin is like armored and she has like a huge mouth that's like filled with sharp teeth but it's a huge it's like kind of a human mouth yeah it's, she's like a it's still like kind of human but it's just like wider okay so if you were a cow then you'd get like hooves or uh, horns. horns yeah or, you usually uh, yeah. have you does everyone, get... keep, does everyone keep their fingers um you wouldn't get yes like, but some stuff. people have like webbed hands because okay. they're like either fish, fish or mer people. Yeah. Um, there's like some dolphin people. I think there's some some faunas can like straight up breathe underwater. Mm. Um, so it's basically like whatever minor animal ability that you would want is like you can have that just like stitched onto a person. Yeah, and that's like not that's not counted as a semblance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just um, a natural ability. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so while 
So they enter the academy. Uh, they're not a team yet, but this is just the characters we know. We also meet some other side characters who will be important later. First one we meet is this guy. His name is John Ark. That's our guy. John Ark is our guy. He's John Ark. He's your guy. He's, He's your best friend. Our guy, John Ark. He goes down here. He's a footballer, obviously. Uh, no, he's kind of like a bitch. Uh, you know, <laughs> he comes from a family where uh, he's he's the youngest of like seven children, and all the other people in his family are girls. Hmm. So he kind of has like a whiny disposition, and is kind of a bitch. Um, he's our guy. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's real positive. Our, he's our he's rock positive. league. He's positive. He's very he's based and guy. friendly. He's, oh, he's, okay. he's, he's our he's, he's the our champion guy. of the people rock league. Correct. Yeah, yeah. he's our guy. Because um, he doesn't he hasn't discovered a semblance yet at the beginning of the show. Yes, yeah, so at the beginning of the show, he has not discovered a semblance. He is uh, here. His weapon is a sword. It's shield. a shield that goes in a whole that goes in a normal sheath, but the sh the sheath folds out into a shield. Um. So he kind of doesn't have a projectile. Uh, no, he does not have a projectile. Some characters just don't have projectiles. Uh. Not every character has a gun. Okay. Um, but I, I think that's kind of to display that he's like kind of a wimp. Is that he yeah, I think that actually, with him in particular, I think that contrasts the fact that he's like Joe Normal. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's actually a skillful choice. Kind of plain. Um, so whenever they go to the Academy, uh, for, uh, first thing that happens is New Year. So, um, or it's the first year. So whenever you go to the Academy, the Academies are only two years, two year stints normally. Um, so whenever they get there, they have a, a ritual where they basically fling you into a forest um, full of monsters, and they say, like, okay, in the middle of the forest, there's a, there's an altar, you gotta go to it, and then whoever shows up uh, and takes, like, the same type of item, like, you get put on the same team. And the items are, like, symbolic. They're, like, chess pieces. Mm. There's a weird thing with chess pieces sometimes. Like, chess pieces come up more than once. They come up, like, three or four times. Is this another horoscope type system that you could sort yourself into a la Hogwarts houses? Presumably, except they never explain it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably just so people don't are don't fucking harass about it. <laughs> so that people can be in little teams with their friends. Uh, yeah. So anyways, they get uh, so to launch to launch them into the forest, they literally just go like, okay, everybody stand on these little podiums. And then the podium just fucking launch you. Like, they're just <laughs> springboards. Uh, so this guy doesn't know how to fucking fly, so he just, like, crashes through some trees. Uh, most of these guys, like, can survive, like, any fall. Because she can, like, launch herself. Uh, she can, like, pogo hop on her sight. Because she can stand on the sight and then shoot the gun straight down. And that'll let her pogo hop to, like, negate fall damage. Um, she can, like, just summon circles to run on. Or like slide on them, like uh, like Frozone. It's pretty oh, sick. Oh yeah. Um, Man, I know Frozone. And she can like just like Spider Man swing around because her gun is like a hook, and she just throws it like grappling hook all the time. Uh, it's pretty sick. She can also oh whenever she does a clone, she like shoots out of the clone, so it propels her. Um, so they go, they fight some stuff, they fight some bears, whatever. This guy gets bitched out by a bear, and then uh, some other. Uh, this girl comes to save her. Give me that one. Uh, this girl, this is this is Pira Nikos. Yeah, our girl. Yeah, yeah, she's the she's the lady of the people. Yeah. Okay, Pira Nikos. Uh, what's her deal? Uh, she's like a Spartan type deal. She has a little thing, a tiny so a tiny shield, and a sword. A buckler. The sword can fold out into either a like repeating rifle, or it can fold out into a spear. And on the back of the spear is the gun end, and she can throw it and shoot it at the same time to like boost it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sick. Does she throw? She can also her throw her spear as like a Captain America thing, where it like bounces between things. Yeah, her shield. Yeah, yeah her shield. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Um, and her semblance is secret from everybody else because she doesn't. Because some people just don't broadcast it. She's clearly the best character so far. Yes. Yeah, so, sorry, sorry, you, you said spear twice. To, to clarify, she does not have a spear. She does. No, no, it's a spear. It's a sword that can it's transform a sword that into a spear. turns into a gun and then can fold out oh, even more so into a spear. It becomes a, a javelin. Yeah, yes. a javelin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She's, like a, she's like a Roman she's a legion Spartan. type. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's a Spartan, okay. Uh, her semblance is secret, but um, her, because she doesn't show it off, because some people like to keep it secret if it's more subtle. So hers is magnetism, so she can, like... Uh, use magnetism to like pull metal objects around, including 
um, including all of her weapons. So that's how she can like throw it and it bounces between a bunch of shit. Some people just think, damn, she's a badass, like Jesus. How do you fucking do that? Fucking trick shot. She she's can, a gunslinger. She can use her power, her polarity magnetism powers on aluminum cans at some point, which I was very interested by. Presumably aluminum cans, yes. Presu- they weren't corrugated, so I assume they were aluminum. Who gives yeah. a shit? Yeah, it's uh, it's just metal. It's just metal. It's, it's just metal. Metal powers. It does, ignore. It, it, you can just assume like it's not aluminum. It's some fantasy material. It doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, also wandering around these woods is two other characters who uh, are introduced and are important. Uh, this is Nora Valkyrie. Uh, she no, she's the real Genki girl. Yeah, she's really Genki Pie. Let's fucking go. Yeah, yeah. This is Nora Valkyrie, and then this is also uh, this is also her cool her cool boyfriend. Not Child, really. This childhood like, friend. Childhood friend. This is Lai Ren. Um, Lyra. Uh, her deal is that she's got a big hammer that turns into a grenade launcher. Uh, and also has a rocket on it, like on the back of the hammer. Uh, oh, this guy has like dual scary. pistols with hooks on them. And they're SMGs. Uh, yeah, they're like SMGs. Uh, uh, his semblance doesn't matter right now. It'll come up later. Uh, her semblance also doesn't matter right now. It'll come up later. Um, so they fight a big, uh, they fight a big bird, and then the big bird uh, attracts like a big scorpion. Uh, oh, all the all the monsters are like black and white. So they're like made of tar, and they have like weird skeletons like jutting out of them. Yeah, like skull mask with red um, insignias. On what them. are they they're called? Heads. Yeah, they're called uh, Grim with two M's. Um, what they are is they are monsters that are um, that like spawn from like negative and bad emotions. I get it, like the Grimm's fairy tales. Yes. So wow. Um, they take like all kinds of forms, and some of them have like powers and abilities and stuff. Uh, mostly for now, this is like a bitch zone for like literal children that they're just flinging into a forest. I mean, technically, these are all 17. She's 15. They tell her, like, don't tell anybody. Don't tell nobody. Even though she's just like a, she's a yeah. fucking baby. Um, so the Grim, uh, they're attracted to bad emotions. Uh, anytime there's like a big amount of bad vibes in one place, uh, they'll just like start swarming it and killing everybody, which then makes it worse. And then. It just gets worse and worse. They just start coming up out of the ground. Shit's bad. Um, yeah, so anyways, they get through this. Uh, this is their two teams. Um, this is Team Ruby because um, every team is named after a color because in their history, there was like a big fascist thing going on for like a few hundred years um, that they were vague about in season one, but we go into later where that came from. There's a big fascist dictatorship where the, the king and the queen, they rule over all the people and they told them like, no, uh, we're like literally your gods. We're immortal. Listen to everything you say, and don't try to like think outside the box. So now that they're all now, Vale's all about like free expression, and so is everybody else. So as tradition, uh, all the teams are named after colors. So they're Ruby because it's R uh, W B Y. That's the title of the show. Uh, down here, this is Juniper because John Nora. Uh, Kira Ren. There, yeah, it's like an acronym of the first letters of all their first names, and the leader, team leader's name is always the first in the acronym. Yes, it is usually the team leader's first. Um, even though that's technically his last name, because he's like... Pseudo, it's he, he's, Chinese, he's, Japanese. Ah, yeah, he's like from the... Chinese, Chinese Japanese, China. look at these, whatever. He's from, <laughs> he's from Mistral. Actually, she's also from Mistral, because they're both in the same place. Um, she's from... A different place we'll get to way later. Okay. Uh, same place as him, actually. They're actually from the same place. Mm. Or no. He's from somewhere else, but we'll meet someone there. That's like oh, I didn't family. say it earlier, but John Arc. Yeah, John Arc. John of Arc. Yeah, that's an easy point. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is their teams. Uh, and then starts like the, the most like season one arc you could possibly imagine. Uh, there's a there's an arc where John is getting bullied mm-hmm. by, uh, by this dude who is just Biff. He's just Biff. You can look at him. His name's Carden Winchester. He's never relevant. He's Biff. Never relevant after that. He's just Biff. Don't put him on the wall. I'm not even going to put him on the wall. I'm just going to put him right here. And then uh, you can know that uh, he's bullying John. He's like, fuck you, you're a bitch. And he's like, oh, I'm such a bitch. Fuck. Uh, everyone hates me. And then Fear's like, you got to quit being a... So he goes up to him when he's on, the, on a roof because uh, he's up there brooding. And she goes up and she's like, no, dude, don't fucking do it. And he's like, what? 
I'm not that depressed. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the real thing that, that happens. Actually happens. <laughs> it's wild. It comes out of nowhere. And it's by far the best joke of season one. It's like, God damn, Jesus, I got hardcore. Uh, anyway, so then on their next mission, when they go out in the field, uh, this dude is like, yo, you go hunt down all the shit for us. We don't want to do it. Uh, uh, oh, his leverage is that he finds out that John, because he like raids, he like sees his documents or something. He finds out that John like faked his papers to get here. That's why he's like all insecure about it. He's like, oh fuck, I'm a bitch. All my parents are like super badasses, but I suck. <laughs> I couldn't even get into fucking school. I had to lie to get here. Uh, anyway, so he knows that, and he threatens to like rat him out with everybody, uh, including the teachers, getting thrown out. So that's why he's listening to him. But then at some point he just goes like, you know what? Fuck you, bro. Uh, and he like dunks. He like dunks bait on him that attracts a bunch of like wasp grim and like fucks him up and his whole team. Fuck. This guy has a team. Uh, they also they they literally don't even have names. They're so they're so unimportant. This is like maybe like a twelve minute arc. <laughs> yeah. Because all the because the first season the episodes are like three to eleven minutes just randomly. Mm. It's like the first the first episode is like six. Then it's like 11, then like 3, 4, and like a bunch of other random ones. Uh, anyways, yeah, fuck this guy, no one wants him. Um, <laughs> so after that, John's arc, uh, John's bullying arc is done, thank fucking god. <laughs> fuck that. Um, uh, then we get some new characters introduced, there's a fuck ton of characters. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Look that's how big is. the stack is. Yeah, no, give me the next three characters. Yeah, okay. Are they in season one? Yes. Yeah, they are. Um, this is in season one. So, um, we've been in school for like, what, a fucking month now? Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna have, we're gonna fill them up right here. So we've got a couple characters that all get introduced in very fast succession. Uh, these two first. So this guy, this guy's name, there's no points for guessing what this guy is. His name is Sun Wukong. Okay, yeah. But Sun with S-U-N. Uh, he's a monkey man, he's got a big tail. He's a fox. Uh, his weapon is that he has nunchucks that are also pistols that can collapse in on themselves and turn and turn into a bow staff that has guns on both ends. Yo, like, and he's a monkey? And he's a monkey. These are they're, one of my favorites. They're my flintlock favorite. pistols. Yeah, they're flintlock pistols. Reminds me of that the monkey girl from Totally from sick. Uh, he arrives into Vale. Uh, he's like a, he's an illegal immigrant. <laughs> uh, he's stowed away on a boat to get here. And then he just shows up and then just like he joins the academy just on being like a badass. Uh, he's total baller. Uh, this girl... Ospin's a good guy. Of course he hires illegal immigrants. Yeah, yeah. That's they a, them, that's, that's a thing in season education. one. They need education. If he didn't let them in, he'd turn to crime. Yeah. Uh, that's literally a thing in season one. Uh, Ospin, he pulls aside Blake at some point and goes, hey, why are you hiding your ears? You don't have to hide your ears around here. If anyone fucks with you, we will, like, take care of it. And she's like, look, I don't want people to judge me based on, like, like something that is, like, extraneous to her character. She's, like, kind of rejecting it. Um, this dude, he's, he's, like, totally down with, like, no, no, no. I'm a faunus. It's totally cool. I'm a monkey man. I'm a monkey man, and that's rad. I can, like, hang by my tail. That's beautiful. And, like, what jump can, around. What, what can you do? What can you do, humans? <laughs> um, Speaking of humans, who the fuck is that? Uh, this. This is, this is... Uh, this is Penny Polandina. Oh my god, I just had a thought. That girl looks like a penny, I swear to god. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. She looks like a penny. Like, every girl like that is always named Penny in every that's show. Facts. Yes, that's yes. Facts. yes. So she's she's the, like, autistic Genki girl. <laughs> that's fucking god! There's like, yeah. there's, like three Genki yeah, she, girls. She, she, wow, every time, it's like a great show Genki. Genki. Yeah, every time she, she meets somebody, she goes, Salutations! What a way! Wow, and like, ta- really, and, like tackles them to really hug. Even spread of like every flavor of Genki too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds like yeah. my li- It's just all the Genki girls are just getting better. It's just too much. Yeah, yeah. What's her last name? Uh, Polandina. Okay, so she's Peter Paul and Mary. Got it. There you go. Another point. Yeah. He's racking them up. <laughs> That's like what five? I got a few. You've got like two. Well, yeah, but I already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, she's like a uh, she's like a weird girl. Her her ability is that she has like eight swords that she can control with string it's more than eight. and um she can also like form them into a barrel and shoot lasers <laughs> that's so fucking sick yeah they, they, they start her. they start rotating yeah they, they start become, rotating they, they become, and like a they, ball forms of like green plasma and it shoots yeah a they, laser. Be, they become a proton cannon and she uses 
like smaller amounts of blades, it's like smaller lasers, but you can shoot more than one at once. Why can't she do that, and how is this character introduced? Uh, she literally just like shows up and goes, hi, hi, person. Yeah. Like she's like on the loose, <laughs> clearly, her ha clearly her handler has like lost her, and she's just like wandered off, and like she introduced, she's just like at the docks as well. She's like, oh, this place, sm this place smells terrible. It's great. <laughs> um, uh, so he gets off like a fish boat, and they chase him off. Uh, anyways, they they chase him down. And they're like, uh, he gets away, and Blake like kind of helps him get away, like subtly. Uh, she like intentionally fucks up, and then like crashes into Yang. Um, yeah, but he gets away. Uh, during this escapade, there is a um, an attack on the same docks that they're at. Um, uh, by again, this guy. He's got his gang. They're back. They're back. Uh, and they're stealing like whole like bunch of cargo containers of dust because um, it's a big thing. So there's a big fight. Literally, like every fucking character is there. <laughs> uh, shit's going crazy. People are like just fl like bodies are flying everywhere because like whenever these dudes fight, th these guys are like way tougher than normies because normies are just like yeah they have like a sword uh, and they're just chewing through them like a fucking Dynasty Warriors game. <laughs> Um, oh, also, so his goons, the first time, were just, like, gormless noob fucking guys in suits. Uh, like, whatever. All uh, of them were identical. All of them were identical. Yeah. They're still identical, but now they've got masks on, so, it, so it's got an excuse. Anyways, uh, now they've got masks on, uh, they look like grim skulls, and uh, all of them are faunus. Mm. Uh, they're, part of a, they're part of an organization called the White Fang, uh, which is, like, a... Uh, they're, like, a... Terror, they're not a terror organization, but they are like in open rebellion against like human oppression, mm -hmm. which is kind of a rampant problem in most countries. They're Faunus Malcolm X people. Basically. Yeah. Um, Brotherhood of Evil Faunus. Uh, in Vale, specifically, is a splinter group that are like super extreme. Um, they're like straight up trying to destroy like all human, like the human cities. They sound like my people. Hmm. Um, yeah, anyway, so big fight they arrest a bunch of them um this dude also get, this dude gets away again and yeah, then yeah, that's the microphone bro be wary be wary yeah i know okay um so afterwards uh oh fucking give me not that guy Actually, wait where's she at yeah where is she at? Uh, where is she at bro okay anyway so uh pull through until you find cinder yeah so uh the next so Whenever they pull away, um, this is the end of season one, just about. Got her. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of season one, um, this guy gets away and it shows him in his hideout, and he's like, ah. It's like, you know what? We got some stuff, but we lost a bunch of dudes. So that's unfortunate. Uh, he's telling this to his boss, who is this lady. Her name is Cinder. Hot wife. Hot babe. Hot evil wife. Because her wife. last name is Ella. Simon Soul Wound. No, she doesn't have a last name right now. I mean, I think it's, yeah. She gets a last name later. That's six for me. Yeah. Um, I assume. <laughs> I assume it's six. No, her last name isn't like that. Uh, her la she, she gets a last name later. Um, we don't live in this for a long time, but her backstory is that she's like, she's like a rare human slave who, uh, who at some point she was bought, uh, she was bought as a slave and like forced to work in servitude from like when she was like a fucking eight-year-old little girl and like her family was murdered by Grimm. Um, uh, she becomes uh, a servant at like a big fancy five-star hotel. Uh, the woman there is like totally cruel and evil but a hunter takes pity on her and like trains her in secret mm -hmm. and then at some point she like completely fucking snaps at her owners and like unlocks her semblance which is fire. She can shoot fire and shit. Is, is the caretaker who's really cruel named Lady Tremaine? Um, I, it's something like that. Like, yeah, you, you know what it is, because there's also two girls, two daughters there that also hate her. Mm. <laughs> they also torture her. Cinderella thing. Yeah. Oh, so it is Cinderella. Cinderella. Yes. But it's like. It's Cinder, yeah. Cinder it's like Killer Instinct. Minecraft. You get it. Um, so anyways, she fucking kills them, like, straight up. Uh, she yeah. just, like, stabs all of them to death and, like, burns them. And then the dude comes, the dude comes back and is like, okay, yeah, you're, you're not just, like, hot-tempered. You're, like, straight evil. Okay, I'm gonna have to, like, bring you in. 
And then she fucking kills her own master and like goes rogue. Damn. Um. Yeah. How old is Torchwick supposed to be if he's in the employ of like this teenager? Um. She's about like a vague late late teens, like twenty. She's about twenty. He's probably about like twenty five. Okay, and they and they're a coalition of like their own. Torchwick is like a bunch of criminals, and they're working with the White Fang. Yeah, he's like a local gang, um, and she has brought the White Fang uh, along with her her posse, um, and she works for somebody even like higher up yeah, that we won't see until way later. Her motivations are unclear at yeah, this point. Yeah, uh, the motivations for everybody's unclear. They're just collect. They're just stealing a shitload of dust and like, uh, and like, compiling it for later for a big evil plan. Yes. And this is just one of just one one of I think will only be like two instances where I like bring up uh, the fact that I give a shit about voice actors, which is that uh, I was really impressed when I found out that Cinder Fall is voiced by Jessica Negri because I did not love uh, uh, everyone's favorite cosplay thought. Yeah. Um, and I was incredibly impressed because I thought she had the strongest performance of the show, and I didn't recognize that it was her. Yeah, she has a pretty good performance, especially in season one. She's, like, way better than everybody else. Yeah. She sounds professional. She has, like, a real, like, she has, like, a real angle. Yeah. With her performance. Okay. Uh, season two starts. Um, uh, also, at the end of season one, um, the rest of her posse is hinted at. They're not relevant until season two. So, in season two, um, Cinder, uh, Cinder enrolls in the Academy. Uh, there's not an age limit on the Academy. There's just an age floor, mm. which has already been discarded once, but ignore that. <laughs> Yeah, look, Austin is all about child soldiers, okay? That is his fucking jam. It's his game. Uh, season two uh, is, like, a lot more focused than season one. Season one is, like, kind of just, like, fuck it, whatever, just throw it all out there. That's 30 characters. Um, season two, it starts with um, um, some mild some mild character drama. Okay, yeah, so there is a... I had to make a chart for this. Um, but there is... This is basically the... Uh, volume two is where all of the, yeah, 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 yeah. is where all the characters kind of get a little bit more fleshed out and like more three dimensional. The jump of quality and direction was shocking to me. Yeah, season one looks like a GameCube game from the look of that screenshot. Yes. No. No, it looks worse. It looks worse. <laughs> it looks like a PS one game with like a lot of post processing over it. <laughs> like. And like the, the the animation like really jank sometimes. Like a PS one game in like Unreal Four. Season two looks like for a web show this is pretty good. Um, which is basically what it is. It's like a pretty good web show. Um, okay, so. Did you mean this guy? Yeah, that guy. So this guy, uh, he he joins up. He also enrolls. He's hanging out with Monkey Man. Uh, he hangs out with Monkey Man. They're like bros. Yeah. This dude's name is uh ne this dude's name is Neptune. Um. Bro. Fuck, what's his last name? I literally don't remember. Oh yeah, Vasilias. His name's Neptune Vasilias. Um, Penny is not on their team. She's just over here because she's also like. Is she he the an... god Neptune? Yes. What? Is he the god Neptune? Is that his mythology? He has a thing of water. We'll get to him. Yeah. Um, so she has like she doesn't really have a team because she's not she's not at the school. She's just around sometimes and like definitely has like military handlers. They don't know what to deal with. You don't know what to deal with with that yet. Um, Car wranglers. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys are on a team, and they have two other smuts that don't matter. They literally don't matter. Uh, they, like, barely even speak. They show up in, like, a couple fights. Who do you mean? Who do you mean? Uh, don't you see Iron Blue? He's like, he should be in a little bit. What am I for Teach? No. No? I thought he showed up in, like, season three, but I, he shows up in, like, season two. Oh, my God. Yeah, he should be right there. Yep. That's him. Look, man, I had to order 108 characters. One of them, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. He shows up in season two, actually. <laughs> I've actually just looked at my notes for the first time. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, anyway, so this guy, he's also he's also like up here with Austin. His name is General James Ironwood. Uh, he's the leader of Atlas, which is a separate continent to the north. Uh, he is like their... He's not... He's like... Uh, so Atlas has a council with... Uh, force with like three seats on it and then also the headmaster is important enough where they basically have a seat. Uh, he is the headmaster of Atlas Academy. He is also a council member and also the general of their military. <laughs> so he's like the most important guy from there. Uh, he shows up in season two uh, with like his whole army of ships because they're preparing for a thing called the Amity uh, or the like an Amity, a festival in the Amity Coliseum called the 
Valis tournament. Um, yeah, yeah, it's like the Valis tournament or something. Um, basically, it's a big fighting tournament where all the characters, well, all the people. The Valis from... tournament? Is it a cockfight? No, it's like is it a joust Jistle or something. Um, there is so all the character, er, all the characters that are enrolled in Beacon, they they join up to they enroll in the tournament. So that way they can. It's like a big graduation thing. Basically, it's the last thing they're supposed to do. Um, then there is, uh, then all the other big four academies, or the big three academies that are not Vail, uh, they also send representatives, and they all have a big tournament, it's broadcast everywhere, uh, on, like, television and shit. Um, oh, for the record, there is, uh, how, so, the Grim being present on the planet means that human populations are, like, super spread out, and, like, super concentrated. So, like, there's the big cities, and there's, like, some occasional small settlements around that are, like, super well fortified and have, like, super small populations. They're basically just there for trade or to, like, have a shitload of farmland that nobody lives on. Because if you have people living on farmland, just, like, one, like, if one guy is just having a bad day in the woods, like, a Grim will come to try and kill him. Uh, but if, like, if you have, like, five people, like, if somebody dies in, in a small settlement of, like, ten people... And, like, everybody knew them. That's enough for them to just straight up get attacked and, like, the whole settlement worked out. So you have to be, like, super fucking careful if you're out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, most people only travel by, like, a big transport, like a boat or a train. Or, like, an airship. Or air, yeah, an airship. Uh, airships are also pretty common. Yeah. Airships are more common in, like, Atlas because they're the scientific place. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so this guy has shown up. He's got his whole army, which is like a bunch of fucking spaceships, frigates, that are like floating high in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, and Austin's like pissed at him, he's like, what the fuck are you doing? You're gonna scare everybody. And if you scare everybody, that attracts Grim, and then we're gonna have to fight it off. Uh, they have big walls around the city, with like guards posted and shit. Yeah? What does the season two music sound like? Oh, fuck! <laughs> I forgot. We're crossing over into season two, so we're gonna play the opening. How many seasons are there, Ruby? Eight. Eight so volumes. So far. They're called volumes. With a planned ten. With a planned ten? If I had to guess, there's probably at least going to be twelve. <laughs> Anyways, um, season two opening. After the Ruby intro. She makes it into the intro. In season two, she's more active. Wow, he's... you kind of nailed it with that just there. <laughs> Cinderella Zula. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, so she's like enrolled. She has her two, her two yeah. goons. Her goons. goons. We'll find her goons. Yes, find her goons. She has two goons. Our goons. Um, <laughs> Our goons. Um, oh, fuck. Her semblance is, ha her semblance is bad enough oh. where she doesn't even usually use a weapon. Hmm. Uh, she just like carries around like fucking fire dust and then uh, crushes it and like gets super bad at fire powers. Most of the time she doesn't fight though. Not until later. Um, her two schmucks, she has a girl who's like a black girl with green hair named Emerald. I gotcha. Oh, uh, another wife. Yeah, yeah, she's a wife. Yeah, yeah, here she is. She has Those minty, she has minty like, hair. She has mint, like mint green hair. Uh, she's a member of this crew. Um, her... Her deal is she also has, she has dual pistols, but they also have chain whips on them. Uh, that are also like swords, or like, yeah, no, they don't hold on to swords, but she can like stab people with them. 
Uh, and this dude, this dude's Mercury Black. Um, uh, his weapon is that he knows how to do kung fu really good with his with his kick. He has, his he has boots. He has uh, like yeah. Yang punchers, but for boots. Yeah, he has Yang punchers, but for boots basically. Except he can like when he does a kick, it shoots like a wind blast they, out. They, yeah, they fi- they fire and he can like control air, the wind blast. Yeah, they fire like, air bullets. Yeah, they fire air bullets. Yeah, they fire air bullets. Um, his name's Mercury Black. Her name is Emerald like Salt Sustry. Yeah, Sust- Sustry. Yeah. I presume that Mercury Black is based off of the character, the uh, the the character Mercurius, uh, because that persona in Persona Five has wings on his feet. That Let's makes see. sense. Except that came out way after. I know. <laughs> well, Mercury. Yeah. Mercurius. Mercurius. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know all the literary references. There's a shitload of them. Literally every character is based on one. Yeah. Like you can you can find it on the wiki. It's Hermes. If you really want. Yeah. Mercury is Hermes. Hermes. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Yes. If you want. He he's, got, he's got windy boots. He got windy. He can't boots. fly with them. It's whatever. Whatever. They shoot wind. Yeah. Uh. Anyways, he's like he's like their main fighter, right for right now. Oh yeah, and he's voiced by Yuri Lowenthal, but only later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got Yuri Lowenthal. <laughs> only after they got big, huh? Yeah. Only yeah, not, only in like season three. It's only for one season that he's not voiced by him. <laughs> um. For the rest of the show, he is. Um. There is. Okay, so season so after uh, some drama where this dude shows up, he has his whole army with him, and it kind of scares people off, or scares people a little bit, puts them on edge, um, because they know that somebody is like around here and trying to fuck shit up, because there's uh, they're aware, but they don't know who it is, so they don't know that these three have like inserted themselves into the school. Um, uh, they've also enrolled in the tournament. They have, uh, yeah. They have a fourth person who is around, but you don't get to see him yet. Um, it's Neo. Go ahead and take Neo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she'll show up later. Uh, anyways, none of that's important right now, because before the big tournament happens, everyone in Vale, uh, they, they throw a year-end fucking party, they throw a ball, they throw a prom. There's a prom arc. Let's go! So you see, so you see all these characters? Welcome to now. All the writers start shipping them. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. So, I so wasn't we, ready so we, for prom night. So we lay, so laying out all of them. Um, uh, there is. So to explain all the relationships, uh, Ruby is like kind of awkward in like romantic situations, so she doesn't have a romantic interest. Yeah, she's like fifteen. Uh, Weiss. Uh, I think yeah. Weiss likes Neptune weirdly enough, which is kind of weird. Oh. Um, but uh, he's. But something we learned about him during the dance is he turned it down. And he's like kind of like a he's introduced as like a womanizer. Yeah, he's a womanizer. He like hits on all the ladies whenever he shows up. Uh, and he acts like a total chat. He wears a suit. He's totally cool. Uh, he looks like Generator Rex. He does. With yeah. Blue hair. Yeah. He's Generator Rex with blue hair. Uh, anyways, he turns it down because uh, uh, he confesses to John later when John's like, dude, I thought you were totally cool. Why did you turn it down? I mean, Weiss is totally hot. Like he he also likes Weiss at first. Uh, and he's like, yeah, but it's a prom and like I can't dance, so you know I don't know. <laughs> and, and he's like, you don't, you don't have to be good at dancing to dance. You don't have to always look cool. And he's like, I don't Damn, know. Bro. And this is where John becomes base. Our guy. <laughs> yeah. John becomes our guy. Base. This is John becoming God. Like for real, yeah. for real, yeah. Yeah, he, he's straight up. It's just like you don't have to always try to look cool, man. Um. Anyway, so uh, after. Like, getting shut down with Weiss, he, like, talks to Fira, who's training him now, and he's like, yeah, you know, uh, I guess having a crush on, like, the, the, the richest girl in the fucking school is, like, not ever gonna work out, so whatever. Um. Fuck her. Um. Oh, yeah, Sun likes Blake, because they're both, because he knows that they're both furries. Okay. He's totally down with that. Furry like, love, furry love. He's gotta, stay, time. Stay, in yeah. he's gotta stay with his people. D-T-Y. Yeah. D-T-Y. Yeah. 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 They're both down, down to you. Yeah. So they have to be together. That's what the that's how the shows get written. Yeah, except uh, she's not interested. Uh, <laughs> she's, she, has, she has interest up in this direction. Yeah, she's Let's like, fucking yeah, yeah, go! go. This, is, this, is like not, this is like not even... This is explosive. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Lesbians. Um, like, they don't say lesbian, and they don't ever, like... They don't ever like make out on screen, but like, no, no, no. They they are a couple. It is yeah. like basically confirmed. Um, their their couple is called Bumblebee because they're black and yellow. 
and uh, she names her motorcycle Bumblebee. <laughs> yeah. So Transformers. Um, so she's on top. Uh, oh, of course. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, look at their personality. Blake like, is a that's fucking, obvious. Blake is a cat. Of course, she's like a weird submissive. Yeah. Anyways, um, uh, these two they go they go as like uh, they go as friends, like brother, sister, or whatever. Even though they're not blood related, they're adopt. They're like semi. They're not. Uh, they're both orphans, and they both like stick together because they basically raise each other. Okay. Um, you find out about their backstory in like season four. Um. Anyways, uh, after after uh telling telling her like, oh, I guess I can't go with anybody because wife's wife is like way too important, and like she turned me down like hard. She just straight. She's like, no, I don't fucking care about you. Leave me alone. <laughs> um. Yeah. Because she's she's busy. She has to organize the ball. She's, she's the rich character, so she's press, she's prissy like that. Uh, Penny shows up with like armed guards, and she's like, I don't know how to dance, so she just does a robot. <laughs> I love yeah. Penny. Can um, you explain Weiss to me personality wise in terms of Equestria Girls characters? She's frig- She's like I don't know any Equestria Girls characters, but uh, she's Sunset Twilight Shimmer. Sparkle. Yeah, what? she's Sunset Shimmer. Yeah, she's the Shimmer. <laughs> I'm getting. I'm getting severe conflicts. No, he doesn't know shit. She's Sunset Shimmer. <laughs> Isn't no, that the white and purple one? Is no. she not the Ojo no. son? Uh, she's kind of an Ojo son. Yeah. Yeah, but she's not older. Like, she's Rarity. She's like Rarity. She's. She's kind she's, of a brat. She, she at one she's point, uh, she at one point in season two, like she's like, oh, I'll buy everybody food, and then she like swipes her her dad's card, and she's like, oh, my card got declined. I need to call my daddy. Yeah. Like, that's what she says. She's, like, kind of, like, a frigid bitch, but knows how, like, te- like she, she, like, can be funny, but everyone's like, oh, Weiss, and she's like, I'm just trying to... Yeah, they to call her Ice Queen. Queen. Yeah. Uh, they call him Vomit Boy, because he gets airsick. <laughs> wow, this is like, a, like, this like, is a, this is a punished, but very base character. <laughs> he's great. I no, think he's they say, no, he's the real main character of the, of the show. Just you wait. Just you wait. wait. Agree. Um, yeah, whenever he shows up on an airship, he just fucking, like, bombs on his first day, and everyone makes fun of him for it for, like, the entire rest of the show. Like, it's season seven, and, and like, Ruby pulls out her phone and, like, gets a call from him, and, and it says, Vomit Boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. There's a lot of blinking, you'll miss it stuff. Um, that's most of it. Uh, anyway, so, at, so, oh yeah, John makes a bet to, makes a bet, bet to Pira that, uh, since she's so cool and so badass, because she's, like, the best fighter. She's, like, straight up the best. Even though she's from, like, small town nowhere. Um... He says, like, if you don't get a date, if you don't get a date, I'll show up in a fucking dress. So anyways, uh, complicated relationships unfold during the start of the prom, and then, uh, during the prom, you got Penny doing the robot, you got this dude, he's just, like, stealing all the food because he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, like, macking on, and then macking on Blake, who is, like, standing awkwardly next to Yang, who is, like, fucking raving. <laughs> God, I love that. Um, um, uh, John com- John comes in and sees like her without a, without a date. So then he leaves and comes back and he's wearing like a straight up wedding dress. And he's like, "What's up?" Yeah, and then yeah. and then they do like a straight up like dance number. It's <laughs> so good. Like the a fully a dance. fully like mocap dance number for like a full minute. Like yeah. all the characters just get in line and start doing it. It's totally yeah, awesome. It's the, t- it's the ju- it's team Juniper. They all do it. And they're yeah. friends. It's great. Yeah, these four all do it. And then Penny also joins in. Yeah. This sounds amazing. Yeah, it's pretty great. So, anyways, while this is happening, Ruby is like kind of brooding because she's like, she's like, you know, this is cool and all. She's like hanging out with Austin, and Austin's like, you know, sometimes you just gotta chill the fuck out, man. Like, we we do a lot of fighting, we do a lot of saving saving people. Sometimes you just gotta appreciate your friends. That's what you gotta do. Um, so, anyways, while he's doing that and like being distracted by this fucking the horseshit that doesn't matter, uh, Ruby sees like uh, he go she goes outside and she sees someone like running across the rooftops. Um, that's Cinder, but she doesn't see that. Because it's outside, it's night. Uh, she follows her, and there's a big communications tower that's like the center of Beacon Academy. Uh, it's a central, like, satellite, basically, that connects, uh, that is, like, also the communication tower for the city. It's, like, and, the like, the building. surrounding area, too. Uh, yes, it's, since they're in the center of the map, uh, which is reference material over there, um, since they're in the center of the map, they it also serves as like the connecting point for all the other major beacons. Uh, but Cinder goes into it. She kills a bunch of guards, like straight up murks them. She burns them to death. Uh, uh, she does this while, like while in like while in a mask, and then 
goes her way up to the tower, and then she does she does like mysterious things to the computer, and then a like black queen shows up on the screen to in- indicate to us like, oh shit, hacking has occurred. <laughs> I understand. She's in the system. Yeah, she's in the system. And then yeah. Ruby sh- Ruby shows up, fights her a little bit, and she like bursts out a window with like a big fireball and explosion. Ruby gets knocked back, and then she gets away. And she goes back to the prom and like blends into the crowd. She like tosses her her mask and her outfit. And then she starts dancing like this guy. <laughs> so, like, blend in. Yeah? You had a question? No. Okay, you started talking. Um, anyways, so. <laughs> Wait, I mean, yeah, you I started talking? talking? You, 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 like, started a word and stopped while I was still talking. Um, Were you going to talk about the Blake and Yang moment that happens in there also? Um, the Blake and Yang moment where they, like, I'm not sure which one you're referring to. I already said well, it. Right. Where, no, well, but you didn't explain it. Where like Yang's talking about like her mom. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So um, there's a there's a scene that's kind of dramatic uh, where uh, they're basically talking about like their family history to each other, and uh, this is like their first moment where they have this is like their first big moment together, which is probably how they solidify. Yeah. Because because. Blake is depressed and, like, angry at everybody because they want to focus on the prom and don't want to try to track down the white fang. Yeah, yeah. She's really nervous about the white fang being in the city because they're not supposed to be here. They're usually isolated. They're not usually not in, like, the central big location. They're normally hitting, like, transports and stuff and just, like, robbing it and then giving it to Faunus and or then, using it for their own campaign. And then Yang sees that and they have, like, a big talk about, like, their past. They have a big, really, like, dramatic talk and, like, well-directed well, well directed talk mm-hmm. uh, where they talk about, like, uh, just, like, their, their woes and their worries. Mm-hmm. It's totally sick. And it's super gay. It's pretty... It's, there's pretty obviously a turning point where Blake, like, looks at Yang and you tell, like, okay, yeah, she, she fell for her. Got it. Um, it's pretty sick. It's great. Now, um... Uh, okay, this is when... Uh, shit starts to pop off in season two. So after the big uh, dramatic prom, um, there is a uh, they get to go on their on their last on their last mission before the tournament, which is they go on a like pilot mission where they, as trainees, they get a hunter assigned to them who will watch over them and make sure they don't die. Basically, uh, normally they do like a simple mission. Uh, these four, um, because they've been looking into. Uh, in the meanwhile, yeah, I'll get that in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, these four, they've been looking into the White Fang and like where they're possibly based, because um, she knows stuff about the White Fang, uh, and the rest of them are on her team, so they're trying to help her. Um, they go to, so they determine by questioning some people they know. She questions a like that, like a club owner that she knows. This guy. Um, yeah, that guy. He shows up. He shows up. He's from. He's from one of the trailers. Yeah. Why does he look like Ice Cube? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Ice Cube. Do be ice. This dude do be Ice Cube. His name is Junior Zhang. Is he important? No. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a total chump. No one cares. He's got a rocket launcher. No one gives a fuck about him. Uh, anyways, yeah, they have a little brawl. Um, so. They have, so before their final mission, they go on an investigation where Yang questions him and brings Blake along, and then Weiss goes and, like, gets action, uh, being, like, a big rich lady, uh, she goes to the tower and she basically accesses her, uh, her dad, who's, like, kind of entwined in the, in the government uh, of Atlas, because that's where she's from, um, she accesses some files that are, like, uh, confidential. Confidential. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, and learns about like all the dust shipping going on, so she knows like how much has gone missing. So she's like, oh, there's like way more than they're saying has gone missing. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Uh, Ruby uh, is doing random investigations like on the street, and she runs into Penny again, and her and Penny find out that um, Ironwood has brought a bunch of he has brought like a whole army. Um, they thought it was just like all the airships, but also he has like brought his military police and they're like patrolling the city. And they have robo goons too. Yes, uh, they have a new like robot goon who is like like armed squadrons of like fucking killer robots that march around and it's freaking everybody out. So they're like, 
this is kind of fucked, yo. You're not even, like, part of this nation. You're just here for security. Um, Austin, at one point, says, like, people are going to look around and say, like, if this is the size of our army, what are we expecting to fight? Uh, that's what people are thinking. So, anyways, from this information, they determine, uh, uh, oh, they find a, uh, they find an example where the White Fang has, like, stolen a robot, like a big mech walker, and they fight it on the highway, it's cool, a bunch of cars crash, isn't, people fucking die. Isn't Hot Red Boy in it? Um, he's there. Yes. Yeah. He's in it, actually. Yeah. He's the, uh, he's there. He finally gets captured, actually. Yes, that's where he gets captured. Um. Uh, no, he doesn't. He didn't no, capture there. there. He is not there. Don't throw me off. Sorry. Yeah, that's just like a, a random white fang thing going on. Okay. So from that, they capture a bunch of guys. That's when Iron shows up and they have this talk. Um, so on their last mission, which they're going to do, uh, they get Ublek. Uh, they get assigned this guy. He's like one of their professors. He's shown up as like a minor character, but he's just like exposition. Who cares? Uh, this is when he finally actually does stuff. So this dude, his name is Bartholomew Ublek. Uh, he's a hunter. He's a he's, Zeus uh, reference. Yes. Uh, he's like super hyperactive because he's always hopped up on coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, he has, his weapon is that he has a coffee thermos that unfolds into like a hammer, or not like a hammer. It's like a bat mm -hmm. that has on the top of it. It can shoot f like fire, and it can set itself on fire. And he can launch stuff and turn into fireballs. Oh, it's a baton flamethrower that is also a thermos. Yes. Okay. There's also a thermos that drinks coffee out of. All also, the time. we're at uh, we're at seventy minutes right now. Let's see. Uh, we have about fifty four minutes left. Let's have season three be done by then. Okay. Yeah. This is season two still. Yeah, I know. Um. Yeah. Uh. So, and then as the last thing before they go out on their mission, um, in the mail in like a tube, um, their dad, uh, Tai Tai Yang Zhao Long. Uh, uh, send is like, hey, I'm a hunter. I gotta go out on a mission, so I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna so you have to take care of the dog while I'm out. So he sends them the dog in the mail. <laughs> What's the dog doing though? Look at this dog. What's the dog's name? Uh, Zvi. Shout out Zvi. Shout out to Zvi. Uh, uh, they literally in like the tube that they pull the letter out of. They're like, where's the dog? And then she just turns it over and the dog falls out of it. <laughs> and they're like, what do we feed it? And then all the food falls out in like a huge pile. It's very comical. Uh, Blake hates the dog because she's a cat. Yeah, it's funny. Wow. She's like, don't let it near me. And she's and like, what, she like hops into a corner and is like, mm -hmm. like pound stuff, like ready to fucking pound. And that, get was, out of that, was, a, that was a humanizing moment for, for Weiss too, is because at first she was like, oh, I don't want to take care of a dog. But then she was like, oh, it's cute. Yeah, yeah, then she saw it, and she thought it was the most moe thing she'd ever seen in her life. She goes all ugu about it. Same thing with Yang. Um, yeah, so, then they, then Ruby, because he has to take care of the dog, she brings the dog on a mission. Mm -hmm. Very unwisely. But anyways, uh, she sneaks it in her backpack, because you can just compress this dog into, like, a ball. Mm -hmm. uh, Is that its semblance? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go with yes. Okay. It's never confirmed. Because the, ba the ball form is also relevant later. Yes, the ball form is also relevant at the end, uh, towards the end of the season. So, um, when Ublek finds out they brought a dog, uh, they think, oh shit, Ruby, you fucking idiot, why'd you bring a dog on, like, a lethal mission where we're out in, like, a destroyed city and we're, we're, like, killing Grim on mass because they're, like, festering around here. Uh, he sees the dog and he's like, that's fucking genius! You can track with a dog! Dude, dogs are awesome! And he just goes off about how dogs and hunters have been a thing for, like, thousands of years. Even though it's just like a cute little puppy. Yeah. Um, they fight some Grimm. Uh, while uh, he takes them out on individual patrols at night, uh, whenever they're taking shifts, and during it he like questions each of them for like, why do you want to be a huntress? Why do you want to be a huntress? Uh, he asks, he tells it to everybody except for Ruby. Ruby, he's just like, yeah, I know why you want to be a huntress. You're like super good at it, and you're going to you're going to like be a big deal at some point. He like really talks her up. And he tells her about, um, they see colossal Grimm, which are Grimm that are, like, literally hundreds or thousands of years old, to the point at which they have, like, developed self-preservation. So now they wait to attack whenever, like, they wait for a horde to start swarming a city, and then they will just, like, swoop yeah, in and start killing people. It's like this huge, like, troop of elephants, and it's super, it's like this yes. super cool moment. Yeah. They're, like, 40 feet tall elephants. Holy fonts. That, like, yeah. travel in, like, a herd. Um... 
Yes. So uh, wife wants to make a name for herself that isn't founder of company or founder family name. Uh, Blake wants to just help people because um, she, uh, yes, she also used to be in the White Fang. Oh. That's her. She was literally born into the White Fang because mm. um, her parents at the time were the leaders. Huh. They were the. They were. Uh, they're called the supreme. They're called the grand leaders. Not the supreme leader. Not the supreme leader. Um, yeah, she was born into it, and they at some point they like, realized the White Fang were like getting too violent, and they tried to pull out of it. And then, uh, but she was like fully brainwashed and was like, "No, I'm down for this." So she stayed behind and like abandoned her family, and like was like straight up like she was like bombing trains and shit mm-hmm. when she was like Damn. when she was like twelve. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, a they show a picture of her where she's like six and she's like holding a battle axe. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the picture of Louis. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's like that picture of Louis. Five years old. When he's five years old and he's with the whole gang. When he's like throwing up BD signs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Yang's whole deal is that she's literally just like. No nah, man, this is the easiest way to fuck around. So yeah. she just she just wants to go fuck around, fight things, and like go on adventures because uh, she's got that wild energy. Okay, Yang is the best character. Yeah, she's wild child. Yeah, Yang Yang's is, pretty awesome. Yang is a guy. Not gonna lie, she's pretty pure instinct. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. very pure instinct. Yeah. That's how she rolls. Um, so they go. So on this mission, um, they discover there's a uh, they discover the hideout for the White Fang, and. It's like uh, under under the city, like there's a section of the city that has been like locked off because they tried to expand into the mountains so they can start mining there. Um, but at some point, like enough, uh, they were using faunus as like cheap labor, not slaves. They didn't slave here. They're they're a little bit more proper about that. <laughs> Anyways, they used faunus as cheap labor. They had really bad practices, and a lot of the faunuses like they led like a strike, and that spiraled out into like a grim a grim sweep came through and just like wrecked the whole city and killed everybody. Uh, So then they locked it all off, sealed it away, uh, and now it's just like infested. Um, In the mines where the faunus used to be, the white fang is posted up and there's a big like railroad system down there for moving stuff. Uh, They have loaded a train uh, and gotten it working again with all the dust they've been stealing. Uh, What they're going to do is they're going to take the train and they're going to just ram it into the, the... spot in the underground tunnels where it's been sealed away and then they're going to burst into the main city and then release all the grim that are coming with them because they have also loaded up on a drain they've also got a bunch of military hardware they've stolen and they're also going to fight along with them uh anyways they show up before the uh these girls show up and uncover this before their plane is like fully ready this guy's there uh these guys are still at school they're not ready for this uh they have they had a part of the plan they were going to do but then they're like what the fuck? This is way too early. This is like a couple weeks. This is supposed to happen later. Um, so they show up, they are on the train, and while they board the train, as they try to launch it too uh, early, and um, so they have to break off into like little fights. One person gets to fight in each car. Um, Weiss fights a big dude who's like a lieutenant, and he's got a fucking just a massive chainsaw. It's pretty uh, sick. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty sick. He's just a huge buff dude. He shows up a couple times. He's like never named. He never speaks. He's just a total hard ass with a chainsaw. <laughs> uh, and he can rev it, and it has like dust on it, so it'll like gain a fire effect or something, or it'll like start doing stuff. Um, Blake. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, Blake goes farther up on the train, and there is that guy. That's yeah. Guy. That's right. He shows up. Who's like a short fight with him. Yeah. So he appears and he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? So anyways, while she's on the train, uh, she, see, she sees this guy who is also there. What's his name? His name's Adam Taurus. Uh, he's the leader of this Splinter Cell of the White Fang. Uh, he is also like Blake's like abusive ex-boyfriend. Because oh, that. that's like how indoctrinated she was. She was like fucking the leader. Even though he's like way older than she is. Oh my god. Oh no. Uh, yeah. How so, old was she when she left? She left at like. 15, 16? 15, 16. How old is he? He's like. Early 20s? He's like early 20s. He's like 8 years old. It's like Discord okay. mod shit. Yeah. Yeah, Discord mod shit. That's some Discord mod shit yeah. right there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, his, uh, his thing is he has a big sword. Uh, he has a sword 
forged out of the blood of Faunus that it fucking died for the cause. It's, it's like bright red. It's bright red. And also, whenever it blocks something, uh, it like glows and it like stores the energy of whatever it blocks. Uh, it also goes in a holster that has a revolver on it, uh, and it has it is a gun holster, so you can shoot it out and like it goes super fast. Yeah. Uh, the holster is a gun, and the bullet is the sword. So he can swing it fast like Jetstream Sam, who also has a red sword. Yes. He can also just, like, while fighting with one hand, he can have it on his holster and can just shoot you from the hip. <laughs> um, it's pretty rad. He can also just use the clock, all that shit. Um, they fight for a little bit, but Blake immediately bugs out upon seeing him. and is like, oh shit, we need to get out of here. Um, White's is fighting Chainsaw Guy. Uh, Ruby goes... Uh, to the front of the train and is fighting um, Roman, I believe? I think she's fighting Roman. Roman Torchwick? Who is there. Yeah. Um, uh, he's a fighter who... Uh, he is not He's not a very good fighter. He just has like a cane with a gun in it. Uh, and he doesn't have a semblance. No, he's, he's an army. Yeah, because he... Well, anybody can have a semblance. There's no limit on who can have it. You just have to discover it. Through like training and shit. So yeah. the implication is that he's like scum who's never actually he's worked. The up. end. The end of his cane pot flips up, and there's like a little aiming module, and he fires yeah. it like a boom, like a grenade launcher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not very good. Okay, let's hope that holds. Okay, yeah. And then also Yang fights this bitch. This is Neapolitan. Uh, she's a mute like girl who's uh, who's like pink and brown with like some light teal in there. Uh, she fights with an umbrella that also has a gun in it and is also a shield. Um, her semblance is she can shapeshift things, including herself, like visually. So she can make something look like something else, or she can change how she looks and change into somebody else. Um, and she's a full head shorter than Yang, and it's really hot. Yeah, she's oh, yeah. like, she she like five foot tall. She's like this tall to Yang, and sh her and Yang fight. Like, and they start the fight by like posting up like right in front of each other. And Yang's looking down at her like. Yeah, I'm they like, they, they do like the cover of like uh, like Street Fighter Alpha Two, where it's like Ryu looking up at Akuma. Uh, get Raven. Yeah, she, she's right there. I don't know who the fuck that is. Yeah, that. And Yang's like a like a bruiser, and Neapolitan is just like Wing Chun deflecting all of her yeah, blows. Yeah, she's just like completely parrying everything he does. She's completely like wiping the floor with her. She's Neopolitan. completely in control. Yeah, yeah. She's like posing while doing it too. She's like yes. making fun of Yang, um, but she can't talk, so she can't banter. Uh, she's completely mute. Can she not talk? I thought she just didn't. No, she can't talk. Oh, that's face. That's really yeah. She has no dialogue. dialogue. She's she never. She never speaks. Uh, she occasionally will like write something down and hand it to somebody to explain, but it's usually like short little phrases. Um, and whenever she grunts, she's voiced by what's her fucking name? Is it Casey, Casey Lee Williams? Williams yes. Who is the lead vocalist? Who's the lead vocalist on all the music? Yeah. Oh, cool. Which is cool. That's when presumably related to Jeff Williams, the composer. I don't know how. Yeah, I think that's her daughter. I think daughter. daughter she father. was she was young when she started doing her music. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, she's wiping the floor with Yang. Uh, Yang's getting fucked up. Uh, at some point, she goes she goes beast mode, uh, and still like can't even get a blow on her. Um, and when she's like dead tired, she walks up. She takes her sword out of the umbrella and like is about to stab her. And then a fucking blood vortex like opens up. <laughs> it's like shaped like an eye and is made out of blood. And out of it steps uh, steps this girl who is at first masked but not here. But anyways, this is what she looks like. Um, we don't find out who she is until later. It's tape over her face. No, but I can't take it off. <laughs> um, so yeah, she shows up. Uh, she just completely fucking chumps her. <laughs> yeah. She she go she goes up to her straight up like catches her blade, like tosses it aside, like knocks her out of the way, picks up Yang, and then like takes her uh, and like puts her on top. Uh, oh no, wait. No, this girl. No, her other semblance. She she retreats. She retreats. So she her second her like second part of her semblance is that um, on top of being able to turn stuff to look like other stuff, she can also look like she's disappeared by shattering. So she hits her and then she just shatters into a bunch of pieces and is gone. Mm, like a porcelain doll. Because you can like sneak away kind of like Yang. You're kind of like Blake. Blake can also do that. Kind of. But not as good. Um, yeah. So she sneaks away and then she leaves back through the blood vortex and uh, she comes back later. She's important. Um, yes. And then uh, they fail to shut the train in time, but they wipe out most of the guys on the train. Um, 
and oh, Ublak is fighting a giant robot on the train while it's going underground. Um, they got all the all the artillery on the train is just like blowing holes in the ceiling to let Grim in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Ublak and Dog are fighting giant a giant robot, and he is using the dog as like a thing that he can toss multiple times and like bat it back and forth as a fireball. Yeah, what? he's yeah. doing he's doing a fastball special where he bats the dog in ball. Form. Yeah, he he turns the he rolls the dog up. He picks the dog up. It rolls itself into a ball. He tosses it up, and then he fucking whacks it with his stick, and it turns into a fireball. It goes like a million miles an hour, and is like basically a giant rocket launcher that just comes back. And he keeps doing that while like fighting robots. Uh, it's, it's fucking awesome. It's so stupid. And this is on top of the train that's is headed to Vale to like through the old abandoned train system. To the old abandoned mines. So that's gonna flood it with broom. Yes. Okay. So anyways, they fail to stop the train time, but they stop most. They get most of the white thing like unconscious, and uh, so it crashes through. There's a leak of. This is when the yeah that that tea tea cocoa uh-huh. tea coffee. Shows I know. Up. I know. Um. So anyways, they they burst through, and since they've got a he- ahead of time warning. Uh, uh, a senior, their senior team shows up, who's like, they're kind of standby, like, these guys are basically about to graduate. Um, they're like, pretty badass. They haven't shown up until now, these are basically just like, cool OC characters that they put in. Uh, this is Yatsuhashi Daichi, he's, he's, I think he's canonically Japanese, even though that doesn't make any sense, it's like Guilty Gear. Um, his semblance is that he can make, he can wipe your memories, but like only from the past like ten seconds. So he can like disorientate you while fighting you. And he has a big fucking sword, and he's super strong. Um, then you have uh, this, who is Velvet Scarlatina, which is the most OC name in the entire show. She's yeah. great. She shows up a little bit before. She's like in Bully. Yeah, she's she, a Velveteen she, Rabbit. Yes. Yes. Rabbit. She's a fauna. She's uh, a yes. for it. I like bunnies. So she's a bunny girl. She's like. She's like kind of, she's like kind of moe. Uh, she takes pictures of people. You don't know what that means yet. That shows up later. Uh, and then you have uh, the hottest character, Coco Adele. Yo. Yo. Uh, yeah. She's strapped up. Yeah. Uh, she's their team leader. What's her weapon? Her weapon is she has a purse that's like a case. No, it's like a purse. It's like a Gucci bag. It's got it's got a case like form to it, but it is small enough to be a purse. It's not like that black big. with gold studs. Yeah, it's got a bunch of like gold inlays on it. She's super fancy and uh and like trendy. Uh, trend. She's super trendy. Uh, anyways, it's like super heavy. It's like hundreds of pounds. It's like solid. Cause whenever she does this, it'll fold out and it turns into a mini gun. Like literally, <laughs> she's got TF2 heavy. She's, she's yeah. got she's Gat- too heavy. It's fucking huge, like compared to her. It's she's like got bigger than her. Gatling Gucci. Yeah, yeah, it's totally sick. No, she's great. The way she's introduced is that the monster comes in town, and she's like, "You were in my favorite store. You're gonna fucking pay for that." Yeah, yeah. She says to a, she says to a giant a giant demon bear that's like staring her down. She's like, "You were in my favorite clothing store. I'm gonna fucking kill you." And then she like and then she just straight up like nut shots it with the bag, and then like unfolds into a gun and blasts its head off. Um, they completely wipe the floor with whatever Grim show up, uh, as well as like Goodwit shows up. Um, she's kind of like, she's like the main huntress of the whole town. She like defends it and like keeps it repaired because she can also repair things telekinetically. That's a semblance, whatever. Her semblance is basically is basically wizardry, whatever wizardry you'd want, but it's a semblance. It's not magic. That's important. <laughs> it's important for later. Anyways, uh, that's basically the end of season two. They capture this guy and he goes on the main capital ship and is like being. Um, Interrogated for and like, trying to get into the fact. So Ironwood is like questioning him personally. Um, but now, but now the, the villain of the first two seasons, Roman Torchwick, who we know is the big Boncho, is is in prison. Yeah, yeah. But we are, but but, but Cinder, 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 the Cinder Squad still roams free. Yeah, yeah they're still roaming around. Um, undercover in the school. Yeah, undercover in the school. Um, and that's basically where season two leaves off. Are there any questions for where we're at right now? Immediately. Will you put the green hair guy down a little lower so it doesn't look like he's important as the other people? He shows up later a little bit. Okay. Anyways, yeah, I'll put him with, I'll put him with her. Yeah. He's, was, bas- yeah. he's basically on the level of Glinda. That's that's that was my thought. That's where I wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. Except Glinda's kind of more important. Yeah, that's why she's Right. Important. For immediately, she's more important. Yeah. Um, anyways, no questions? Dominic. It's kind of a fuck 
load of glare. I'll just do this for like one second. All right. Let me get the season. Uh, if that's it, then that's season two. That's volume two done. Mm-hmm. So when the show was cool and good. The show was so it was pretty actually pretty awesome the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. You have you have convinced me that season two was good. It was cool. I, actually I enjoyed my time with two. it. See the, see the one is kind of like good. this. This is like what are you doing? Season two is like oh I get it now. Got it. Yeah. You've like you've like caught the appeal like a rare, like a rare animal. But season three. Season three is when shit is about to pop the fuck off. Is where shit gets real. Yeah, shit gets real. We, there's no more prom shit, no more shenanigans, okay? Roll the clip. Roll the clip. Season three. Let's pull up my notes. Oh, you can keep it right there. It says Ruby on it. Yeah, I know. That's what I did. Awesome. I was waiting for it. Yeah. Right after this, it says credited by, this is like created by Monty Boom. It's like, okay, cool. Okay. Up until now, first first volume, like three quarters of a page of notes. Second volume, like two and a quarter pages of notes. Third volume, like fucking three pages of notes. <laughs> Shit's about the, actually, I think it's three and a half. It's fucking pop. It pops the fuck off. It's about to Can you cover that in the next thirty-four minutes? Yes, because a lot of it doesn't is whatever. We'll yes. skip past it. Um, so, anyways, we've already done a lot of the character introductions. So we've done a lot of character introductions. Now it's just kind of shit. Is all gonna... except for two relevant characters have been introduced. Yes. Yes, for this season, I think that is about right. Um, yeah, those two get introduced, and then there's like a couple more after that that just show up, but they don't do anything yet. Um, okay, so. There's a time skip. There's a break in the semester right before they have the tournament. Um, uh, during that during that break, uh, Ruby uh, and Yang they go home to visit their dad, and also uh, Ruby has a scene where she talks to her mother's grave. Um, she's like buried on a cliff. Super dramatic. Mm-hmm. Very nice. They live in like the middle of nowhere in like a forest on a small island that is like just off the coast of uh, Beacon, or where Beacon is at. Um, anyways, they do that. That's when you meet, that's when you see their dad, but he doesn't do anything. He's in the background for when they're looking sad. But like, yeah, it's my mom. Like a JPEG? Yeah, he's just a JPEG. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a J, he's literally a JPEG, like posted up with the dog next to him in 3D. Have a model. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look great. It looks pretty bad. Um, anyways, they get back. The tournament has begun. Uh, like I said, everybody's enrolled. So we got Team Ruby, Team Juniper. This is Team Sun because it's S S S N. The other two S's literally don't matter. I didn't print them. They they basically don't have dialogue. Um, uh, Penny also has like uh, she has like a duo team. She has like a weird handler who's like a military girl. Um, but she doesn't matter. She's just there so that way she can compete. Uh, so how the tournament works? Explained to you by um, Ublek. And also, his, his, his best friend, who is this guy, who I think is named, uh, yeah, his name is Pork. This is Professor Peter Pork. He has the worst character model in the whole show. Uh, we'll, put him, we'll just put him attached to him, because that's basically what he is. Uh, yeah, so they're the announcers for the tournament. Whatever, they explain the rules. I'm going to explain the rules to you now. Fuck, Neapolitan fell. Yeah, I 
yeah, retake that one. Did not take that one very much. Yeah, so uh, they explained the rules. Basically, there's three rounds. Uh, elimination. If you lose any, if you lose any round, you're out of the tournament. Um, first round is there is four on four, so it's the whole team against the whole team in a big arena. Um, that's like broadcast all over the world. Everybody's watching it. And four on four, they fight. Last person standing wins. Uh, wins for the team, or the other team forfeits. Uh, second round is two v twos, where they the team leader picks two people from their team. And they fight against two people from another team. That's where Penny comes in. She's like an extra fighter because she's not affiliated with the school, so she's just kind of uh, she's just there. Um, we learn now that she is a she's a robot for Atlas. So like her main she's like handler here ninja. is Ironwood. Yes, she's the white she's the ninja white ninja from, from Ninjago. Ninjago. Yes, she's the white ninja from Ninjago. She's also really ganky and autistic. Yeah. yeah. Like best. explicitly, um, yeah. yeah she's a Her best friend is Ruby, by the way. She fucking loves Ruby. Oh, no, of buddies. course. Yeah. The two best characters hang out with her. Yes. Um, yeah. That's why. She, that's why her. That's why she can just pull her swords like out of her back. Because she's a robot. Because she's a robot. Um, yeah. So, anyways, um, she enters with like a handler. Uh, we don't see her in round one. Presumably, they have some other goons to fill out her team for round one. Uh, anyways, yeah. So. There's a bunch of fights that basically don't matter. All you need to know is that, like, uh, Penny makes it through. Uh, these two guys fucking get, these two guys get, uh, they get chumps in the second round. Uh, they beat a bunch of girls in the first round, whatever. That's the whole thing where they're all, like, a bunch of womanizers, and they're all a bunch of, like, feminist women, and then, or not feminists, they're, like, they're like, they're like bitchy. They're, they're a girl power. They're a girl power squad. Yeah. What's a, what's a good girl synonym power for squad. feminist bitchy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this yeah. a, is, is, would you describe this as a feminazi anime or a meninist anime? I think it's definitely feminazi. Definitely. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. So my chances of liking it are pretty high. You know, I'm trying to this. Yes, I mean, there's it's like, very feminazi we've got like a lot of girl, a lot of girl characters. Um, there's only like, Four like important male characters really that are up here. I think. Well, no, there's Adam. He's important. Like I mean, like main characters that aren't antagonists. Mm. Almost all the like protagonists are girls. Let's yeah. fucking go. I didn't even really think about that until you said it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's kind of a. Like, Except for Jean, who is based off a woman. Jean, who's you know he's Jean, Jean so he's, he's he would be he he his origins are being a woman dressed as a man. That's why he's from a family of all girls. Ha ha, very funny. Yeah. Please um, introduce the two new characters because I need to piss. Also, 28 minutes. All right, cool. Um, so all the fights are going on. Uh, these two show up. Um, we've got Crow Bronwyn. Yeah. This is this guy. Uh, this, uh, he's relevant to these two because he is their uncle. Uh, he is her uncle by blood and like her step uncle, basically. Um, he's not related to their dad. He's related to... Yang's mom. Well, I'm your mother's younger brother. That about well, sums it up. <laughs> He's yeah. also voiced by Vic Minganga until he Mignonga. got canceled, and then he was replaced in season seven. And it's Steve. It's Vic Minganga doing a, a Steve Bloom impression, and he's doing it very well. Yes, uh, remarkably. He's like a. Com uh, what you mean about him is that he has a scythe that Ruby like mimicked when she made her gun. It's a sword that like turns into. It's a sword. It's a sword that folds down and has like a double-barreled shotgun in, in it. And then also it can curl, and also he can pop it out into a staff that turns into a reaper blade. Yeah, he's like the coolest guy, kind of. He's kind of the best yeah. character. Uh, he he's a complete alcoholic and is like almost non-functional. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, but, but he's, yeah. like, best. he's I, I thought of this earlier. He's kind of like the Jiraiya of the of the crew. Yeah. He like he becomes like their supporting mentor character, and he's like the hyper competent, hyper knowledgeable drunk guy. And uh, he also kind of yeah. at first, yeah, yeah. That changes we go on, and then uh, and then as an alternative to that, you have Winter, who's going to go up here because uh, she's with Ironwood. Uh, she is Weiss's older sister. Uh, she also abandoned the family because she's like this family's fucked. I'm out, uh, and she joined the military, and now she's like the second in command of the whole military. Um, she's like a big badass. Uh, her and Crow know each other, and they have beef. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, rap or wrestling? Yeah, so 
They, no, no, no. They they went to a vegan academy together. I think Wait, they're the same age? Yes. Yes, they're the same age. Oh, I thought that Crow, okay, yeah. Here's another big problem with Ruby is that all the characters look too fucking young. <laughs> Ozpin, is Ozpin supposed to be in like his 50s? He's supposed to be in his thirties. No. What? Well, he's complicated. We'll talk about him later. So oh, what about yeah. Ironwood? He, Ironwood's got to be like early forties, right? Yes. He's the yes. only guy who kind of looks his age. He looks a lot older later. Barely. He, is, is Crow yeah. older than him? He looks. Uh, Crow. No. Are they the same age? Are they both like early? They 40s? are. Uh, he's like a little older, like maybe like a couple years. Okay. Not but are they both like probably early forties? Um. Yeah. He's probably like late thirties. He's probably like forty. So what about, uh, uh, fucking Austin? S- the sister. Oh, Winter. How old is, is she? Like late thirties. She's like mid twenties, late twenties. Okay, well then the crow's way older then. Okay, yeah. Uh, I guess she's older then. Uh, she go. They both went to the school. They both went to the school. They have beef because uh, she hates how he does things. Uh, because he's kind of like, he's like a, uh, he doesn't have a team. Because he's, uh... He's for, fucking cool. Uh, yeah, for a lot of reasons, but he, like, he can't work with other people. Uh, and people hate working with him, because he's always drunk and, like, fucking shit up all the time. Uh, his semblance is... His semblance is bad luck. So any every time anyone that's around him, including him, will just suffer bad luck. <laughs> uh, so he's really bad around other people. So I like how some alone. people's superpowers are just sucking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, like, it's not like... Bad, it's not like he'll have bad luck when he does something. It's like stuff will break or like go wrong. Uh, he's super superstitious about it. So he do, he like tries to keep people at a distance. Um, you might Winter, say he's ultra stitious. Yeah, yeah. Um, Winter has the same power as Weiss, uh, where she can make circles. Except she's more advanced in it, so she can summon like she can have summons that are like animate creatures that are like made out of the material. They look like grim, but they're like not evil. Well, she can make Grim, but she can also do other things. Okay. Um, also, Crow has the coolest line in the sword, the show, when I, that I've heard at least, when Iron Ironwood reprimands him for fighting Winter. Yeah. And then Ironwood's like, "If you were one of my men, I'd have you shot." And then Crow's like, "If I was one of your men, I'd shoot, shoot myself." myself. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. So he's super yeah. anti-authoritarian. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna pee. He has a lot of good lines, but he's a total bastard. I kind of hate him at first, but uh, he is he's very cool. Um. Let's see. So, uh, while all of the uh, games are playing out, in between the in between the first and second round, uh, Ozpin, uh, Ozpin, Ironwood, and Goodwitch and Crow uh, have a meeting where they uh, bring in Pira, because she's like the prodigy of like basically all this entire generation of students, and she's like super upstanding. They they know her to be pure. I know she comes from a small town. I know her whole backstory. Uh, so they bring her in, and they tell her, okay, look, we're going to lay some shit on you right now. Are you ready to accept, like, a big responsibility? She's like, you know what? I came to the school so that way I could help people. I'll accept any responsibility you give me as long as I can, as long as I can help people. Uh, so they're like, okay. So have you ever heard this, heard this story? There's a story where uh, there was an old man who lived in the woods, and he was really lonely. There, uh, and then along came four sisters... Um, each of them gave him a different gift. Um, one of them gives him uh, like a gift of books so he, gives, uh, he can learn about the world uh, beyond his cabin. One of them brings him a bunch of food so that way he can nurture and live on. Uh, one of them like upgrades his house so that way he can live like nice and comfortably and have everything he needs. And I forget what the fourth one does. But anyways, he tells. Uh, so then the old man turns out he's like a wish. Uh, he's like a magic man, like wish giver. So he gives them all a bunch of, he gives them all a season power. So they all become a maiden. So there's a maiden for each season. Uh, yes, this is when we see the first maiden we'll show in a second. So anyway, they tell her about this. They tell her, okay, so that story, that story is like true? <laughs> kind of? That's real shit. To, to some extent, that story is true. Um, let's put him just under here because I don't want to block him from everybody else. This is kind of important. He doesn't really do anything. He's just like he is just tied to him by the hip, and they're friends. <laughs> that's the that's his relevance basically. Um, so yeah, they tell her all this. They tell her, okay, so we so there are maidens around the world, and they have like they have like actual magic powers, like semblances. We understand them, but uh, maidens they have magic, 
Like, they are clear, even though she's a witch, even though they have, like, powers that are, like, what? That doesn't make sense to us. To them, it makes sense. Magic doesn't make sense to them. So they can do magic without dust. That's kind of the big deal. And it's, like, way more powerful than everyone else's is. So they can go into space! Um, yes, they can in theory go into space. Because most of the maidens can, like, fly and, like, cause storms and shit. They're, like, super powerful. They can, like, literally change the season of a whole region. Like, at will. So their season. Um, yeah, I'm going to put her up there. So anyways, they tell her this. They tell her, okay, so we've managed to, uh, we've managed to track down a maiden, uh, but she's going to die and need to be reincarnated soon. Um, so we're, we need you to be reincarnated as the fall maiden. And then they show her uh, this lady who they have, like, stored in a, bu- in a bunker underneath the school called the vault. Uh, they have her on life support. And she is, yeah. She's actually in storage. Uh, yeah, she's in storage. She's like in a pod, like frozen. Yeah. Uh, and is like, yeah, if we unfreeze her, she might die because someone came along and like ganked her and like stole part of her power. We don't know how they did it. Yeah. Need you. Need you. Life hurts. Need you. Okay. Got it. Um. Yeah. So, they're like, okay. After the tournament, after you graduate, we're going to. Uh, we're going to try using like the most advanced technology we have. We're going to try to transfer her power to you uh, before she dies. Because we think if she dies, the power might like collapse back to the person who stole it. And obviously they don't want that because they're probably evil. Oh yeah, they would like absorb the rest of it. They would absorb the rest of it. Yeah. So they're going to try to like keep whatever they've got still and transfer it to her while she's still alive. Kind of weird, but that's the idea. Uh, she asked at, at one point, how does, how does the reincarnation work if she dies? And then Crow says, it's a series of co- overly complicated and stupid rules that no one understands. Wow. <laughs> That's uh, a way to get around explaining something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then we, we learn later that basically, because uh, like you can either reincarnate through the series of complicated and stupid rules, which are basically random. Uh, he describes them as basically random. Uh, Linda explains this is based, this is true for the whole rest of the show. Um, that whoever is in their thoughts last when they die is who gets their power. Oh. So it's either whoever they care about the most, or they fear that like, oh, if she dies like thinking of her attacker like is like a nightmare, then it'll transfer them and okay. and then uh, that'll be bad for everybody. So um, we see a flashback in the next episode that shows it was Cinder, Emerald, and Mercury that ganked her. So what they did is they had Emerald, whose ability has been secret until now. Uh, Emerald's ability is oh, we're good. Emerald's ability is that she can like cause you to see something that isn't there. Like she can change your perception, but just for like a couple people at a time. So what she does is she like they track down Amber, who is this girl while she's still like up and around. This is before Beacon, and they. Alluding her into thinking that she's like a helpless, like a uh, young girl who's like dying, and when she approaches, uh, they all like collapse in and gank her before they can see her, before she can see them. She still like fucks them all up real hard. Um, she can fly and has like lightning powers. She can fly. She makes like a tornado. She starts like throwing like giant fireballs at them and shit, um, because like fall is burning and all that. Yeah, she's the maiden of fall. Yeah, she's the she is the fall maiden. Her name's Amber. Um, uh, and then the last second, Crow, uh, who was, who was assigned to track her down, or not track her down, just to watch her, because they couldn't, they can't, like, keep the lid on them sometimes if they don't want to cooperate, because she was, like, rogue. Uh, so Crow was just assigned just to watch her, and if anything happened to her, like, take care of her, make sure she doesn't die. Um, so he saves her, like, kind of the last second, because he's a badass. Uh, and like gets her out of there before she fully dies. Uh, she does a weird thing where she points her hand at her, and out of her hand is like a gr- a grim comes, and then it's like a face hugger, and it like bites into her and like starts draining her magic, and that's why Amber can do, or why Cinder can do like fire magic real big, even without dust, because she's stolen a little bit of her power. That's how that works. Um. Yes. She's got a little bit of that fire maiden juice. She got some fire maiden juice. So that's when she starts. She starts fighting in the tournament, and people are like, "Damn, she's like really badass." And 
because like Hunter's intelligence will be back or whatever. Um, yeah. So after th- so after that, Fear is like, "This is some fucking whack shit, bro. You kind of just dumped this on me." Uh, she gets uh, she gets like kind of fucking nervous about this. She's like, "Wait, magic's fucking real." Um, and they want me to be it? They want me to be the magic? Yeah. And, like, be super important for the rest of my life? I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. And my memories might get overwritten or some shit? Yes, yes because you also... Because uh, when they combine... Uh, normally, it just reincarnates normally, and you don't get fused. But uh, with this, they're like, yeah, when we fuse your, like, auras together, that might overwrite part or all of your personality or kill you. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm. Unsure. Uh, they've never done it before. Good. They've been experimenting on it. It comes up later uh, that they're still experimenting on it oh. for a different maiden, different place. Right. Um, yes, yeah, so she she goes to John, and they have a moment where they're like, where she's like, oh, "Fuck, dude, I'm this shit's intense. I don't know what I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I like I want to I want to date. I want to you know follow through on my word, but uh, she can't can't tell him anything." Yeah, she's like, John, I'm conflicted. He's like, what are you conflicted about? She's like, I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah. He thinks it's like a relationship thing. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, Poor he's like, hey, whatever your problem is, I'm here. Just let me know. And she's like, I literally can't. I literally can't tell you. Otherwise, you'll get wrapped up in all this, and yeah, I don't want you to get wrapped up in Our guy, John. So he's just kind of, he's like, he's worried about her, and he kind of like tries to follow her around and like keep her safe. Our guy. What a so, cool guy. Yeah. So, um, doubles round, first round, uh, last round of doubles, um, they, s- yes, 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 so, okay, anyway, first round of singles, sorry, because doubles rounds are over, what we have left are, we have Yang, who they've nominated, who Ruby nominated to fight in the finals, because she's the oldest, she's a big, tough girl. Ruby, yeah, whatever, R- Ruby's Fuck oldest, they, they're not important. Oh, but they look cool. They do look cool. <laughs> they look cool. Now they look like balls of garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're oh, wait, did, were, were we shown them? No. No. Oh. Okay, There's two people there, they fight, one of them's a There's a black. Two of them fight, yeah, one of them's black. His name's Flint Cole. Uh, he's voiced by a rapper. Um, Who? Which one? Never heard of. Is it's, he, is he like, like King Cole? Like, no, it's like some guy named is Cole. He, is he a merry old soul? No, he he's, a, he's, no, he's a, a jazz player. He plays a, a math, he plays a little magic Trumpet. Trumpet, yeah. He plays a trumpet, it like blasts out rainbows, and he can duplicate himself to be an orchestra. Then there's a girl on roller skates who's kind of Pinkie Pie, and she fights like Neapolitan, sort of, but Yang beats her. Yeah, yeah. She she skates around, uh, she leaves a rainbow everywhere, and uh, she's like a cat girl. That's her thing. She has a cat mouth and like a bell, and her name is like Neon Cat with two T's and a K. She's Neon Cat, anyway. Yes, that God is, fucking damn that it. Is, that is what she is. It's yeah, literally Jesus. the joke. They're literally not relevant. They are basically never relevant, but I printed them because I was like, fuck it, I don't know, all of them. They look cool. They look kind of cool. They look better in the concept art shown in the credits, though. It's kind of true. Um, okay, so in the last round, it's uh, we have one-on-one duels. Um, first duel, which is assigned randomly, um, uh, there's a little hint that, oh, she's rigging it. She's rigging the random 1v1s. So she has Yang fight Mercury. He's over here. Uh, Yuri Lowenthal. So Yuri Lowenthal and Yang uh, are going to be the first fight. Um, it's a pretty even fight, um, but she has to go... Because one punches and one kicks. They're like... Because one punches and one kicks, so they have like a thing going on. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, she shoots fire, he shoots wind, whatever. Uh, she goes rage mode at the end and like barely scrapes out a win, and then... Whenever, so he loses, and as he loses, uh, Emerald does a mind fuckery on Yang to make her think that he has gotten back up and is like still fighting. That he's gonna get he's going like a dirty, to like he's gonna get in a dirty hit. blow after she won. Yeah, yeah. While well, she's like about to celebrate, and then uh, which causes Yang to like turn and like straight fucking like break his legs in execution. <laughs> Yeah, like, she turns around, like, what the audience sees and what actually happens is that she turns around and then punches him sideways in the and, knee. And, and it goes his, sideways. And breaks his leg. Yeah. I, I, Which I actually happens. That is what actually happens. I just walked in on you guys watching it one time. Yes. 
Um, which is really funny out of context. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, holy shit. That's like that the one means. clip I want from the show spliced in. <laughs> Breaks his knee in sideways. Just like his Yosuke yell, like, oh! <laughs> yeah. Um, but, 11 minutes. So, anyways, they go ahead and we're not going to get through all season three. We're going to get through most of it, though. Um, so, anyways, then they, uh, then Neo and Cinder, like, uh, they, and Emerald shows up as, like, his friend, as his teammate, and is like, why the fuck did you do that? And then they have to detain Yang, because they think that she's still, like, in battle mode, and is still, like, going ape shit in rage mode, um, because you can't, like, quite control it. Uh, they detain her, they pull her off, they cut the cameras, because they're like, oh shit, people are gonna be like, what the fuck, that's cheating, can't do that, uh, you can't, like, abuse a win like that. Um, so they get, they get him out of there. Before he gets picked up by actual medics, uh, Neo, like, has transformed into a medic and also trans- transformed Cinder into a medic, and they pull, they pretend to pull him out in the ambulance they've stolen. Or, it's not his ambulance, but it's a, it looks like an ambulance, because, again, triggering shenanigans. Uh, and then we see them in a warehouse in Mercury. He's got robot legs, so his leg isn't actually, like, too fucked. He just repairs it. And then he just has to go into hiding for a little bit while some more shenanigans happens. Uh, if you want to have... Yeah, we'll have a break after the next fight. So the next thing that happens... Wait, but did you... What did the audience actually see? The audience actually saw is uh, him getting his like leg broken sideways by Yang after she won. Yeah, just like totally apropos of nothing. Like seemingly because she's just still enraged. Okay, right. Like, I just want to make sure that was Like clear. she celebrates a victory and then like turns around and just fucking... Yeah, the raped. audience <laughs> saw her celebratory abuse and yeah. what she saw was someone trying to attack And people her. are like on the news like... Yeah, that was fucked up, Yang. What the hell? <laughs> like, yeah, and like it's part of Cinder's weird plan to just like cause a PR disaster for Beacon that will cause Grimm to show up. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's like the first minor step. They're just trying to sow as much chaos as possible, b- possible before the the big thing they do at the end. Um, so then, Team Ruby is like pretty depressed about this. Uh, Ruby and Weiss believe her immediately. Is like. No, clearly you just saw something that wasn't there, and, like, we don't fault you for it. Blake is, like, a little more, like, apprehensive, because she's like, I don't know. She literally says to her, I've seen people go down the path of violence before, but, like, I'm going to trust you on this one. See, your entire lives are the path of violence. What is that supposed to mean? Well, like, she's seen people go, like, from righteous violence to, like, I think that's a reference to her abusive boyfriend. It is. It is explicitly a reference to, like, yeah... She used to think this guy was like a cool, was like a cool rebellion fighter, but now he's just like, yeah. He thinks Why is everyone I love fight. cripple people? Um, <laughs> ten minutes. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, if we, if, if that one still has plenty of time, I just remembered. Um, so since we're not, I was like zooming in on characters as you introduced them, so like we don't actually like need to stop. You can go to the end of season three, though, and take a break. Okay, cool. Um, there is. So after that, the last the last fight starts. People are real apprehensive. Um, the last fight is uh, Pira versus Penny. Uh, so you have um, ro- you have a robot girl versus a girl with magnetic powers. PV. <laughs> oh. And no one knows that she's a robot, and no one knows that she's magnetic. Uh, PVP. So. No one in the audience is suspecting anything. No one in the in the stand or no one in the the announcers aren't expecting anything. Anyway, so Ruby knows this though because she knows both of them, and she's like, "Oh shit, that's really bad." So she gets up uh, from her from her seat in the audience and is like, "I gotta go like tell somebody about this." So she goes, and then whenever she goes into like a maintenance tunnel or like a back room, uh, uh, Mercury steps out and is like, "Hold on there." We got some shit going on. You can't you can't go anywhere. And she's like, what are you doing here and why are you standing? <laughs> uh, and then uh, once she realizes that something's up, she's like, oh shit, I don't have my weapons on me. I'm just like a civilian right now. Uh, so Mercury and her have like a fight. Um, she tries to get away, kind of. She kind of uses her semblance a little bit. She uses her semblance a little bit. Um, because she carries bullets on her, just like in a bandolier all the time. Um, she uses someone to get away, barely. And once she gets away, there's a f- uh, their fight is currently happening. And what um, and with 
all her nerves, uh, emeralds can take over her mind like kind of easily, because uh, she's just in the audience. She's not expecting it. So what she does is she keeps making her think that more like because she pulls swords like floating out of her. She makes her think that more and more like keep coming until there's like an entire fucking like blacked out sky of them. Uh, so she so she freaks out and like does a full magnet pulse. Normally she's like really subtle. So she'll just like make a blade miss or something. That's why no one can tell what it is. Curve her shield. Or curve her shield in the air or something like that. Um, so yeah, so she like fully like blasts back all of it because she thinks she's about to get fucking like speared a hundred times. Uh, since they're on strings, they like fly back past Penny, and they wrap around her, and then they like tighten until they like snip her into like several pieces. And she like falls apart. She's like no! straight dead. She's bisected and she's, more. She's bisected. Her head's cut off. Her arms. Her arm is cut off. Uh, yeah. She like straight she's up murdered. Dead. She's dead. Wait, she just, is that is that just is that, is she dead for the whole series? I I don't know. She's, she's, she's dead she's right now. Straight up been murdered she's in kind, combat on like, screen. She's like kind by of like robot. The, by like you know, the pride of like every school. Yeah, she's like the top Whoa. honor student, and like we don't really know if the robot can be. Right no, there. why? Yeah, so um, this causes like a fucking uproar in the audience. They're like, "Holy shit, you're not allowed to do that!" <laughs> like normally, there's like, there's like, yeah, no, they they call it if it gets too dangerous, and um, normally, like the asterisk, you have uh, you have an aura, which is basically your shield, mm -hmm. uh, which is why you can drag the ball, punch each other, and like it doesn't matter. But whenever you you're down. Uh, normally they'll have like their aura like flickers and then turns into dust. That means they that means they've lost their shield, and that means next hit they take is like lethal. Uh, so normally they do that and then they like someone else pulls them out before they die. Man, it really is like Ublek and then like Mustache Man. It really is like fucking Eraser Head and fucking <laughs> fucking Present Mike up there in the stands. Yeah, yeah, because they're like. Oh shit! And then as soon as that happens, um, she uses her in with the whole school and all that and all the uh, she's machinery. The system. Except none of the fight. She's not the she's not the hacker. She's yeah. just like input a program that she got from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Except who is shown, none, who is shown none, later. None of the fights are really as life affirming as Deku versus Todoroki. Yeah. So, uh, she goes on. She hijacks their their uh their broadcast, and also like locks down the whole. Uh, she locks down like the whole school, and also like sends out all the military drones on like full assault to just like storm the city. Uh, so everything like all hell breaks loose. And the robots have red eyes, so that's how you know they're evil. Yes, the robots like turn to have red eyes, so you know they're evil. They're true Robocops. Yeah. Um, or Ed Two O Nines. So. The people. Uh, then she hijacks the broadcast and just tells like, "Hey, your schools like have child soldiers, dude." You guys are like, you guys, uh, you need to tear down these schools, you need to tear down, you need to take down Ironwood, he's a fucking fascist. You need to, you need to take down Austin, he's like controlling over your whole country, because he's like a, he's like a weird controller man. He's like behind the scenes all the time. Um, yeah, Cinder you, just goes you put too much faith in the, in the hunters and huntresses, you need to uproot the whole fucking status quo, fuck them. Uh, this causes a huge amount of unrest, freaks everybody out. And then Grim like mass invade the city. There's like the worships the whole, above. It's a whole Grim Fandango. Yeah, it's a whole sure. damn Grim Fandango. <laughs> uh, uh, the Grim are like fighting in the skies with all the battleships. Um, a giant, uh, a giant crow bird Grim like attacks the floating Colosseum that they're all fighting in, and is like mashing on the shields while while all the people are evacuating to like airships to get the fuck out of there. Um, Shit is popped off. Shit is broke bad. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. What is the next thing that happens? We have my favorite thing that that Cinder says when she's on the TV is like, you know, she she's going through all the reasons like, oh, like you know, you live in an authoritarian child soldier society, blah blah blah, and then she points out like that robot who was just killed in the ring. That is a that is a highly advanced military weapon disguised to look like an innocent civilian. Why did the people yeah, who are yeah. running this culture want that? Why is that technology they're developing? Maybe to infiltrate the citizenry in order to establish an authoritarian stranglehold on society? Perhaps. Like I, I, I I'm just I, asking questions. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She does. She does point out all that. It's it, it's such like an interesting, like subtle, nuanced issue that she brings up there yes. that I um, really like. 
Um, I don't think that's that stuff. Yeah, a, ro a, ro <laughs> like, a fascist robot. That's, yeah. That is, uh, she's, she sounds like she's 100% right. Well, even if these guys are yeah. not actively abusing their power, like, the power is there Iron to Iron isn't the best guy. No, he's, but he is, he's fucking even-handed about shit. He's super, he's super fair, but he's like, he's, he's not super fair, but he is, uh, uh, he's definitely he, pro he's having like a, an on, He's like actually very honest about what he does. But he, you know, he's just. He basically you know, never has subterfuge like shenanigans going on. He's which like is good old. He's, undoing. he's like good old boss Nass back on Naboo. He has a strong belief in a, like singular autocratic rule. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So, uh, while that's happening, uh, Neopolitan. Neopolitan has uh, snuck onto uh, the ship Ironwood's capital ship. And she busts out Roman, like, while on the ship. Uh, since she's a badass, she just kills all the chump guards there. Uh, like, there's a lot of dead bodies just, like, around. And he's like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Uh, he goes up to the, the front of the ship, and he just starts, like, pressing, pressing buttons until, uh, until, um, boop. Yeah, he's restarting that. Um, he starts pressing buttons until uh, he figures out how the cannons work, and then he just starts shooting down all the other frigates. Again, adding to the chaos of like, oh shit, frigates just start shooting each other. Uh, yeah, and he's uh, and they start remote controlling some of them to like ram each other, uh, and they're trying to like bombard the entire coliseum. Uh, it's a complete nightmare. Meanwhile, he's been on the ground because he's on uh, he's in the coliseum as like a viewer, like a VIP. Uh, he walks outside to the, uh, the spots where everybody's getting evacuated on like the outside ring of this floating coliseum in the sky. Um, and a Grim is like landed there by a bunch of, because uh, the White Fang are also here. They've also started swooping in. They're like airdropping Grim into the city. <laughs> uh, just to like make everything as fucked as possible. Mm. Um, one of them lands on the, on the evacuation pad. Uh, he like shoots all the white fang, and then the bear comes running at him. What's his weapon? Uh, his weapon is Law and Order. It's two pistols, one black, one white. So fucking. Cool. Uh, <laughs> white one shoots like, uh, shoots like phosphorus, like burning bullets that can like shoot through things and like explode. Uh, and the black one shoots gravity bullets. So when he shoots it, he can change his gravity. Six shit. Huh. Yes. Do, do Atlas people just have like a fetish for like fucking with gravity? Uh, yes. That's how all the ships fly. They have a bunch of gravity dust. They're oh. big, they're big, like, they live in the Antarctic, and they have, uh, a bunch of, like, dust mines and shit. They also have a lot of cheap Faunus flavor. Mm. Yeah, it's circle up top. I've been doing that. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Um, yeah. So, they have, um, so, yeah. Oh, he also combined them into one big cannon that, um, I, I think it's called Judgment. It's yeah. pretty badass. Well, um, well, well, no, it would be funny if it was Law and Order, and then you combine it, and it's like SVU. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's where he's going to put you. Yeah. yeah. He's going to fucking... So, um, he's on the ground. A bear comes at him. Uh, he, he is, like, stupidly strong. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, he has one glove and one non-glove hand. That's because this whole arm and, like, this whole thing is all robot. It's like Edward Delbert. He has a bionic arm, yeah. Did we go over that the fact that Mercury was fine is because she broke his robot leg? Yeah. Yes. I okay. point that out. Uh, he just gets it repaired and it's fine. Is it like established that he like stole it or something from them? Um, I think no. It is. Oh. Uh, it is established where, uh, when he got it because um, he got it from, whatever, we're going that later, it's not relevant now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, Ironwood, he like fucking executes a bear by like, Shooting him in the knee, grabbing his hand, flipping it over him, and then putting the bullet, the gun to the back of his head, and sh pulling the trigger, and it explodes. Badass. Uh, it's the coolest shit ever. And he does it in front of like twelve students. He does it in front of a bunch of students, and they go, "Holy shit!" <laughs> like he's tossing around a bear like four times the size of one arm. Uh, again, because he's a big robot man, or only in this half. Um, so yeah, so everyone just starts fighting Grim. All the students, uh, they see Ironwood do this, and they're like. We're not gonna evacuate, we're here to help. We're basically graduates already. So he's like, okay, get on the ground, defend Beacon Tower. That's the important thing, because he knows uh, he knows that what they're after is Amber. They wanna take the rest for juice. Uh, 
Yeah, they want to suck the rest of her juice out. Or just kill her. Um, Ozpin is, like, waiting in the tower. He's just like, oh, fuck, this is bad. So he's just sending out, like, Glenda and Crow, and uh, they're all fighting out in the outer part of the city, trying to defend it. Yes. What? And they're, and he's, he's with them. Um, he's with Piper, he's with Pira and John. Oh, okay. that's, that's on a little bit. That's on a little bit. Um, so after, um, so after reeling from, she fucking murdered somebody, like, straight up, mm-hmm. but she did not think she was doing it at the time. She, like, broke from an illusion and, like, was standing in the Coliseum with a dead person and was like, oh, fuck, what did I do? <laughs> um, so yeah, that, um, uh, so a giant bird, the giant crow that is, like, sieging the thing, uh, smashes through, um, uh, Ruby, who was, like, crying just a moment ago from seeing her fucking best friend just get, like, lopped in half, uh, immediately, like, lunges to her aid and picks up, picks up her swords, which killed her, and is like, you fucking leave her alone, I'm gonna fucking kill you, uh, then the giant bird comes in, uh, and is about to fuck them all up, because this bird is, uh, to establish in season one that yeah. giant birds, they're fucking real bad. They're real dangerous. They're like high tier grim. There's like classes of grim, where it's like a leviathan class grim, or like a normal class, or whatever. They're like tiny ones. Leviathan sounds pretty bad. Leviathan's pretty bad. This isn't a leviathan. Uh, leviathan, uh, leviathans are just like the big mammoths, or like even bigger than that. It's just like the in going on to whatever size they grow to. Female titans still not great. Female titans still not great. Exactly. Um. So yeah, once uh, the bird attacks them, uh, she like doesn't have a chance, and then all the students they call in their their weapon drops. So how they get their weapons in the field is that they have uh, their fucking phones, which are like hologram phones. They can call their weapons, and their locker, which is stored at the school, will shoot like a rocket with all their stuff in it to wherever they're at. And all of the all of the students all call their thing, and they all call it in the Coliseum. So, like, a huge barrage of lockers just, like, crashes into the back of the bird and kills it. <laughs> it's, so, it's so cool. It's pretty fucking awesome. And then all awesome. the weapons, and all then the all the weapons come out, and, and then everybody... they all come out and, yeah. like, are standing on its corpse oh, with all their weapons. And you have sick. a big hero pose. It's, it's rad. Ass. It's so rad. Yeah. Uh, these guys stay behind in the Coliseum to just kill everything that's coming. They all go to the ground, um, along, with, along with these guys. You guys are also there. Um, oh. For the record, they, the only reason they lost is because they lost to they lost to Cinder in Emerald when they were fighting. That's why. That's the only reason they lost because they're like the most badass. Mm-hmm. Um, they get on the ground. They're defending the tower um, while people are evacuating. Uh, while people are evacuating, Austin comes down from his fucking place on high, and he's like, "Pira, you have to come with me. We're doing it now. I mean, it's your choice." Like he he gives her a choice. He's like, "Okay." Do you want to do it? Because we have to do it now. Because uh, shit is about to break that. Uh, John comes with because um, he's defending her. He's protecting her. He's protecting her. Yay. Our guy. Um, and they go down into the vault. Uh, meanwhile, on the ground, uh, Blake is like, oh shit. Fucking, I know he's here. Uh, she goes to defend Yang, who's like locked up in a room, basically under detention. So they find out what to do with her for misconduct. And uh, she sees what's happening is like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Uh, shit is going like from zero to hundred in like literally an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, so Blake is going to save Yang. Yang is going to the uh, to Beacon because she sees where that's where everybody's at. She sees Ruby there, Weiss is there. They're fighting a bunch of robots um, and a bunch of Grim at the same time. Um, on the way to Yang, uh, Blake is cut off by this guy, Adam Torres. Uh, he shows up no, and he's no. like. I, he's like, I can't believe you're fucking here of all places. Like, she ran away. She's she's been missing. He's been looking for her, my like on the side. My child wife. <laughs> yeah, my child wife. You've fucking been missing this whole time. I can't. I can't believe you fucking abandoned me. You know I something? Believe, I can't believe you're seventeen. I can't believe you're an old hag. Yeah. <laughs> I have to kill you now. Yeah. He he says like he says like some people have caused have caused me pain. Some people have left scars, but none none like you. And he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Damn. Um. Uh, so they start fighting. Um, he uh, like breaks her shield like immediately, completely trumps her, uh, and like has her like pinned on the ground under his foot, and is like, 
I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna just kill you, and I'm gonna destroy everything you love. Hard cut on love to Yang. She's outside the building. She's smashing up Yang. She's like, Blake, where the fuck are you at? It's so uh, great. And then she looks in. She sees this guy, like standing over her. And she's like, who the fuck is that? And then he like raises up his sword and straight up stabs her in the gut. Like actually stabs her. He is stabbed. He's impaled. Fuck. That's not a clone. Uh, she like yells out in pain. He can't stand. Uh, Yang immediately flips from what's going on to full rage mode. She goes full sicko mode and like charges him. <laughs> she like double rocket fists and like goes to punch him. Uh, he immediately sheathes the sword, turns to her, unsheathes the sword, slash, and just cuts her fucking arm off immediately. <laughs> She's immediately out. Oh. She goes from full blaze mode to immediately like, like shield break it broke dead. Or not dead. She's armed out. Bleeding She's out. Down. She's bleeding out. Uh, he looks down uh, and is like about. Uh, he raises his sword to cut Blake, uh, cut Blake's head off. Swipes through and then she turns to dust. It was a clone. And then he sees her like hobbling away with Yang. And then uh, he gets super pissed and just like fucking smashes the building he's in. <laughs> and she gets away to um, evacuate. There is uh, meanwhile all these guys. They're fighting out in front of the building. Uh, this girl, who's been taking pictures the whole time with her camera, that's her only weapon, presumably, is a camera. She zooms in on Scarlet Velvetina. Scarlet <laughs> Velvetina Rabbit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she says, like, uh, her leader says, like, okay, yeah, now's the time. Unload. Go full bore. Unload. So she pulls out her camera. It, uh, out of the camera, dust comes out. It's called hollow dust. Take, it can take the form of physical objects. Hard light construct. Yeah, it's a hard light thing. It's hard light dust, basically. Um, and everyone she's taken a picture of, she can form their weapon and perfectly mimic their fighting style, because that's her semblance. Her semblance is like a photographic memory. So everyone she's been seeing fight for the whole tournament, she starts like switching between all their weapons on the fly, and it's just like completely decimating robots. It's totally sick. Uh, they play like the whole opening. So can she only spawn everyone's weapons like once? Um, yes. Because otherwise she'd just be the most powerful character. Yes. Yeah, it's it's she takes a photo of one use, then she, she has, has to take yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah because it, it only lasts for like a few seconds, and then she has to switch to a different one. I remember at the at the fight at the end of season two, she goes to get her camera. Coke's like, oh wait, no, don't use that. You've been like saving those up. And yeah, you've been building that up uh, all semester. Yeah. She says. Is she part of the photo club? Probably. A photography club? Um, the, this team, if I have a fourth guy, he literally is the lamest shit ever, so I didn't even take a picture of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, this guy is cooler than him. The other guy is just like... He's a guy. He doesn't talk. No. Because he's mute, so he just tele he just telepathically communicates. Whatever. Yeah, he's not me Neapolitan. Yeah, he's not Neapolitan. So he has no style, no class. He looks like a fucking Naruto character. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. With the white hollow eyes and everything. Yeah, these this team though they have a they have a whole fucking spin-off series uh, of, books. <laughs> of books of books okay. yeah. of books. Uh, I read the first one. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that much. Don't. Uh, they go to they go to they go to the the desert place and they're doing shit there over the course of the rest of the show basically after this. Um, they run into characters that go there, but we're not gonna be there. Um, pretty much ever. We're not gonna go there really. There is so Ospin has brought down Pira and John has come along to they're going to make the maiden transfer. Um and hopefully uh she'll be able to do something to help. Um Ospin's a pretty huge badass. He's pretty much the most badass fighter here. Although we don't see him fight at all yet. We don't see him fight until this moment because yeah. they go down there and uh, Sindra comes down there, like, solo by herself, uh, and is like, uh, she, uh, while they're doing the transfer, uh, Austin's, like, manning terminals, uh, she gets past John and shoots an arrow that, like, pierces into the pod and just, like, shoots her in the heart. Uh, and then all her main powers flow into her, so she straight dies. Um, she is shot dead. All her main powers go to her. Uh, she goes, oh, no. she goes full maiden like underground, and then Pyrrha steps up to. Uh, Pyrrha's like inside of a pod, like fucking screaming and pounding on it to let her out. 
uh, which he uh, John breaks her out, and then our guy, uh, they our guy. And then they they post up behind Austin like we're ready we're ready man we're here to back you up and he's like leave you're gonna die in the like crossfire <laughs> leave Cinder to me so like him and Cinder like post up like Mexican standoff while while they just like slink off past them uh, and then they and then they do a a big ass fucking anime fight. Um, Ospin and her are like dashing around like off the walls and shit. Uh, she's shooting fireballs. He's shooting like he's shooting like lasers and shit. We don't know how he's doing that. Uh, he is. Uh, oh yeah, he's like somehow keeping up with her, even though Maiden was supposed to be like the most badass thing ever. Presumably because they say that whenever you first get a main power, you have to learn how to use it because mm-hmm. no one's used to magic. Um, but yeah, he's keeping up. He's also casting magic, which is weird. That's the weird thing, because he doesn't have any visible dust on him. Um, and he's finding her literally with just a cane, like just his cane, um, which doesn't turn into a gun or anything. Yeah. It just like collapses. It does have hands. gears on it. It has gears on it. Those come up. Don't yeah, worry. Like, uh, yeah, okay. Um, those, are, those are actually in they, I, the I volume them, like, five sure. opening, okay. I think. They show, they show the gears off of close, and they do stuff later. Okay. Anyways, they have a big fight. Um, the, uh, you don't get to see the conclusion of this fight, but I will tell you, Austin fucking dies. Cinder kills him. Oh, even oh, he's like the uh, most badass guy. They, they wait for the beginning of season four to tell you that. Yeah, yeah. What you doing? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Austin dies. Wow. Like, uh, like trying to let everybody get away. Um, so then after she kills him, she goes up to the top of the tower, uh, top of Beacon Tower, where a, uh, and like calls using her like maiden powers and grim arm combination weird magic. Uh, she calls a massive grim. Uh, there's a grim dragon that has been like sealed away in the mountains around, um, around Vale or around Beacon. Beacon. That's the name. No, the Beacon Academy, but Vale is the city. Vale is the town. Okay. Um, so she calls a big dragon. It bursts out of the mountain and like flies over the city. It's so big. That like it can't hold itself together, so tar is dripping off of it in bone fragments, which when they hit the ground, they turn into more grim. Yeah, it's like it's like sin in FF10. His dandruff comes to life and kills you. He's so evil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it comes and it lands on like top of the tower, and uh, it's like calling more grim. Uh, the city's like most the city's like mostly evacuated, but like two thirds of the population has fucking died. <laughs> Um, soldiers are on the ground, like, getting killed left and right. Most of the Atlas military has been, like, taken out of the sky. Um, all the shit has popped off. While all these characters have been fighting on the ground, uh, Ruby has seen, like, one of the capital ships is, um, yeah, Iron was originally going to this capital <coughs> ship, he got shot down. Uh, Ruby sees the capital ship going rogue. So she solo, she takes a solo mission. She's like, I'm gonna fucking take the whole capital ship back. So she, um... She gets on top of her rocket locker. Yeah, so she gets on top of her rocket locker. She, like, puts her scythe on it to, as a handle. And then, put, uh, and then sends it to the, to the thing and, like, flies on it like a rocket and lands on the ship. Uh, whenever she lands on the ship, uh, Neo and Roman are like, What the fuck? Who's stupid enough to come do this? <laughs> we killed all the large, we killed all the large things and there's no one left on the ship. So, uh, she's on top of the ship. She's fighting both of them while it's on autopilot just like bombarding everything um because it's got massive energy shields that literally no one can penetrate uh other than if you walk through it that type of shit they're on the deck going a billion miles an hour neapolitan's gonna knock her ass off yeah yeah so uh neo (laughs) so they get her on like the edge of on the edge like hanging by her sight um and neo is like about to about to stab her or like has holding her while roman like fucking just monologues to her uh, she, she... About how much of a capitalist he is. Yeah, about how much of a, like, complete bastard and how, uh... Like, this is where he reveals yeah. his motivations, where he's like, he's like, I don't give a shit what Cinder wants, I want fucking money and power. Yeah, yeah, he's like, look, they're the winning team, I'm just, I'm not gonna sit side with you guys, you guys are all chumps. Yeah, he's just a, he's just an opportunist. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> while that's happening, uh, she does a, uh, Ruby does a little speed semblance, and, like, swipes her hand up, and does uh activates her umbrella and unfolds it which then pulls her off and like tosses her off the ship yeah so neapolitan's umbrella opens up (laughs) out of the fight yeah out of the fight 
and then Ru- uh, and then Ruby comes up. Uh, her gun is like um, it's not jammed, but yeah, she's like been disarmed. It's like farther down the ship, and Roman's between them, and uh, he's just fucking like beating on her with a cane. Uh, he says um, something along the lines. Did I write it down? It's a pretty fucking great. It's a pretty great line. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He says um, something along the lines of, uh, "If you're gonna, if you're gonna foolishly fight for like the good guys or whatever, why don't you just get in line and die like every other huntsman in history? Because I'm gonna hear, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight, cheat, steal, and survive. And then he, and then a bird just swoops and eats him whole. He just fucking dies. Wow. Roman Torchwick. Thanks. Dead. Roman Torchwick, fucking dead. Let's go ahead and. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't get an F. No respect. No, no. <laughs> no, no respect. He's a chump. He's a chump. He just fucking dies. Um. So Roman's dead, but the ship is going down because now there's a giant fucking bird attacking it, attempting to eat all the corpses on it. Mm. Um. Ruby like basically. She pogo jumps. Off. Uh. So she basically like toros it to dodge out of the way and it just crashes in the ship and it just like crashes down into the city and destroys even more buildings. Um uh yeah, so then she jumps off, Pogo sticks down, and she gets down and she is with Weiss down on the base around the tower. They're like, Where the fuck is Yang? Where the fuck is Blake? Where the fuck is anybody right now? Everybody's missing. Um Yeah, so uh Weiss tells uh, Ruby, um, oh yeah, so, Pira comes out, uh, and John, are, and John also comes out of the vault. They're up there around where everyone's fighting, and they're like, okay, we're gonna get out of here, we're abandoning Beacon, like, it's gone. The whole city is, like, bust. Beacon so has all leave. fallen. Beacon has fallen, that is the tagline. Mm-hmm. Um, Pira... Beacon got fried. Crispy Beacon. Yeah, right up. <laughs> uh, Pira has, um... Pira decides, like, no, I, uh, I have to do whatever I can. Uh, even if I die trying, I need to uphold my responsibility to defend this place to the last stand. So he's gonna solo up the tower, and she's gonna one v one Cinder at the top. In the in the broken in the broken tower. In the broken she, tower. She she walks into a a elevator car and lifts it with her fucking yeah, with her magnet powers, powers and just like, like shoots it up. Like Kazuma Kiryu to the top of Millennium Tower. Yeah. It's so fucking cool. But you see, before she steps into it, there's like a burned hole where Cinder has like shot through the whole elevator shaft. Um. So Ruby and Weiss hear this, and Ruby's like. You guys let her go up there alone, and Weiss is like, we don't know what to do. And Ruby's like, I'm gonna go help her. Weiss, help me up there. So Weiss, uh, what are her other powers with her circles? Is that you can sigils. also you can also run on them, like how she slides on them. Yeah, the, si- the them. sigils have their own center of gravity. Yeah, they have their own like center of gravity if she uses gravity dust. Apparently. Yes, that makes them black instead of white. Um, so she makes a. She uses the last of her dust, makes a line going up the whole side of the building, and Ruby just fucking sprints up the building to go and help Pira fight Cinder. Uh, yeah. And she is right on time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, everybody else leaves. It's just these three. Uh, she is right on time. Or, well, Pira's putting a, up a good fight, but Cinder's kind of... Pira is like a p- complete badass. Like, yeah. she's like, she's like almost as badass as one of the adults. Um, especially because her semblance is like really busted because she's fighting not she's fighting Cinder and also like avoiding the giant dragon and like swooping and like attacking the whole thing um yeah it's like a, it's like fucking a, like a like a fire lord versus an avatar mm-hmm. basically yeah. yeah yeah it's about on that like level of power um so Cinder at one point she gets she gets Cinder in a chokehold with her spear uh to which Cinder just like straight up uh Reaches up, grabs it, and just burns it in half into pieces. Like, melts it. Yeah, melts it with her hands, um, and uh, and disarms her. Something else that she can do, I think this is her actual symbols and not her fire powers. Uh, she can like make like black stone or no, she can make obsidian like weapons on the fly. Right. With like some kind of fire shit. She like, creates. Yeah, lava. she creates like she like suspends these crystals and like superheats them and fires them like magic missiles. 
Yes. Uh, she can also do that to create weapons, which is how she. And you know, it's like the most like the most powerful single projectile in the show because it looks really, really, really cool. <laughs> yes, that's how it works. Yeah. Communication. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Conveyance. So she like breaks her shield. Once you're out of your shield, um, that means you're out of aura. That means you can't do semblance. Can't do anything. Um. And Pira like kneels. Like a like a fucking uh, like a Japanese warlord and was like I accept I accept my death. You may give me a warrior's death. So then she like pull, makes an make a giant great bow and like point blank pulls it back to shoot her like dead in the head. Uh, right then Ruby comes up, like just makes it top of the building. Uh, Cinder uh, loses the arrow. It uh, it impales her like straight through the heart and then she evaporates into like fire dust. And burns away and is dead. Uh, so she's fucking dead. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, no, no, she, no. Gets put put she gets an F. She gets an F. Put it, put it, She gets an F. Look at poor girl. Got poor girl. So much. She's poor been through girl. a lot. Big F. Put it on her shoulder. Um. So yeah. So she dies. Uh, Ruby is like, whole fuck. It's my second friend that I've seen die right in front of me okay, today. Okay. And so let me let me describe this. Okay. So you know how like Japan got nuked. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you know how, like, in anime, at, like, the beginning of, like, a JRPG, or, like, whatever, and, like, whenever a character gets exploded, be it in Dragon Ball or by a nuclear bomb, like, the, the colors reverse, and then it's all pure white, and then the character is drawn out of lines, and then the lines start to separate, Yeah. and, like, they, they disappear, uh... Ruby does a Broly rage blast and makes that happen, and Cinder's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so something that happens is uh, Ruby, her eyes, like, glow white, wings, like, sprite, sprout out of them made of, like, angelic white light. It's Garzy's wing! It's like Garzy's wing. Yeah. Um, this, uh, this makes Cinder be like, what the, and, like, she holds up a hand. Uh, and like the dragon immediately turns to stone and is petrified, and uh, and then Ruby uh, Ruby blacks out. She's blasted away, and then bam. We don't cut. see what, we don't, we don't see, see what, what happens. We don't see what happens to Cinder. She's just like oh my god, and then the screen yeah. goes white. The screen goes white, and then like it's a fully white out, and you can hear like tinnitus sound as you hear like characters talking over presumably Ruby's like fucking corpse <laughs> and Cinder's and everyone's. <laughs> and cinders and all that. Um, she's in, she sent into a coma for, um, I think like a couple days. A minute. Like like a minute enough to enough time for her to get evacuated to her home, uh, and then a bunch of shit happens while she's asleep. Uh, her dad shows up, I think is. I couldn't find. He's him. like right now. Hi, young. Where's he at? Okay, whatever. I kept. He, he shows up late. He shows up. In he's a blonde part. guy. So I, yeah, I put him after that because he's he's not really important, but he he's there. So is Crow. Crow's also there, kind of watching over them. Uh, Yang is nursing her wounds because she's down her fucking arm. No lick, arm. Licking them, licking them. Yeah, uh, she looks, she, she normally looks like super happy and ganky. She's fucking like straight depressed. She's like, oh fuck. Um, Weiss was, uh, her dad came and like took her home. He's like, nope, you're not leaving home. You're gonna stay safe with me. Uh, Blake disappears. No one knows what happened to Blake. Um, uh, Pure's gone. Rip. Rest in pepperonis. Um, and the rest of people all take evacuation. <sighs> Some characters go other places, but whatever. We'll discuss that later. And yeah, that is basically how Volume Three ends. Is we're back at uh, we're back at Ruby and Yang's home, which is an island off Beacon, and all the veil is like destroyed. It's like completely lost. Um, there's still there, like, some hunters are still there fighting, we like, clear out Grimm. We see Blake there, don't we? No, you see Glenda there, okay. and, like, these guys, okay. since they're all hunters, um, they're cleaning the place out. Yeah, the teachers. In the aftermath, right. but they're just trying to reclaim it. This takes, uh, they'll be doing this for a fucking while. <laughs> and mostly unsuccessfully. There is, yeah, and that is the last thing that happens in Volume 3. However, there are two plot points with the two sisters, Ruby and Booby, that we didn't go over. Ruby. Where halfway through, Crow tells us, the viewer, that the person, the mysterious masked person who saved Yang oh, from yeah. Neapolitan over there, I'm going to zoom in, 
right there, that yeah. is... That that right there, that is Yang's biological mother, and that is Ruby's, like, stepmom by marriage through her dad. Um, you can tell because they have the same cowlick at the top of their head. How fucking old is she? Her? Yeah. She has, like, a really husky voice. She's probably like late. She's the same age as Crow. She's she like, yeah, she's like Crow. She might be a little bit. She's older. a little older, actually. She's like, if he's like thirty-eight, she's like forty. Yeah, so you know, they Crow's, they went to Beacon together. So Crow's sister. They went to Beacon together. You'll right? see it in the OP. Yeah, she will look young. You will see it in, old. in the OP. Um, yeah, she does look young. Uh, you don't see she has a mask on. Normally, she wears a grim skull all the time whenever she's out. This is like one of the rare times to see your face. This is another one of those things about Ruby that I feel like confuses a lot of people initially because she looks like you you'd imagine that Ruby and Booby are just sisters because eight. she's she Raven, she's just Yang, but with Ruby's color palette. Yes, that is yeah. that is Which is saying. also shared with the White Fang, but she's not affiliated with them either. Yeah, not, not until later. She's her own thing. Yeah, she's not affiliated with she? Ruby biologically, and she's not with the white fang. Okay, so she's Yang's mom. Yes. Yeah, she's yes. Yang's Ruby's biological mom. Ruby's mom looks different. We'll see her in a second. But she looks like Ruby. Yes. Yes, color color. Fuck? Yang is that Yang's dad has the has the right colors going on. Yang yeah. dad. What the has fuck is this show? Yang, uh, the, yeah, Yang the uh, Tai Yang Zhao Long is a man with taste. Yes. He's yeah. all about that he's got badass. Some, he's got some fine lady taste. Let some, me tell you. That goth GF energy yeah Ru ruby's mom just looks like ruby but like aged up and she wears a white gown or a white hood instead of a red one not as cool um uh, she is pretty cool she's pretty cool TBH. um are we not yeah. we're gonna get into her at all not particularly we'll detail her a little bit we, we know what happened to her we know probably how she died assuming um that she is actually dead because actually at the cemetery where she's yeah, I forgot that she's fucking dead yeah yeah at, at the cemetery where she's at uh, they don't have a body buried there but they just have a marker for her <clears throat> um, that's not explicitly said but it is implied because they they guess what might have happened to her later anyways so that is season 3 wrapped up Any five, more five, more five more seasons five more seasons five more seasons it's kind of it's, it's a lot there's a lot of shit that happens. <sighs> season 3 is the first one that's, like, dense. There's a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of characters, a lot of stuff moving. Um, are we gonna take a break? I can't tell if I completely understand what's going on or have, like, a million questions. And thankfully, I have about a thousand answers. He fucking died defending his kingdom. Yeah, man. What a badass. Yeah. Last line of defense. That's a damn penny you really love, Homestead. <laughs> <laughs> True. My girl. Okay. Both cameras rolling. Both cameras rolling. Both audacities happening. Both audac my audacities happening. Yours is happening. My my audacity and your audacity. Okay, three, <laughs> two, notes. one. Bad to sync on sound. Okay, cool. What's up, Ron Ruby? We're back in the lecture part two, everybody. We got uh, to recap. Beacon fell. Tower fell. Everyone died. A bunch of fucking. There's a corpse pile. <laughs> <laughs> some of them are and still. We got, I mean, that's still some of them just up here is like a, a mooring. Those, mooring. Are the, those are the fondly remembered. Yeah, these are the fondly remembered. They're remember up in ones. heaven, looking down at us. Um, the kings of our past. Yeah, global communications are fucking gone because Beacon Tower's down, so they have no more network. So oh, now, no, the internet. I, I, my I, favorite. I, 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 yeah, I, I, no, the I, internet. I, the internet as it existed is now gone. Whoa. It's been taken down. Now all the kingdoms are like locked out of each other. Um, Fucking globalist. I'm damn glad. Yeah. Uh, General Ironwood uh, take, uh, takes the last remnants of his army back home and fucking locks down borders. He's like, fuck all y'all. We ain't letting anybody in this shit. Uh, Yang gets kidnapped, goes back home. Uh, White, uh, or Weiss gets kidnapped, goes back home by your dad. Uh, Yang uh, is resting home with her. Resting home with her dad, still recovering, still missing an arm, rip in peace. Blake has disappeared. Um, the but first thing that happens uh, in season four is we get some care we get some character intros.
or Taven. Um, continue keeping up. Uh, Blake, uh, Blake has uh, snuck off during the evacuation. Uh, she did not tell her friends where she's going. She didn't tell anybody. She fucked off. Uh, Sun, though, has tagged along with her. Uh, turns out she's going home. That's what she's doing. She's going to go sort out her family shit. Um, where to? Where to? She's heading to Menagerie, which is a, like, not one of the four kingdoms. Menagerie is a separate place where all the, uh, where all the faunus uh, were, have been, like, basically deported, a la Israel. <laughs> or, oh, no, it's Australia. It's a southeast island where they put prisoners. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's where the faunus were allowed to live after a big great war happened where the faunus fucking, like, straight up had an uprising. Okay, so Blake is home to Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Um, it literally is a, like, mostly desert island with, like, nothing on it that's valuable. They have, like, a small section of it that is tropical that they can live on. Um, but yeah, she's gone home to sort out family shit. Uh, some thinks initially that she's gonna go fucking take the fight to the White Fang and, like, just destroy them. But no, she's like, no, I'm not doing that. What the fuck is wrong with you? They almost killed me. Um, Ruby has, um, uh, been told about, she hasn't been told about the mains or anything, but, uh, uh, Crow tells her, like, yeah, if you want to find out, like, kind of more about what happened, um, your best bet is to head off to Mistral and, like, you'll learn shit along the way. Uh, he can't tell her explicitly. Um, are you been taking those? Okay, cool. Did he, so did he tell her about the Silver Eyes thing? Yeah, he tells her about the Silver Eyes thing. Basically says, uh, people with Silver Eyes, um, they're, like, told, they're, like, basically set up to be total badasses. Your mom was a Silver Eyed lady, uh, and it's, like, genetic. Um, uh, it always comes back to eugenics in the end. It's true. It's a family thing. Yep. Whatever. Anyways. That's why I'm anti-family, is because it's family is pro-eugenics. Sure, buddy. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, in the in the intro to season four, which we'll play the intro in a second. Um, well, that's not the epilogue of season three. She, has, like, she appears, but like literally, she just like says some spooky shit and whatever. She has a proper introduction now. So anyways, uh, this is Salem. She's the she's the main fucking leader. Give me the rest of the points. Yeah. That's, that's a gang, that's a gang, that's a gang. Yeah. Need all these guys. So Cinder and like her whole fucking motley crew of, of villains is introduced. They sit around a big evil table in a big castle in a big dark continent. It's like purple sky, black ground. They're yeah, black there. ground. There's like tar pits everywhere that Grim like sprout out of. They're in hell. They're they, literally they, in hell. They're posted up literally in hell. And Salem is the devil. And uh, she is the villain. Uh, Cinder's all fucked up. She lost an eye. She can't speak. She lost an arm. She's like, uh, she's like real fucked up from what Ruby did to her. And she's really pissed about it. And she can't talk? Uh, she can't talk. She's like so weak that she like can barely do anything. It's a shame because the performance is so good. Yeah. She gets her voice back. Like over time. Uh, but it gets like even raspier pretty rad. Uh, okay, so the rest of these guys, they're putting up here. These are like her main... Yeah, he's not a part of it. Um, so this is... Uh, so this guy, he's James Watts. Uh, he's like a science man. He's the guy who made the hacking program and all that. Uh, he's from Atlas, which is where Ironwood's from. Uh, he's got beef with Ironwood. Um, this guy, he's got beef with Ospin, who's now fucking dead. Um, he basically is... Uh, yeah, he's got a vendetta against him. Uh, Tyrion, he's just a fucking psychopath. He's all about like, he worships torture. he worships Salem as a goddess and says that she's a goddess of destruction and will deliver us to like uh, to like the glory glorious burning world or something. He's like completely insane. He's also a faunus. He has a scorpion tail, which cool. he can sting people with and it fucking kills them. <laughs> uh, he like has like acid poison. It fucking murks the shit out of you. Especially if you're a normie. If you're a normie, it just straight kills you. Um, wow. Yeah. He's pretty hardcore. He's like a psycho, complete psychopathic murderer. Basically, like, really a lot like Kimberly. Yes. Yeah, he's a lot like Kimberly. Even more... He even more even Kimberly. looks like Kimberly. I think about Kimberly anytime I look at him. Yeah. He has the same vibe. Um, okay. So now we'll play the intro.
There you go. Awesome. That's the best opening. Joking. Yeah, it's it's the healing. Opening. It's the healing opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. um, all these guys they got some shenanigans. Basically, um, Watts is sent off to um, he is sent off to Mistral, which is where uh, Ruby is headed. So Ruby's headed. That's like the east, or the no, that's to the west actually. That's uh, basically China. Mm -hmm. That's where these two are from. Um, so they're going to be tra traveling through their homeland. Um, this guy is sent after... He's initially going to be sent to kill someone else, but um, uh, Cinder requests from Salem, like, hey, can we get fucking vengeance on Ruby? Because fuck her. She, killed, she like killed me almost. Mm -hmm. So he's sent after Ruby to just fucking uh, bring her back alive, not kill her. That's important. Comes up later. Um, this guy is sent to Menagerie because... Uh, she thinks the White Fang might be trying to betray her. So he's going to be sent there to fucking keep them in line. So everyone's going everywhere. Shit's going on. Uh, Ruby, she leaves a note and just uh, fucks off. John, Nora, and Ren are all going with her. So they are now Team Ranger. R and J. Um, and Crow and, is and like Crow. shadowing them and at first. Because, uh, you know, he doesn't want to be near them because he's someone's shit, and also he doesn't want them to know that he's following them. Yeah, Donkey Kong Country uh, Drop Breeze featuring Crow Mode. Yeah. Um, Yang is at home. She's she's still real sad about fucking losing her arm and everybody dying, you know, all that terrible shit that happened. Uh, uh, to, wrap, to wrap up, most of what happens to her is her dad uh, gets an arm donated from uh, this guy, Iron he personally, he, uh, this guy has a, he has a scientist just, like, make a robot arm and send it to him, and she's like, that's kind of weird, I don't know if I'm going to jump immediately back into all this, mm -hmm. I'm going to, like, take a while and, like, think about it. Yeah. Um, uh, Weiss, she has a short kind of arc where she's, uh, she's at home, uh, her dad makes her do, like, a bunch of, she does, like, a concert, and they have to do, like, a... Wait, yeah, she can sing. Oh, she's a singer. She's an idol? Yeah, what? she can sing. It's like a what? not like a con not like a concert, like a concerto. Huh? Like it's classy. She does oh, like okay. opera. It's like Oh, opera. okay. Here, take some of these new shit. Take some of these new shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So here's wow. so here's some new character designs for you. Uh, Ruby is not is now less pale as fuck. Which I don't like as much. Oh. Um, yeah, everyone gets a slight update. John has like almost no difference. He just loses the shoulder pads. Well, I think isn't his new armor made out of Pierre's armor? Um, it's not. I think his weapon. Uh, his weapon is like combined with pieces. Okay. Or, Some shit like that. Yeah, he carries her with with him. That's a thing. Uh, she gets she gets a more prominent jacket. Yeah, she just gets way hotter. Yeah, she just gets hotter. Pretty good. Yo, she has the slash through the heart on her yeah, shirt. Yeah, she has a slash through the heart. Because you're to blame. Yeah, uh, Weiss dresses for the cold because now she's in fucking Antarctica. Uh, do you want her dad? Uh, in a bit. Give me all the character design updates. For you. That is for you. I guess that's everybody for now. Uh, what about Ren? Ren looks cool. Right? No, no, whatever. Just give me in the order that I put them. Okay. So, yeah. So anyways. Uh, uh, this kid is also introduced. This kid. You don't know anything about him. He's just shown. He's like a farm boy, and he has some like, weird. He start. He sees some weird shit. And he's like, what? You don't know anything about that. You come up here. All right. He's up in Evan. Yeah. Um, he's up in RPG Starting Town. He shows up. He also shows up like way later. For some reason, they foreshadow him. Whatever. Um. Yeah. There's a little thing where they visit Summer's grave and like think about what she looks like. So here's what she looks like. Here's what Summer looks like. She looks very similar to Ruby. Ruby's mom. Yeah, that's Ruby's mom. Wait. Keep that, keep that for a little bit. Oh, she little is long. cool. Yeah, she's pretty cool. Put her up with the F. Yeah, we'll put her up in the F's. In the F's. We'll put, them, put her right below Penny. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> um, oh, yeah. Mommy. So they visit, her, they visit her grave. They have a little sister. They have a sister moment before she leaves. Oh, that print of Ruby is really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some of these printed out good. Some of them is like the printer fucked up. Whatever. Um, yeah, so. Team Ranger, they head out. Uh, Blake hits home to Menagerie. 
in Menagerie, uh, she meets up with her parents, who um, we surprisingly find out that they're like they're like great con around here. Um, they like they basically oversee the place. They're like a loose kind of government because there's a very small population. There's a super small population of Faunus. There's like maybe a, like a few thousand here. It's ultimately a small like city state. Um, her parents, yes, that's her parents. We're skipping the hook right there. Fucking captain. What? <laughs> Fuck. Anyways, here's what Blake. Here's what Blake's dad looks like. He's a total Chad. He doesn't give a fuck. He's like a bear man. He don't give a fuck. And he has the hottest wife. He has like a lolly wife. She's like half his height. He's a liar. <laughs> yeah, dude, the faunus. They know. They know what they want. Yeah. They like they, they, they like the young yeah. women. Uh, she's adorable. She's great. Um. Yeah. So they do that. There is some. Um, I'm having to jump around now. Just I, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, that's yeah. This is white shit, and this oh. is this is the rest of. That's the rest of. You're talking. You, look, you're talking about shit. I know. Uh, look, you can hand me that, and I'll cover the rest of Blake's shit. We'll do Blake's shit, and then we'll do Weiss's. Originally, I was going to do Weiss's first, but... Well, we can do that. I'm going in this order. It's too late. Anyways... Thank you. Who's this guy? Do you want hot brown girl? Oh, yeah, hot brown girl. Okay, yeah. So anyways, uh, in... In Menagerie, uh, Blake is surprised to find out that the White Fang is just operating here. They're like, they're like around, and people are totally cool with it, because they're down with the furries. Uh, this guy, his name's Fennec Corsack. He's like the, uh, he's like the representative, uh, along with his brother, who is named, I think, Albion Corsack. Wow. Or, Cor or yeah, Albain Corsack. The illustrious Corsack family. Yeah, yeah. This dude's like a twink, and this dude's his cool little brother. Um, I don't know if they're actually related. They call each other brother, though. It's like a religion thing or something. Uh, and they're, so they have, uh, White Fang has their own great con, who is this, who is Sierra Khan. Yeah, she's a total uh, She She's like, uh, so to explain the White Fang kind of fuckery, uh, basically this dude used to be con of the White Fang. He founded it, and then started getting too violent, but they won the Great War. So afterward, he stepped down. He let her, who was like the first general, of their army, like step up and take place. Then he took, like, presided over Menagerie. So he's like King of Menagerie, basically. And she's like a war leader of like a separate faction that they are kind of allied with. Um, she has publicly said, like, no, we do not associate with with this dude, Adam Taurus. He's a splinter group. Um, but they're, these guys are fucky. Like, immediately, she's like, no, this is fuck shit. They're not allowed to do that. Um, another thing is that in um, the thing that denotes like cool white fang from bad white fang is that bad white fang wear masks. They wear like grim masks because they want to scare people. Um, yeah. Um, this kind of building up tension for now. There's also a, but uh, we'll cover what Weiss is doing right now. So give me some Weiss characters. All the characters with white hair and blue eyes. Yes. And also Iron Fist. He's also there. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is Weiss's dad. This uh, this is her dad by marriage, not by birth, because uh, oh. he married in the family. His name is Jock Snee. He's a total bastard. And uh, yeah. Um. Uh. Let's see. Weiss's mother is not around, but she is referenced, and we know she's not dead because they've talked about her before. So that's. But they don't. But the family itself doesn't talk about her. That's not her bio dad. That's not her bio dad. Her bio mom is like around, but like uh, the family. She's like a family secret almost. You don't, you don't see her until way later. Basically, they're ashamed of her because she's uh, um, like she was going to take over the company, but then like her dad and her husband, her first husband died, oh. and then she got really alcoholic. I see. Like non-functioning, and then just like. This guy married into the family and took over everything. Uh, and also raised his kid. His name, uh, this is Willow She. That's his, that's her younger brother. He's a total twink. He's also a bitch. Yeah, Fuck him. Sounds about right. 
sounds like a little faggot. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> faggot. Uh, this is their weird butler. The only thing you know about this butler is that he's like a com- he has like multiple personalities in one person. Like his eyes change color, and he switches from like a Scottish like like bar fighter to like. A, to like an angry dad to like a proper Watson it's super weird Interesting. I don't know why that's a semblance I think it is a semblance <laughs> but it has nothing to do with fighting and it Sem- doesn't do anything semblance schizo he just like switches like every sentence or like when he sneezes it's very weird oh, like launch like fucking launch yeah it's like launch wow um uh, yeah how this basically works out is that um after a concert there's some bourgeoisie people. Some guy hits on her. She goes, nah, fuck you. None of you care about what happened. None of you care how people fucking died out there, man. I was there. I was on the ground. Yeah? Uh, and I wanted to mention one more death that we've neglected to mention in Volume 3, uh, Monty Um. Yeah. Uh, Monty Um also died during Part 3's development, like half of here. Yeah, the creator of the, the... It was his brainchild, and they've been, like, carrying it on strong ever since. Yeah, yeah. They stuck to his vision very well, in my opinion. Anyways... Uh, yeah, so, uh, she acts out during, during, like, the, after the concert, some, cause some guy, some bourgeoisie is hitting on her, she's like, you know what, fuck the bourgeoisie, fuck all y'all, I'm out of here, uh, her dad attempts to ground her, and then, um, she sits in a room, practices summoning for long enough to where she gets, she catches up kind of with her sister, uh, she gets to where she can summon, like, the big family golem, who's like a knight, there's like a big knight in shining armor they can summon who's like 15 feet tall. Um, so yeah, she in, gets to at where the she, end of season three. She summoned its arm with a big sword. Yeah, at the end of season her. three, during during the big dramatic fight, she just barely manages to summon just its arm. Yeah. It's a big fucking sword and it cuts a giant robot in half. It's cool. Yeah. But as she can summon the whole thing if she focuses real hard. So using that and being helped by this guy, uh, she busts out. She gets onto like a, a dust ship. And smuggles herself. She's going to Mistral because she wants to go meet up with Ruby. Yeah, her girlfriend Ruby. Yeah, her girlfriend Ruby. Except they're not gay. Yeah. Look, if you want them to be gay, you've got you've got these two. That's true. That shit can. Um. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Um. Flashback. Uh, Yang is at home. Uh, there. Uh, she goes downstairs, and her dad is drinking with with these two guys. Oh. They're like at her house. Just like, man, work fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, they're telling they're telling old war stories. He's making fun of Crow. He's like, man, one time I convinced Crow to come to that that part of the dress code was he had to wear a skirt. It was hilarious. Wow, shout out to Crow. Yeah, shout out to Crow. He had to wear a skirt for like his whole first semester <laughs> because his older brother's a bastard. It's great. Um, hilarious. Yeah, so they're drinking, and then at one point. Uh, uh, yeah, so they, we see that they have, like, a really good relationship and all that, because they're, they're, like, super personal. It's cool. Uh, anyways, after that, they give her some advice, and they're like, yeah, Ruby's probably, we know Ruby's heading for, uh, basically the main thing they do is they deliver the information that Ruby's headed for Mistral. And then, you know, that's done for now. Um, and, yeah, you're also gone. She has been irrelevant, like, pretty much the whole She time. made some rocks float. Uh, she, like, shows up for fights, basically cleans up after all the students while they're not licensed. Yeah. Although, technically, they're still not licensed. So, technically, everything they do is illegal. Yeah, sick. Uh, yeah, it's pretty sick. Wow. Big age of crime! Yeah, um, and then the rest of season, uh, so yeah, the rest of season four, because this is kind of just, like, bubbling. This is kind of like, oh, you can tell some shit's gonna go down. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also this girl. Who was involved in it? She's also a furry. You gotta get a piece of tape for that. So this girl named Ilya Anatola. Uh, she's really gay for Blake. That's her character. Uh, she's also a member of the White Fang still. Blake has broke so many hearts in this fucking show. Yeah, yeah. Blake is a fucking so heart many, So many people have fucking yeah. died. Yeah. So she's like a, a field agent for the White Fang, but, but she's bad because she wears a mask. Mm. But she's just she's just like Blake. Why'd you leave? It's so cool. Yeah. She, she is implied to not have known about the whole thing with Adam. Yeah. That was supposedly a secret. Sometime. Um, yes. So she's like a chameleon 
Indian girl, she can turn, like, she, she can change the color of her skin and shit. Cool. And that's why she's a good, like, assassin. Mm -hmm. um, through some minor scuffles, whatever. The rest of season four is Team Ruby. They're heading to Mistral, or Team Ranger. They're heading for Mistral. Uh, halfway there, um, they get attacked by Tyrion, mm. um, who uh, is attempting to kidnap Ruby. Uh, he's basically, uh, he's doing pretty well against all four of them and kind of kicking their ass. Uh, he has these weird, like, he has, like, scorpion blades on his arms mm -hmm. that, like, are pincers and also guns. Mm. Sure. And then also he has his tail. So he's, like, fucking launching around and shit. He basically has, like, three legs. Um, yeah. So they're fighting him. Then that Crow comes really in. It's pretty dangerous. It sounds pretty dangerous. It is. Um, so Crow has to join them, and even with Crow, like, they barely, they barely fight him off. Um, at one point, yeah, so at one point, uh, Ruby is trying to help Crow, uh, because he gets stung. He gets stung uh -huh. by his finger, which fucks him up real bad and kind of takes him out. Um, but in doing that, he, over, uh, Tyrion overextends, and Ruby fucking cuts his tail off. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, this caused him to take enough damage where he's like, fuck this, I'm out. Um, yeah, so he pieces out. He's gone for a little bit. He's still, like, trailing them. Um, Crow is all fucked up, so they have to carry him. They have to carry him the rest of the way to Mistral because he's being poisoned. Oh, also, after he gets fucked up that night, they're like, hey, who the fuck's Tyrion? Who the fuck is Cinder? Like, what's all this shit, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, he just, like, un he unloads most of it on them. He tells them about the Maidens, tells them, like, magic's real, and he's like, yeah, Austin had this, Austin had this, like, inner circle that involved uh, Crow, Ironwood, and Good Witch, and someone, and some other people that were kind of all spread around. And we're all kind of fighting a shadow war with Salem, because she wants all the, because she wants all the Maidens, because if you have a Maiden, uh, at each, uh, at each of the academies, mm -hmm. um, there is a vault underneath it. In the vault, what is normally stored there is a relic, and if, uh, and all the relics do really bad shit, and only the maidens can unlock the vaults. Okay. That's how it works. So she wants to do bad shit. So she wants to unlock the vaults in order to do something. Yeah. Or presumably, so that way she can get all the artifacts and do this big power thing. Mm -hmm. They're all make weapons. Um, yeah. So then they carry him through the mountains. On the way through the mountains, um, they keep coming across like destroyed villages, sure. either raiders or like grim attacks. They find people that are like dying still oh. by the time they get there. Right. Yeah, they're like they get there and they're like, "Fuck, dude, we still gotta carry Crow." But like they found this other guy who's like, uh, and they're talking about how they're gonna trade for him. And then Nora just comes back in and is like, "He's dead." She's like, "Oh shit." It's still fucked over here. Um, they had, uh, once they, uh, and at one point they passed through their hometown, which was destroyed long ago, which is why they're homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, um, we find out what this guy's semblance is. It's that he can, he can calm nerves of him and anybody like immediately around him that he's touching. And uh, that makes it to where you're straight up, like if you have no negative emotions, Grim like cannot see you. Mm -hmm. They cannot perceive you. They don't see normally. He's a ghost. That's a neat power. So that's how he, like, fights. He's psyched for rage. He's not, like, yeah. He's psyched for rage. He's ghosting, straight up. Oh, my God. Uh, he's not, uh, he's not, like, a super good fighter on his own, but he, but the fact that, like, Grim can't usually see him in, like, big bursts, uh, lets him be, like, way better and more badass. Um, and, yeah, so their backstory is basically a big black horseman dude shows up, fucked up their whole city. Killed his parents. Uh, like human or, or a grim? No, a grim. It was, okay. It's like a grim that's like a centaur, but like it also has the horse on the front still. So it's like a, it's like got a dude coming out it's the back. It's a full tour. It's a full tour. Exact, whatever that is. Yeah, a whole a full tour. tour. A whole tour. Anyways, uh, they run across it again. They fight it. They kill it. Emotional arc complete for this guy. Yeah, awesome. He has like the big, that's like the big climactic fight of season four, which is a little weird. Interesting. Um, yeah, so anyways, then... After that, they get picked up, and uh, something something happens after that, actually. They get picked up by Mistral Patrol, because they're right outside the main city, and they patrol around for Grimm. So they get picked up by an airship, 
on the way there, these two are on their own ship, and these two are on their own ship. Uh, these two have like a, they they switch from being like friends to like they they hold hands and then they like cuddle, so imply that now now that they've dealt with their past shit, they're like romantically involved. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. That'd be good if that comes up later. Yeah. Um, I played season four, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, good. That's basically season four. Season cool. four, season yeah, four yeah, is like yeah, just yeah, transport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of shit going on. A lot of shit setting up. Yeah. Season five. We would just play the opening. Because now that we're mostly in place, there's like some little minor things. Mm -hmm. What? Did, did Yang's arc conclude? Uh, yeah, Yang, Yang at the end of Yang at the end of season four, like puts the arm on, gets on Bumblebee, and is like, "Okay, I'm going to Mistral." Uh, the one sure. thing, the one thing about that is, um, um, it's unclear because your dad asked her, uh, with like a, a cut away from before she answers. Uh, he asked her, "Are you going after your mom or are you going after Ruby?" Mm -hmm. We don't know which one she's going for oh, because they're both in Mistral. Mistral. Um, you know that because, oh, yeah. like, she's also, she doesn't stalk Ruby, but she, like, checks up once, and Crow sees her, mm. and they have, like, a conversation where, where Crow's like, why are you such a bitch? Why don't you, like, help your children? Bitch. And she's like, no, I'm a fucking warrior. They better, they better be tough enough to survive on their own. Uh, I'll save, she's like, she has a rule where she will save her children from dying once. Damn. Which and Yang is, already got it. Yang already she got really it, which is why she lost her arm. Yeah. Kind of surprised she doesn't even just be like, nah, fuck Ruby. Summer, that slut. Hmm. No. Uh, she likes Ruby because when she faced off a cinder, she fucking stood her ground. Oh yeah. She thinks that's pretty badass. Oh yeah. She's like, yeah, now she's like, now Ruby is my favorite daughter. She's not even mine. <laughs> uh Yang Yang is of course pissed off at this. Mm -hmm. Whenever they whenever yeah. So anyways, here's Later. season five. uh and her gang. So her mother is like the leader of a raider gang. Um, who, who just like yeah, okay. want, who like wanders around and just like rapes and pillages all they want. Mm -hmm. Cool. They don't. Uh, they Great. follow no. They follow no creed. They have no ruler except her because she's just the most badass. Mm -hmm. She founded it. Um, yeah. So, but it turns out she has. Uh, she has got a girl with her, uh, and this is the ooh, not the winter maiden. She's the spring maiden. Oh. So she has the spring maiden with her. There's an implied relationship here, subtly. Okay. Yeah. Wait, like a sex? She looks like a very young lesbian. Yes. Okay. Uh, That's always, uh, all right. Uh, there's a lot of implied. This, 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 let me get a subtly implied. Uh, <laughs> get a uh, <laughs> uh, no, she's like 20. She's just kind of small. Okay. Um, yeah, well, that's but, but, but to fucking Raven's like 35. Yeah, she's like way older. Seven. You know, it's cool, it's whatever. Yeah. It's only implied, so you can get away with it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and they're not exactly presented as good people. <laughs> like, uh, oh, one thing that happens is, so another thing that happened before Yang shows up is um, Weiss, when she snuck away on a, on a transport, transport, uh, it's passing by some, a ship that's being attacked by Grimm. She tells the pilot, like, yo, we gotta help them. They're gonna die. And the pilot's like, I don't want to fucking die. I'm avoiding it. And she basically forces him at gunpoint, like, no, we're going to help them. And in doing that, uh, she just fucks up and gets him killed, and they crash. Uh, they crash, and at which point they're captured by Raven's gang uh, on their way to Mistral. So Weiss is currently in custody by them. Uh, Yang shows up and then is like, Mom, why are you such a bitch? <laughs> Can you help me t find Ruby? Because, uh... Uh, she knows what her power is because Crow told her, or no, her dad told her. Mm -hmm. Um, her power is like, it's called blood, is like blood linkage or something. Uh, basically the blood vortex thing, uh, anyone she's blood related, anyone she's, uh, close enough to relationship wise, she can do like a ritual and link them to her sword and then she can cut a fucking wormhole and step through it and be where they're at. Hmm. That's how she keeps track of her family, even though she's like way off on her own all the time. Um, that's how she saved Yang, blah, blah, blah. So Yang shows up, talk to her, and she's like, oh, you want to finally you want to finally speak to me? And she's like, no, I don't like you. I don't want to talk to you. Just bring me to Ruby. I don't know where she is. Um, uh, she also lets, Yang, lets Weiss go because 
Yeah, he's like, I will straight up fuck your shit. <laughs> I mean, I can't beat you, and I can't beat her. That's my knock em up, bitch. But, uh, I will, uh, I will fucking kill all your dudes who are here. You be, most of your dudes are chumps. You may be the most, like, out of left field, like, morally repugnant character in this whole show, but you would still feel a little bit weird if you had to kill me. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, she has a soft spot for daughter, despite all that. Anyways, so... She tells her, okay, well, if you're going to go join Ruby, Ruby's all mixed up in this crow shenanigans. Uh, she tells her, she tells Yang and Weiss all about this Salem shit. And she's like, yeah, but don't trust the story that Crow will tell you or, like, that Austin told Crow. Because, like, some of that is bullshit. Oh. Like, he, like, he will lie to make it sound like they're, uh, like, what they're doing is obviously the right choice. Mm. Um, they will leave holes in the story. Don't trust them. Yang takes his advice to heart, kinda. Um, uh, to prove that, uh, that magic is real, uh, she turns into a raven, because she can transform into a bird, because mm-hmm. her name's Raven, and Crow can also do that, that's how he tracks people. So you can turn into a crow. Um, that's a power that Austin oh, gave them. Crows. Cool shit. Okay. Austin cool straight up, like, granted them a curse where they can turn into birds. Int- I was gonna ask if that was a semblance. No, that's no, not that's a semblance. A, that's a magic power. That's a magic that power that Oz just gave them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ravens and crows are cool as shit. Yeah. yeah. At one point, at one point, whenever Yang shows up and they and they explains all this to Ruby, they have a big heartfelt reunion. They cry. It's very nice. They say, "I love you." It's very nice. Uh, 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 they explain all this, and then Nori, go, Nori goes, Crow? Raven? They're both birds! <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, she yeah. gets a point. Yeah, she gets a point. That's Nora? That's one for Nora. Yeah, because that's her amethyst. Oh, that's why Lion's pink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, who's up next? That, that one's green. I don't know, that's, that's Crow. Oh. Okay. That's later. Um, where did I put the little twin boy? There he is. So yeah. this guy also shows up okay. uh, to Mr. Roll around the same time. Um, uh, he's been hearing a, a voice in his head of, of Oz. Oh. He doesn't know why, but it's convinced him to, like, abandon his home and go to Mr. Because it's just been, like, hammering away on him for, like, months. <laughs> and it, like, tells him, it tells him to remember shit that he's like, I've never been there. Why do I know that? Um, uh, so uh, so he goes to Mistral and uh, is guided to Crow by this voice of Ozpin, and uh, he says to tell him the pa- uh, to tell him the key phrase, which is "Give me my staff back." Uh, and then Crow gives him Ozpin's staff. That's why he has it in the intro. Cool. Give me my staff. Um, basically, this guy's deal is that Ozpin has like soul reincarnated into this living boy, okay, and is like currently taking over his mind. Oh. So eventually his personality will just disappear, oh. and he'll just become Ozpin. And he's pretty, he's, he's like fucked up about this. Oh, oh yeah, did yeah, they allude that it's like kind of similar to the Maidens? Yes. Hmm. It is notably similar to the is Maidens. Is it established why this can happen? Yes. How so? Season 6. Baby. Okay, yeah, well no, I meant, I meant at this point. Tell at this later. point? Tell uh, us later. Uh, yeah, you will, you will find out later. He doesn't know why this is. Crow doesn't know why this is, but he knows that Austin like, you know, has Austin died has many powers, times. It's, yeah. uh, Crow thinks that Austin's like a couple hundred years old. Okay. That's why he's like so badass, Brad. and he can like, and he can do magic. Like he, he thinks he's just researched it or something. Sure. Um. Uh, anyways, so at the, so meanwhile, uh, Blake's storyline kind of haven't covered her for season five. Season five, um, there was a lot of tension boiling season four, season five, um. Uh, the white fang kind of pops off. Uh, this dude shows up. He shows up in Menagerie, yeah. along back. along with um, Adam, Hazel, Adam, Adam Taurus, Adam Taurus, <laughs> and Hazel. What's his last name? Like Reinhardt. Reinhardt. Okay. So him and Hazel, they show up to rein in the white fang. Um, but Adam like has stages a coup like right then, mm-hmm. and just straight up personally murks her. Cool. And says everyone who everyone here will uh, every everyone here who's not him and Hazel has their tongues cut out so they can't tell them what happened so they can't tell what happened Whoa. and she will die she will die as a martyr so they prop her up as a martyr and they say she was killed by humans holy fuck <laughs> yeah that's pretty fucking hardcore 
Uh, yeah, so uh, she, she, she dies. She dies. You can put an F on her. She deserves it. Yeah, She's cool enough. I got it. She's totally rad. Um, yeah, so she dies. Adam, he becomes, he places himself in lead of the White Fang yeah. uh, and says, like, okay, next thing we're going to do, because he knows that Blake's here, he knows that all this is here. He's like, okay, well, we're going to take over the whole government. So, sure. yeah. so he's like, everybody, you're going to go assassinate these two, and you're going to capture Blake, because I want her. Right. Um, so he sends that. So he sends Ilya, who knows Blake. What are you doing? He sends her. What are you doing? Oh. Tape. Anyway. <laughs> um, he sends Ilya to personally lure out Blake. He's, uh, he tell, so Ilya tells her, like, hey, come alone. We need to talk. She comes, she comes, uh, she comes alone uh, to talk to her friend and is like, hey, you should not be the white fang anymore. She's like, no. Look, I'm sorry. And then she gets jumped, grabbed. She's like, sorry, but they're going to have to, or we're going to execute your entire family. Oh. Uh, she's like real broken up about this. Yeah. Uh, then Sun, uh, who came along, obviously, uh, saves her, beats up some guys. She yeah. escapes because she can turn invisible like it will. Cool. Uh, they go back. There's a big, long fight where, um, where, um, they get back in time, save, save the, save the dad. Uh, the mom just, like, is a badass, apparently, and just, like, like, all her guards get shot, and she takes their guns and just, like, starts gadding guys, like, one after another. Let's go! Yeah, she's pretty badass. A lolly wife? Yeah, a lolly yeah. wife. I'm good. Oh, okay. Oh. She died. Adam Mark. Tough shit. Dang. People die. That's a bitch. That means people die when they're killed. And then you die. <laughs> Those people not die when they were killed? Yeah. I'm still not sure about that. Anyways, um, I'm fucked so up. the outcome I'm fucked up. of a long, big long fight throughout their entire mansion is, um, uh, uh, these two, these two, they make it out, they're fine. Most of their guards are dead. Uh, this dude, who's the younger brother, uh, he gets crushed to death under burning debris. Oh. So he gets fucking killed right in front of his brother. Shit. His brother goes sicko mode. Uh, like, What's his semblance? Uh, this guy, he can, I think he can, like... Such a lot of dick. What is it? He can, like, throw objects and burn them. What does that say? Hour 12, hour 10? Hour 14. Remaining, or... Remaining. Oh, remaining. Oh, cool. Which is to say, fuck that guy who cares. Fuck that guy who cares. Uh, this dude, he gets arrested. What's a semblance? It's a semblance. He can like throw like fire daggers or something. Okay. Um, he, gets, he gets arrested. Is he going to be important? No. He, he's yeah, arrested. Get him the fuck out. He's basically taken out for the show. What about what about the, the the chameleon girl who wants to fuck Blake? The chameleon girl. Uh, Blake vouches for her and basically says like, you don't need to be arrested. You're cool. Because she has a she has a change of heart in the middle of the fight and like helps him beat the. Yeah, we'll promote her to like on this camera. You're yeah, like two years ago. She gets promoted to a PA. Yeah, it's good for her. Yeah. Three years old. Thank you. Uh, even though Blake's, you know, she's taken. That's true. Um. So yeah, all that happens. Wait, no. That's the outcome. Uh, in response to this white fang shenanigans, uh, this dude he has a big speech where he goes, "Okay, hey, uh, we've learned." Uh, from the white fang we captured, uh, that Mistral is gonna get all fucked up. Uh, he doesn't know about all the weight maidens and shit. Mm. No one here knows that, but he does know that another city is going to fall if they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. So they have a big militia. They get a big militia of Faunus together, who are gonna go like stomp out the white fang. They're gonna go fuck up Mistral. Um, and then a couple weeks pass, uh, and oh, one more thing happens in that inner in that interim. So, um, after Yang leaves, uh, uh, Raven's place with White, with Weiss and all that, they have a little training arc over there, and while that's happening, villains are doing some fuckery maneuvering. So, uh, Watts and Cinder and her crew, they go, they meet up with Raven, uh, and they say like, hey, we know you have a maiden. Okay. We also know you're pretty badass, but hey, we also have we also have our own maiden. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just tell you, hey, we have control over like the whole over like the whole campus because this guy is in our back pocket. 
So we're just going to walk in there, you're going to open the door, and then we're going to take the thing, and then you can go. Fair? And then she, she decided, like, you know what? I got beef. Uh, if you help me with it, uh, we can work out the oh, Damn, she's evil now. Yeah, so her beef... Now? Her beef is... With, <laughs> yeah, well, she was, like, shitty, but now she's eve. Now she's working with the devil. Yeah, uh, well, she... She's like, okay, well, I want to kill Crow. Okay. Fuck ah. So if you, have, if you lure, lure in Crow and let me personally kill, let me kill him along with you, Fucking then, uh, scary, then I'll go with, then I'll let her come along. Yeah, she's not the most evil. Yeah. Um, and Cinder, who knows, uh, who knows that Crow and Ruby are together? Well, she wants to kill fucking Ruby. Ruby. So, uh, so she agrees to this plan against the judgment of literally everyone else. Where they're like, <laughs> where they're like, why are you inviting all of our worst enemies to the fight? It seems like a terrible plan. Uh, but Cinder is the maiden, so she calls the shots in the field because they can't they can't argue with her. No, and they also can't beat her. Because at any time she's like, yeah, uh, Cinder isn't here. I can kill you and just say they did it. <laughs> yeah. Can Salem leave hell? Yes, she can leave. Through the jellyfish okay. monster bombs. Um, she she can like project through that. That doesn't let her teleport or anything. Okay. But uh, yeah, she gets reports through those. Those are kind of rare. There's like a few of those. Okay. She has to like make them sure. through magic shenanigans. Sure. Um. Anyway, so yeah, a big fuck off fight is gonna happen in Mistral. Same thing like what happened at Deacon, but like shorter. Thank God. <laughs> so anyways, uh, everyone basically from like. Here, all around here, shows up to Mistral. Um, all yeah. points converge on Mistral. All, all points converge. That's where they all come together for a big fight in the in the thing. Is uh, that the first time they reunite since season yes, three? That's the first time they all reunite because wow. Blake has been gone until she shows up then right. with the whole militia. Cool. Uh, so the White Fang are planning to blow up the place. So there's no evidence. Um, basically, the White Fang fight all the Faunus uh, and. Alien disabled the bombs because she's uh, like sneak around. Faunus on Faunus violence. There's a you lot of Faunus on Faunus violence out there. You hate it. Uh, most of the white fang give up immediately, but Adam's there. He's like, "Fuck all y'all." Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he like gets ready to like kill a bunch of his own, mm -hmm. kill a bunch of his own kind Thank for like being cowards <laughs> and surrendering immediately when like a huge militia shows up. Mm -hmm. uh, but then he totally pussies out. <laughs> basically, he's like. Uh, he runs off, and Sun's like, we gotta go after him. And she's like, no, if we go after him, he's just gonna pick us off in the woods one by one. He's a coward. Don't do that. Hmm. Let him let him rot. Because after this, he'll be soiled, and the White Fang will never look up to him again. Fuck yeah. Um, Damn. Yeah, so he fucks off. Uh, inside the building, you've got Raven, Girl, whose name is... What's her name? Uh, Vernal, yeah. Oh, like, yeah, okay. Vernal. Vernal. Yeah, like spring. Vernal equinox. Yeah. Um, and then you've got Cinder's crew is also there, and also Hazel is there. He's a big fighter man. Yeah. Uh, his semblance is that he doesn't feel pain. How no. he, how he, Oh, yeah, like that James Bond villain with the bullet in his brain. Yeah, but how this manifests is that um, he uses dust in like the most painful way possible. He just takes the pure rot and stabs it into himself and becomes infused with it so he gains like whatever powers if he just shoves it in oh my god uh if he goes too hard it will just straight up kill him well, yeah he still has a physical body that can take damage yeah yeah and afterwards it leaves him real fucked up yeah. and basically hung over we see more we see something like that happen later okay. um but yeah he has uh he goes hulk mode uh he's fighting um oscar who's there because Oscar is kind of Austin, they can like switch who's in front of like their brain. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. That's good representation. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, Weiss, Weiss, Yang, and Ruby are all there. They're all fighting. Uh, Cinder's there. Uh, John gets really pissed off when he sees Cinder because he knows that she fucking killed our guy. Yeah, she fucking our killed. Guy. So he steps up. He's like, "Yo, I'm gonna fucking yeah. duel you myself." Our fucking guy. Completely chump. Like Jesus. Well, yeah, obviously, but he's still our guy. Yeah, yeah, he's still our guy. You know, he's cool. Um, Fuck you, Gar. She literally like is standing on his chest, like in like thirty seconds flat, yeah. and is like, "Bitch, you can't do anything. Watch." And then she makes a spear. 
and then she fucking yeets the spear at other people while they're fighting, and she just fucking runs through Weiss, like, through her spine, what? and Weiss oh. fucking goes down, and it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, she just chomps Weiss. Uh, she's down. Uh, Nora, Ren, they're fighting Hazel. Um, Oscar's fighting... This dude, who's like a bitch, because he can barely fight a child. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, sure, he's possessed by like a total badass, yeah, but he's like still a child. Thing. He's still kind Mild, of weak. Mildly possessed, like half possessed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's all happening. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Crow is fighting Tyrion. Tyrion. No, he's fighting both of them. He's fighting both of Cinder's chumps. Okay. Cinder's, uh, Cinder's Black mates. and Mercury. Yeah, Mercury and Emerald. Emerald. Um, so he's he's having kind of a hard time with it because there's two of them and one of them can fuck with your head. Yeah. Did we make any? How many like politically uh, incorrect humors have we made so far? I don't think that's gonna really appeal to like the Rooster Teeth Ruby. <laughs> I kind of like four big ones. Who are the Rooster Teeth Ruby? Did I say kike at any point in this? No. No, you didn't. No. Put a counter on screen. Uh, All right. Who are the demographics? Anyways, um, hey, we made some pedophilia like, jokes. Like my like girl academia and shit for the most part. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so Raven goes down with uh, Cinder into the vault with a uh, girl with the uh, Vernal. Vernal. Um, Vernal. They go down. It's like a big walkway up to a big tree. It's like the big fall tree or something. Or not the fall tree. The spring tree. Spring. Yeah. yeah. It's like a and, middle eight year cell. And they're like, okay. Uh, she's like, okay. She she walks up to start doing it, start opening it. And then Raven goes, uh, and then right when she does that, Cinder fucking just like immediately like unveils her arm, which has been missing. Uh, apparently, she has a. Yeah, see how she has it like cloaked? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, underneath her arm, she has like a grim arm Whoa. that has been given to her by oh, Salem. Sick. So she has like a weird claw hand. Uh, that used to be disguised by Neo, but Neo's gone now. Mm. Um, That's why she can, like, suck juice out. Right. She had juice. it the whole time. Uh, yes, but it was, like, disguised before. Yeah. She was before um, so anyway, she gra- uh, she goes and, uh, she kills Renal and, like, sucks her juice out. Yeah. And then there's a big dramatic, like, oh shit, well, she's gonna be fucking two mains at once, what's gonna happen? And then she's like, wait, nothing's happening, what the fuck? And then uh, Raven just goes like, you fucking bitch, I knew you'd do that. Uh, it turns out that Raven was actually the uh, was actually the maiden the whole time. <gasps> uh, this, she had this girl take a fake name. Wow! Because normally the maidens are named after the season. Right. So uh, she goes fucking full beast mode. Oh and, my like, god. Has a full on, like, two battle-hardened fucking maidens fighting each other. It goes full Dragon Ball Z for like 10 minutes. Uh, I read that on the wiki and I was still surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's totally sick. That's sick. That's, that's like the coolest fight in the entire season right awesome. there. Um, they're like flying around, smashing the ceiling. Uh, how it ends is uh, Cinder looks like she's won. She's standing over Raven. She's like, yeah, you should have. Uh, she's like draining her a little bit. And she's like, yeah, you should have fucking, uh, you gotta, you gotta learn who to trust. And then, uh, and then she says, you gotta learn who to believe in. And then this girl, who's like barely hanging on, like pulls a gun and just shoots Cinder in the back. Oh my god. Uh, while she's lying on the ground dying. That's great. Uh, and then she turned, oh yeah. So then she uses her, her gun thing, revolver holster to fucking shoot her and turn her into ice. And then kicks her off the side. And she like falls into this infinite pit. Uh, at that point, uh, she opens the vault herself, and uh, then we cut back up to this fight, which is still going on. Mm. Uh, Weiss, she's on the ground, she's fucking dying. Yeah. He has like obsidian spear in her chest. Mm. Um, while on the ground, uh, uh, Nora and Ren are like trying to cover her. Uh, John comes over. And it's like, oh, fuck, dude. We all fucked up. We shouldn't be here right now. I fucking failed. I fucking failed Pira. Um, so then uh, he gets real emotional. And then um, he, like, spikes his his aura, his key, <gasps> if you will. Uh, and in doing so, he, like, um, figures out what his semblance is. 
So he can. So he has like a shitload of aura. That's something that's established in like season one. Mm-hmm. There's like a fuck ton of shield. That's why he's a tank. Mm-hmm. Uh, he can like transfer it to people Yo. and like boost other people. He's aura. a healer. Yeah. So he's a healer. So he just. Uh, so he like heals up Yang over the course of like twice, or hangs up twice, heals up twice after the course of like half an episode, and basically stabilizes her so she doesn't die. Um, awesome. Our man. boy. Yeah, our, our boy. Um, after that, fuck um, you, Ron Stop. After seeing that, Yang is like, I'm going after my fucking mom. I'm gonna deal with this shit. Yeah. So she goes down. Does she like or not like her mom right now? Uh, she hates her. No, mom. no, no. She hates okay. her. Mom. Yeah, every, pretty much no one likes her mom. <laughs> everybody hates Ray. Everybody, everybody hates everybody. her. Oh, uh, yeah, she's, she's dead. It's like, like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. 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 Lolly wife, like, lolly wife, body double. That's so Raven. <laughs> That's yeah. so Raven so right now, man. Um, So, Yang goes down there. Uh, she has to get past Mercury as like a, light, as like a minor detail. To get down there. Oh, because then they fought earlier. Then they fought. They they have a little they have a little fight where uh, it basically ends with um, he tries to like pin her by her arm and then she just like launches off her arm and like runs away. Whoa. Oh, she pops the arm off. She pops the arm off. Like yeah. in a row. Yeah. Yeah, because she like doesn't because she doesn't need it. Like yeah. who? Did that happen? Uh, and then she goes down to. Oh. Yeah. No, I'm thinking with that. I'm thinking of uh, fucking No More Heroes too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Uh, so she pops her arm off and then, like, descends into the vault and confronts her mom, who's like the last one there. Yeah. Because uh, Lolly Wife is dead on the ground, mm-hmm. and fucking Cinder is yeeted into a pit. Into a pit, Sparta style. Um. Yeah. So she has a confrontation with her mom. Her mom basically goes, uh, "Oh yeah." She convinces her mom by saying, "Like, okay, if uh, if Salem was this after you when she thought you just had a maiden." If you claim a relic, she will be full force, like, trying to, like, crush you out and kill everyone you know. Mm-hmm. You need to spread that out, give it to, give it to Crow, give it to me, and, um, we'll take care of it. We'll take it somewhere safe. Because now the vault's open. You can't really close it. Mm. Okay, so what the vault... What is it? What is the vault? The, yeah, yeah, so what got the vault. The relic. Oh, okay, the relic. Uh, the relic is, uh, we see it now. It's a big lamp that can, like, shrink and grow in size... And it's called the Relic of Knowledge. Uh, uh, it's the, get the, the knowledge one. that the... That's we, the book one. Yeah, the, it's the book one. Yeah. So how? Uh, so we don't know how it works yet. Crow doesn't know how it works. Okay. Um, they're pretty sure Austin knows how it works, but he's only there you sometimes. Know, there's, there's headmate fuckery. There's headmate fuckery going on. Uh, anyways, Yang takes it. Um, the fight mostly gets cleaned up. Um, these, uh, she gets fucked up real bad. And mm-hmm. launched to a pit. These two get away with Hazel, and the rest of them mostly uh, bug out after the White Fang gets like crushed. Yes. How did uh, Raven's plan to kill Crow go? Uh, that was a that was a double cross to Cinder. That was a lie. Oh. She told Cinder. She didn't actually want to kill her brother. She Swag. just like acted like it. Swat. Yeah, she wasn't totally evil. Um, that's about where this season ends off. Um, the whole gang's back together. They have a big moment. Yay! Yay! Yeah. We are family. Um, yeah. I got all my sisters and, and on me. The rest, the rest of the characters that are not relevant will leave next season. Or, like, it started next season. So, that's about it for season five, I think. What about the bitch guy who couldn't fight a child? Oh, yeah, this guy. He gets arrested. Uh, he, you know uh, he is executed during the fight by I think <laughs> it's not Cinder. Um, I think who it is. I think it's Raven. No, Toro kills him. Oh damn! Yeah, he kills him because oh, he yeah. tries to he tries to run away and Adam sees him and like knows that he, he's like a bitch. Yeah. And he's like he's gonna fuck s- you. he's gonna squeal. He straight kills him. Okay, get him the fuck out of here. Uh, yeah, so he dies. Um. The official story for his death is that he died nobly because they don't want to spread, they don't want to spread worry that there's like traitors in their midst. Sure. Did Cinder, didn't Cinder die? She fell in a pit. She fell in a pit. She was frozen into ice. She was frozen into ice and fell into a pit. Assuming oh there's God. a there's it's not actually a bottomless pit. Is there a Darth Maul in here? Don't worry about it. Yeah, she's pretty Darth Maul, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. A little bit. Um, okay, that's the end of season five. Cool. Season four and five. Oh, kind of Snappy, I like it. Yeah. Um, 
It's gonna get a little dense. Okay, yep, this is where it starts getting into the shit, I where, think. Where the fuck is it? Okay, there it is. Okay. Season six. What? This crow. Don't want that crow. Uh, yeah, let's start season six. Okay. He gets a new thing. Gotcha. He gets a new coat. Uh, start of season six. Basically, what they have to do is, um... Do we not play the... We're gonna, we're gonna play it. We're gonna play it in a second. I'm just gonna say, like, the setup is, uh, they're gonna head... Basically, the crew will get together, and this will be, like, our main crew for basically the rest of the show. Mm -hmm. And then everyone else is gonna split off and do their own thing if they don't matter. And their goal is to get the relic that they currently have to Atlas, because it's, like, the most well-defended place. Um, uh, these two go home. Uh, and so does so does this girl. Mm -hmm. They all three go home. Good job. The menagerie. And these guys won't be these guys won't be relevant for a while, but we're yeah. going to Atlas. So Yeah, we'll go there. This family will come back up. Yeah. Um and at the start of season six, son is like, I'm gonna peace out. I gotta go back to my boys. Because he's literally just like yeeted from his team mm -hmm. and he's their leader. And they're like, uh, where are you at? The start of season six, Mercury or Neptune shows up for like five seconds, mm. and uh, he's like, "Dude, why are you leaving Blake behind? I thought you were chasing that tail, buddy, bro." Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Nah, man, we're just we're just cool. We're just cool, okay? Don't be so weird about she it." She has another blonde bitch she's after. So, uh, oh yeah, another thing that Neptune does is he hits on Chameleon Girl, mm. and um, <laughs> and Blake just like turns the sun and goes, "He's barking up the wrong tree, man." And he's like, "He'll figure it out." Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Implied words. homosexuality. Not implied. She straight up says like she loved her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so then Sun goes off with his boys. They go off to Vacuo, which is the desert place. That won't be relevant until past where the show is currently at. Okay. <laughs> and in that book you read. And then the book I read. Yeah, they're also in that. With the with the cool Gucci model. Yeah. That book's dumb. Don't read it. Okay. <laughs> It's just like, uh, it's like, well, I actually learned what that, I had to learn what that, like, boring, shitty, no, nothing character in their crew, like, what his power is. Right. That's how I know he can telepathically talk. Whatever, he doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah, this is kind of the state of things right now. So, start of season, season six opening. Press so, touch squasher. You know, I haven't talked much about the production of the show. Basically, like... Season one looks bad. Season two looks like all right for a weather show. Season three is like, okay, this looks like passable. Yeah. Four and five, they look a little bit better. Um, the quality of the show kind of dips because it's like, oh, this is kind of boring, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, season six, we fucking pop off, okay? Season six is like, damn, now we're like a real TV show and this is like fucking good. Hell yeah. This is like better than like, this is like a fucking sick show. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have like 2D effect animation now and shit explodes. Cool. And like whenever stuff was like not not easily animatable in 3D to animate it in 2D and it actually looked great. Cool. Uh, so I was right to like drop the show a couple episodes into volume four because it's like volume four and five are like a little boring. Four is like all right. It's kind of weird structurally because the final fight is with Ren's beef and like Ren is like barely a character up to that point. Yeah. He just becomes a character and is like the main one for like half the season. Okay. A little weird. Uh, and then season five is just like yeah, season five is like boring. It's like not a lot happens. Yeah. There's it's a lot of ends. there's a lot of training and talking about like where everyone's at emotionally, mm -hmm. like some abandonment issues and all that. Kind of sounds like that. a later Game of Thrones season. Yeah, it's like season it's like season five Game of Thrones. That's basically what it is. If you yeah. wanted to equate it. Anyway, season six, we're on a fucking recovery arc, like we shoot back up to awesome. Oh yeah. Um so they're all heading up north, uh, along the continent. Uh, and then they will get to a port city, and then they will cross to Atlas. Uh, Atlas currently has closed borders, but they're going to figure that out when they get there. So the first thing that happens is um, they will board a train, all those characters fuck off, and we're stuck with, this is our main crew, kind of all these guys. Mm -hmm. This L shape. Yeah. This Tetris shape. Um, this guy's not around. This guy's not around anymore. Dad. Yeah. Goodbye. We'll put him with the dog, because that's where he is. Yeah. That's true. He's hanging out with the dog. Back at home. Yeah. He occasionally reacts to some some shit. That's basically it. He just cuts away and you learn something and they go, oh. he goes, oh shit, my daughter is so cool. Mm. He fucking loves Yang. He's all over that. He's like, damn. What about Ruby? Oh well, yeah, he loves Ruby too. But like, you know, they, they like share a color scheme. And also like, Ruby doesn't have a lot of screen time with him. Ruby has a lot more time with Crow. Yeah, okay. That's kind of her main thing. Yeah. She looks up the Crow a lot more. 
Yeah. Um, so first thing that happens, they're on the train. Uh, on, while on the train, train gets attacked by Grimm. Uh, Ozpin unveils like, you know, I didn't mention this, but like, by the way, the artifact it attracts Grimm. So like, we're gonna have to deal with Grimm on the way, bro. Uh, <laughs> and Yang's like, what the fuck, dude? Like, there's people on this train, and he's like, well, the people are not as important as like our mission. Our mission is like vitally important, bro. Uh, Yang and all of Team Ruby immediately thinks that's horseshit. What the fuck, guy? Mm-hmm. So um. They do a fight where they lure, they take the artifact to the very back of the train. You have a question in a second? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, this is relevant to this event. How At this point in the series, how much of a threat are Grimm? Because they've been fighting them for a while. They have been fighting them for a while. Um, Grimm are mostly a threat to like destroying property and not so much our characters. And normies. Yeah, normies. They want, they, they want to save normies from them. And group. most normies just have like guns. Okay. So imagine if a bear's coming at you and you only have an assault rifle. Like, you're pretty good if there's one, but normally there's, like, a horde. Okay, so that's, yeah. That's Even with part. an assault rifle, you couldn't take on, like, 30 bears. No. Yeah, no. Any any style points they accrue fighting, uh, the they accrue are incidental. Yeah, yeah. They can't just beast on any grim. Yeah. Uh, they're, like, bigger grim that normally they have to team up to take down. Um, mm. That are not, like, especially notable. The thing that attacks the the train they're on is like a bunch of manticores well uh i guess going back a little bit how much of a what what is the progression of threat over time to our main characters like to team ruby do they start out like struggling to kill one grim and by the end they're just marking them out like they're not really they kind of start off like being able to the finale of season one is eight of these kids destroying this giant bird and this giant scorpion yeah that's when they're all like students and like obviously you know like their lives are at risk but they're pretty lighthearted about it yeah Mm -hmm. they're not super afraid of grim they're only afraid of grim as like a threat to the people because they can't necessarily defend them that's what they're mostly concerned about that's consistent through like the whole show Mm -hmm. basically um so yeah they yank the torch it. They pull the they pull the groom to the back of the train, and then they have they leave, um, John, Nora, and Ren at the front of the train, and they get all the people in like one car, and then John uses his aura boost to boost his semblance so he can he can conceal a whole car of people. Our fucking guy. Yeah, oh, so he can just boost your semblance oh, by, yeah. by touching you. Awesome. To, to, to like pretty ridiculous extents. Um, it's a magical chaff grenade. So they get, um, so they get separated because they go to the back of the train, and then they separate the train so that they can kill the Grim, and they're gonna have to hoof it the rest of the way. Um, during that, the train, uh, oh yeah, whenever they disconnect the train, uh, Blake, she see, uh, she like cuts it, and like as the train pulls away, she sees, uh, she sees fucking. This guy on the train, like, pulling away from them. Oh, fuck. And she's like, oh, shit, he's fucking coming. <laughs> he's in the wings somewhere. Um, so then uh, they, fight, they fight it, a bunch of manticore. The train derails, but uh, Weiss sticks them all to the top of the train, so they're fine. Sure. They don't get thrown off. Um, the next character. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Go get some new Oh, Carl's like it's a new coat at the train station. That's just like a random redesign thing. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, you have a coat. He's, he's kind of. He yeah, he's coat sort of like the only main character who like didn't change how he looks. Yeah, he just start. He just starts off with that. Um. So okay. So they derail the train, and um, they collect themselves, and then out of the train steps like old lady who like neglected to follow any of the orders. <laughs> she's just there, and she's like, "What's up? How's it going? My well, name is Maria I'm Calavera." <laughs> Intelligence got a skull. Mm. Anyways, yeah. She's important, mildly. She has like weird robot eyes. Like she has goggles, as you saw in the opening. They click, click, uh, and does electronic. She has, um, her, she's currently on her way to Atlas to have her eyes fixed, because her eyes are kind of fucked up. Um, so anyways, they crash. They have like a big spat with Oz, uh, where they're like, okay, you're gonna level with us, because like, You've been hiding shit this whole time. You've been keeping the secret from like literally the whole world. Why uh, you gonna tell us everything? So um, they all like confront him. Crow is like standing by him though, cause he's like, no kid, no, this is fucking serious. We do not want to fuck with this. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But um, Oscar, who's like the other half of his brain, of Austin's brain, he is kind of fighting with him internally. And uh, he tell, uh, and what he does is he just tells Ruby how to use the artifact. Whoa. Just like, okay, all you have to do to, all you have to, do to summon her is to say her name. And her name is Jin. Lady. Okay. It's a lamp. It's a lamp. So then, so then she says Jin, and then time stops. Like all the snow that's falling around them stops in the air. Uh, uh, and Austin's like, oh fuck, what have you done? Why'd you do that? Uh, so she shows up, she says, anyone got a question? And then uh, Ruby, like they have a standoff a little bit with Ruby and Austin, who's like regained control a little bit. She's like, what is Austin not telling us? And right when she says that, he like jumps towards her. And then right before he makes contact, like the whole world blanks out and turns white. Uh, and then all the other characters disappear. Uh, but we're like cutting between them. So they're all in like their own separate like reality bubble. Uh -huh. Seeing the same thing, but they can't see each other. Um, so then this is when you get a fucking whole episode lore dump. Uh, by Jin of like, okay, here's what Salem is, here's what Ozpin is, here's what the Maidens are, we're gonna explain all of it. So, next two characters. <laughs> the next two characters? Yeah. Okay. You okay. know, I just I just remembered something from deep in my brain of like the young Ozpin thing. He's not possessing a baby, but he I, remember, I remember reading about the Buffy the Vampire Slayer sequel comics. What? Like the, 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 <laughs> Buffy the show continued as comics. Like the first run of the comics was called season eight. Yeah. And uh, like at some point in the story, Giles, like the old cool British mentor guy, like he becomes a child. And it's like kind of weird. All right. That makes sense. It's very much. It, this is in tone with Buffy, basically. Yeah. But it's also fancy <laughs> anime shit, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Not that Buffy isn't. Buffy kind of is. Uh, so, anyways, so. She starts from like literally like okay, fucking thousands of years ago, uh, shit was way different. So anyways, there was this girl in a tower. She was a princess of a of a of a king who was cool. Rapunzel. Yeah. So she's she's trapped in a big tower that's guarded by like magic golems and shit. Uh, people wanna uh, there's a bunch of people they wanna go there save her. Fuck her. Uh, anyways, this dude who's like totally pure of heart and like a badass wizard, uh, he shows up and is like, no, I just want you to be my partner. I just want to go on adventures. This dude's name is Ozma. This bitch, her name's Salem. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, she's been around a fucking minute. Uh-huh. Oh, fuck. So anyways, they're going around, they're doing adventures, all that. Um, uh, at some point, like about, some point in the next like decade-ish, uh, this dude, he catches a disease, even though he's like the most badass man in the world, they don't have medicine or anything, they just have magic. This is back in the time when they have magic. So they're just wizards, and it's like straight up fantasy. Uh, and, uh, Grimm are thing, but, like, way less. There's, like, basically no Grimm anywhere. They're only in, like, the hell place. Um, uh, as opposed to now, where they're, like, literally everywhere, and, like, they crawl out of the ground. It's like, they're straight bad. demons, and they live in hell, and that's it. Yeah, they live in, like, a hell, which is, like, a physical place. Yeah, like, the hell world, the hell zone. It's like a continent. Uh, anyways, uh, he gets sick, uh, and dies of, like, a plague. Um, so, uh, she gets really dejected about this and is like, he's a hero, he deserves to live, he shouldn't die like this. So, she goes, he knows, so she goes to an all- Yeah, what's up? I, this is, starts becoming things that I know again. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, she goes to, to this guy, uh, who is like literal god. The great act. God? Yeah, yeah, god, she goes to his altar, which is like a mountain with like a big fucking, uh, a big like- perfect lake that you can walk on uh and he just uh he stays there in like a dragon form he's like a chinese dragon chinese super huge dragon. he's basically an all-powerful god of light that's what he is he's the god of light um so he uh she asks him like hey can you give him back he's like a good person uh he didn't he did nothing wrong exactly uh and he thinks well no me and my brother, the god of darkness, are in equilibrium with each other. I don't fuck with it. If I fuck with it, then, you know, uh, then that'll the upset the balance. You need to just yeah. respect it. Mm -hmm. Life happens. Straight up. Um, yeah. So then afterwards... Take the L. Yeah, take the L. Take the L. So basically, she's like, that's horseshit. 
storms off, uh, <laughs> goes off to this guy, goes to goes to God of Darkness man. He's like a Western dragon. Uh, when he appears, he's like he's like uh, he appears and like grows from like a fetus to a human in like a couple seconds when he grows out of his fountain, which is like a big grim fountain because he lives in hell. I'm glad you acknowledge that fetuses are not humans. Go on. Anyways, so he grows <laughs> he grows like that, and then he like has all his bones broken and he unfolds into a person oh. uh they have a thing where their stances are opposite so he's, he's uh, so he sits with his hands behind his back because he's conniving he sits with his hands like this to be honest um so she tells she tells him like hey um uh this guy uh this guy died he was a total badass uh you should um uh, you should bring him back because he's totally cool and um i know and you know i know you want to fuck shit up sometimes or whatever she just appeals to his like bestial instincts um so he's like well you know what since he since he came to me and no one ever comes here because it's literally in hell uh he's like you know what i'll bring him back from the dead so he just snaps his fingers and he just appears again and he goes where the fuck am i oh god and he just like has a panic attack and is like kind of mind broken, and then whenever he uh, whenever he does that, uh, his brother like detects it and just instantly teleports there and is like, "What the fuck are you doing? You can't bring people back from the dead. He's dead." And then he looks at her and he's like, "Oh, it's you." And then he gets pissed off because she told him that she's like a devout follower of him and like would never go to his brother. Uh-huh. So then he's like, "Oh." Fuck you then. Snaps, he's dead. Oh. <laughs> uh, like, he only lives for like 30 seconds and he doesn't even get to figure out what's going on. He just dies again. Shit. Uh, he just immediately evaporated. Uh, she's like, what the fuck? This is the most horseshit thing that's ever happened to me in my life. Um, so then they go, okay, well, you know what? You need to learn the value of death. So you know what we're going to do? You're immortal now. Deal with it. You will never get over this loss of your love. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so wow. they so they do this so that way she will learn the value of dying and all that. And she's like, "No, fuck that. Fuck them. We're gonna kill them. We're gonna kill God. Yeah. Man. So, so her plan is that God she's gonna kill people. the gods and take their power so that way she can bring him back from the dead. Uh, she goes to all. She like travels the entire world over the course of like a hundred years." Mm-hmm goes to every like leader and king and like fucking badass warrior on the planet and says kill me as many times as you want i'm immortal the gods gave me this power if you if you help me we can go fight the gods kill them and we can all become immortal and death can disappear yeah that's what she wants yeah i'm i support this Yeah. yeah so she does this she goes around she gets a whole fucking army um it's literally like the entire fucking world uh, if you've ever seen the fucking Snyder Cut, where there's, like, a bajillion armies at once all fighting, like, the aliens or whatever, mm-hmm. it's, like, a whole massive, like, Great Plains worth of army. They all show up to fight them. Uh, they're all magic, and they're all, like, way more badass than any of our characters. Mm-hmm. They're, like, as bad... They're, like, almost as badass as, like, Ozpin. They're, like, full power. Cool. But they're just, like, all the randos. So anyways, they show up, and they demand, like, okay, they demand of him... Make us all immortal. They demand of him, you can't kill anybody ever. So then he goes, you know what? You don't want me anymore? Uh, so both the brothers show up. Uh, they blast uh, They blast one of them with magic. Like an entire fucking screen-wide ex- like burst of light coming from a huge army. This guy just goes, and then he just catches all of it into a ball and then snaps it close. And he goes like, okay, now none of your magic. Fuck you. <laughs> You're all like, what? You can do that? Holy shit! Uh, we're fucked. Wow. Uh, and then he goes, "Wow, you really didn't learn your lesson the first time, did you?" Okay. And then uh, he's like, "Well, none of you fuckers want us anymore. We're leaving. We'll just leave." So, uh, um, he, well, he disappears. Second, this guy, he just like straight up decides, "Ah, eh, fuck it," and he just takes off his dragon into space. He on the way just happens to crash through the moon and just shatter it. Okay, so that's what that is. That's what that is. Uh, he also, in takeoff, makes, uh, leaves an explosion behind. It kills, literally, all the humans. All of them die, except her. She's stuck alone on the whole planet, by herself. Yo. They're like, yeah, now, now you're immortal on a dead planet. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> like this is like the most like Jesus Christ punished. Mm-hmm. Um, punished. Yes. How oh, how unfortunate that this should happen to her. That this like the omni side should happen to her. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the, what a terrible tragedy has befallen you, Salem. <laughs> yeah. The, the end of the world happened. To you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone else is just gone, pretty much. Um, <laughs> Not the rest of the world. Uh, just it didn't teams. happen to them. Just to you. Yeah, like, all the buildings are left, all the life is left, just humans. Like, humans were a great experiment, and it wasn't worth it. Bye. <laughs> That's literally what they say. They say, great experiment, not worth it. Um, in more words than that. So this guy, he goes, well, maybe you'll learn to appreciate it one day. And then um, he leaves. Uh, humans evolve again over... <laughs> It takes a fucking minute, but they evolve again. <laughs> like, on their own, by science. It's a different, like, technically, like, a different species. Yes. Human Holy part two. Part. Yes. Uh, and during this, uh, she kind of, she, she breaks bad, believe it or not. Yeah, she's got some, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's got some issues now. Uh, so. Wow. She's, uh, so while humanity's evolving, she's, like, trying to find a way to kill herself. Okay. So she's wandering the whole planet. So she thinks like, okay, if this dude's pond, uh, which is like a big holy pond or whatever, if this dude gave me Im- immortality, maybe the grim pools will just fucking kill me oh, finally. No. Yeah. So she just hurls herself into hell and becomes trapped in hell for like a thousand years. Oh, trapped uh, in based world. Where she gets <laughs> completely corrupted and fucked up, and then she becomes like the master of grim. It's probably trapped in. Because she just like is yeah. infused with them. She's still magic, by the way. Because she has, like, enough juice from them to be immortal forever. She got... So she just became, like, a demon lady, incidentally? Uh, yeah, by just tossing herself into hell. And just, like, existing in grim goop forever. Great fucking job. Which normally just, like, melts you if you're alive. Um, like, we see, we see like, living things fall into grim pools, and they just, like, evaporate into dust. Yeah. Um, but she just, Is that like, where dust comes from? Uh, no. That's, like... That's the remnants of God power that's like still in that's the land. That's what remnant is. It's called remnant. Remnant. Because they're the last remnants. That's what it is. That's what I call remnants. Sure. Um, anyways. Uh, so what? Did you explain what remnant is? That's the planet is called remnant. remnant. Okay. Yeah, so it's the last remnants of like life, basically. Um, so anyways, she... Uh, she just fucks off into the woods eventually and just becomes a, a witch. And new humanity is around. Grim like, fuck them up all the time. They can barely get off the ground. It's society. Um, and she's like... Um, so this guy decides, like, you know, this isn't working out so good. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna actually go ahead and just bring this dude back. Okay. So they bring him back. And tell him like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Yeah. We're gonna give you, we're gonna give you four god level powers, and that's gonna be the four, uh, what's it called? The four artifacts. So there's like the knowledge, creation, um, like wisdom and life or something. There's four, four artifacts. He gives them to him, and he was like, or he tells him about them. There's four of them. They're scattered all over the planet. If you ever bring them into one place, uh, we'll come back and we'll judge how humans do, how humanity's doing. If you feel like they learned their lesson, then, uh, you know, gods will come back. It'll be now a god, nice, it'll be nice and godly. It'll be a nice happy place. If not, we'll kill all you again. And just wait. <laughs> um, so, uh, so he comes back with this knowledge. Uh, he's not as immortal as she is. He can just die, and he just reincarnates in a new body each time. Um, so he goes, oh. yeah. Oh. second this motherfucker showed up <laughs> the second he showed up and you were like his name starts with an omnif um, I was like yeah, he's that guy so his name's Ozma yeah I was like it's that guy yeah it's that guy it's that guy Ozma Ozma in the Oz books Ozma is a woman okay. it's like alright yeah um what? don't worry about it they like to gender flip them like John Ark yeah yeah it's one of those yeah. anyway so he just like he's like look I don't get all this god shit fuck it I'm gonna, I'm gonna go go find her. So he finds her because she's the last witch. That's what she's called now. She's called the last witch, and she's like kind of fucked up and evil looking, but not quite. She's just like pale and white. Okay. 
And he's like, just like Ruby in season one. It's just like Ruby in season one. She's like super <laughs> pale. Um, uh, and they're like, we're just going to become god kings because we're both immortal. Yeah. So they rise up. They become god kings. He's kind of nervous about the whole humanity being judged thing one day, if that ever happens. Um, so in secret, he goes around and he... Uh, well, no, he doesn't collect relics yet. So they have, like, children <laughs> oh. uh, for, their, for their god kingdom. Uh, they have four daughters. Ah. Oh. And they're all, their children are also magical, so they inherit their magic. So powers. that story that they told them about the four daughters bringing things to a guy in the woods, that was fake. Yeah, that's an old fairy tale. Right. Yeah, that, 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 that is an interpretation of the thing that actually Of the thing happened. that actually happened. Yeah. Uh, so basically at some point, um, he gets worried that everything's being too tyrannical and that she's being, like, kind of too evil because she's kind of being corrupted. Itch. She doesn't care. This is the fascist dictatorship they talked about. Yeah. In the very far past, so uh, at some point he decides to leave with his four daughters, um, and then they have a fight. Uh, he loses because he's not literally immortal and constantly regenerating. Um, and then the daughters are like scattered. Um, he tells them all to fucking run. Uh, she, meanwhile, like just uh, she kills him and then spends like a lot of her lives trying to track him down and bring him back. He spends a lot of his like many iterations of life. Uh, either attempting to forget, because uh, there's a couple lives they show where he's like an alcoholic trying to like literally drink himself into into like memory loss so that he doesn't have to remember this. Holy fuck! And it's mentioned that he literally can't. He cannot not remember what they said. That's like permanently imprinted into his soul. Jeez. Um. So yeah, he makes this cane, um, which he or the cane yeah, that he has right here. With he's had that for like literally thousands of years. Um. And yeah, so he helps humanity rise up. Basically, she's trying to just like, uh, she's trying to like seek vengeance on him and also find a way to die. Uh, she finds out about the relic thing from him when he breaks bad, mm -hmm. and is like, "Oh, I'm gonna bring all the relics together to bring the god to bring the gods back, and then use their own powers against them to attempt to incite their wrath so that I can fucking die." Sure. Uh, so that's her. That's her big evil plan. Yeah. Um. So yeah. And then we come back to this, where it's Ruby again. Remember yeah, Ruby? what? <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> jumped so good. They were on a train yeah. fighting Grimm, and then it jumped to the gods yep. of the Earth and, and yeah. immortals. Anyway, so they're gone right now. Yeah, wow. And meanwhile, they're like, dude, what the fuck? What do you, what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, How do they respond to this? Do we ever, do we cut back to them while the story is being told? Yes, we should, they're like standing there the whole time, like off to the side, and you see different characters' reactions at different times. Um, when they see Salem, they all fucking go pog, like, what the <laughs> fuck? They're like, that's Salem? Because, like, the djinn is explaining it all to them. She's like, a narrator. Damn, she's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways. Yeah. So, uh, after that, uh, Crow realizes his whole fucking life is a lie, and he's like, oh, fuck, I've fucked everything up. I've never made a good choice in my life. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, what specifically did he fuck up? Uh, he's blindly followed Ozpin his entire life, and he's like, wow, you're a piece of shit. You've just manipulated me from literal childhood to be your, be your bitch. Uh, uh, and we've been, we've, been fighting, we've been fighting a war to collect all these artifacts that we should have just fucking left. Should have just never touched them and let it die. Uh, yeah, so anyways, they all freak out, and then Ospin is just like, you know what? Hands off. He just gives his dude reins and disappears. Whoa. And then everyone's like, that's still really bad. We don't we don't want him to just be gone though. We wanna Okay, we don't have a leader anymore. We're all on our own. What do we do? Hmm. Well we don't have a guy who like knows stuff. Does he still have the power? Does the kid still have the powers? Uh the kid still has like his strength that he learned sure. over time, but okay. he's still not as badass as Ozpin. Right. He still has his wand, his like Staff. cane oh. Yeah. Is that like a cool weapon that can like do cool shit? Yes. Yeah. It'll pop off later All right. Okay. So anyway, that was like one episode worth of dump because it was just like, That's boom. one episode. No. <laughs> they literally have like a, like it's like a double length episode just explaining all of this cool. in order and it's awesome. You see the whole world die like twice. Sick. <laughs> Pretty fucking <laughs> sick. So anyways, uh, they're all reeling from that. They all head and start heading north. Again, these three, they're on the train still so they're not there. Yeah. They get to get caught up later and go, what the fuck? Um, so yeah, they head north, um, they stay at, like, a barn, meanwhile, 
How much time do I have? Uh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay, cool. We'll get through the rest of this evening, probably. Um, um, they stop at a barn. There is... Uh, at the barn, there's a winery. Uh, Crow fucking starts having a real problem about this. He has fun. Uh, yeah, he, he decides to stay up late. Or he keeps watch while they all sleep in this barn, so they don't freeze to death in the night. Uh, also, this lady has just been here, by the way. She's just hanging out. Did yeah. she get the Lord dumb? Yes. <laughs> she was like, this is some whack shit, bro. That's crazy. She's like, I just learned that this is humanity's second time around. This is a pretty whack day. I was going to get my eyes tuned up. Okay. Um, I was going to the doctor. She was mildly in the know. She's like an old Ozpin thing, but she like went rogue at some point, and they thought she died. Yeah, she was literally just like on the train to go to the hospital. And then they were like, hey, Granny, check this out. And she was like, Yeah, she's just, like, standing there, which is kind of weird. But they don't show her reaction during the whole thing. They kind of forget about her. It's weird. Yeah. Um, anyways, so they head north. They save this barn. Uh, Crow gets really alcoholic and, like, is completely out of it for, like, a couple days. Um, uh, while they're there, they have, like, they all, like, are really tired and apathetic. It's weird. And then... Well, they're probably uh, hung over from the lore dump. They're hung over from the lore dump, uh, and they're like, God, we're in the middle of fucking nowhere. Why don't we just literally bury this fucking thing and get rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> like, like there's a well in the middle of town, and Ruby just, like, like looks at the well and is, like, holding the relic and, like, about to dump it. And Yang's like, dump it. Fuck it. We're out of here. We're not dealing with this anymore. Um, as soon as Ruby drops it, she's like, oh, shit, why did I do that? We fucking need that. Uh, she goes, uh, so they go down there, turns out, um, this place is abandoned because uh, a bunch of Grim came, and, um, they, they, like, spread, these are, like, weird Grim, they're, like, super weak, but they make everyone around them drained of all, like, energy oh, and emotion. That's why they were drained. That's why they're, that's partially why they're drained, yeah. Uh, they, like, caught, they, like, suck out all your good vibes and leave only the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a lot, they had a lot of bad stuff already. Yeah. So, they head to... Um, so, after that, uh, Ruby does her eye thing again, because it's, like, the only thing she has. They can't physically fight these Grim, so she, like, flashes them, and then they, like, turn to stone or, like, run away. No, she can only do it, like, whenever she needs to protect something. Once an episode. Uh, because, uh, that's what this lady explains, because this lady used to have silver eyes. Ah! Uh, but, they've been, they were cut out. Oh. Because, uh, because uh, fucking... Salem sent a goon to fucking kill her. I see. We discovered this in the backstory, but, uh, yeah. She was sent, uh, someone was sent to kill her. She used to be a badass. She used to be the Grim Reaper. The two ha. Ends. Ha. Uh, her weapons are ha. dual, are dual sights that have gravity in them, Sick. so they can pull to each other. Say, They're like scissors. Kinda, but what she does is she'll, like, she could, like, throw it, uh, so one thing she does is she throws it and it stabs into a big bird grim and then she pulls it down with like pure weight or pure strength and then like cuts its head off as it's falling. Sick. Uh, she's pretty awesome. That's like what Ruby does to that big guy in season one. Yes. But, like she runs up the wall and fucking like, reverse, it. reverse guillotines him. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she barely survives that. She loses her eyes. Uh, and then, so after losing her eyes, Salem starts chasing her. And she goes underground. Um, they head north. After that, they get to the city. That's where... What's the next... That's the next one. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, they get to the next city. Meanwhile, all this has been happening. Uh, Cinder uh, has a little thing where Cinder is alive. She gets saved by some nice lady who she immediately kills and takes her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, not, not even, like, wait to get her strength back. She just, like... Wakes up, some some girl is taking her, and she just walks over and fucking like cuts her down, and takes all her stuff. Um, yeah, so she's uh, she's failed her master, so she knows she can't go back until she has something. She has the relic that she was sent to go get. She fucked up real bad. Um, so she's heading north. She's chasing down Ruby herself. She's gone basically rogue. Uh, on the way there, there's this there's this fat lady called Little Miss Malachite. She runs like a gang in Mistral. Has, like, Miss Muffet. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a gang. She learns, uh, uh, Cinder's like, hey, tell me where she's at, and I'll go, uh, so I can find Ruby. Mm -hmm. She pays her a bunch of money from the people she kills. Uh, anyway, she holds out information on her because she's like, mm, someone else is looking for, for, for someone who matches her description. 
Yes. Wait, when did Cinder be able to talk again? Uh, Cinder, Cinder can talk, like, in Season 5, she builds up being able to talk again. In Season 4, she, like, can't talk at all. It's just, like, an overtime thing. Yes. So, the person that is also looking for Cinder is... Uh, person that is also looking for Cinder is Neo. Neo shows up. Welcome back. She has beef with Cinder. They go, Cinder got her almost killed and also got her, like, master fucking Roman portrait killed. Mm -hmm. It's unclear what their relationship was, they, but, she, but clearly, she clearly really liked them. She's wearing his hat. She's wearing his hat, too. Memoriam. Yeah. That's sick in as fuck. Does so she, she always should... have heterochromia? Yes. Yes. Looks weirder in that picture. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we'll wrap up the season soon. Um, anyway, so she shows up to kill Cinder. Cinder, uh, Cinder of the course of them fighting in like a totally awesome bar fight. Um, uh, convinces her like, hey, I'm a maiden, but I'm like kind of weak right now, but I can still probably kill you. Now, your I mean, real what? beef shouldn't be with me. It should be with Ruby. Um, Neapolitan? Yes. Yeah, Neo's beef. Neapolitan's beef. She's not a maiden. No, Cinder. No, Cinder's, Cinder's the maiden. Cinder says Neo. Cinder says, yeah, because she can't talk. Um, right. She mostly communicates by going like question gesture and changing into a person. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so so whenever she's like, yeah, but when are we gonna kill Ruby? She just changes into Ruby and like <laughs> points herself. And then That's like great. does like a kill motion. Uh it's funny. Uh so she's like, okay, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Our our now that we're aligned, we're gonna fucking go kill Ruby. That's our job now. Uh they'll be important later. Cool. Uh they figure out where they're going, they figure out they're heading to Astral, so they also head there. Um who's next? Okay, yeah. So now we arrive in the port town. You see that? You see that? You see what that means? Yeah, guess what? We got we got confirmed lesbo. Whoa! We got on screen. We got married married lesbian girls. There's so many fucking girls in the show. It's whack. Anyway, so yeah, this is Saffron and Terra Arc. This is uh, his older sister. Okay. Uh, who married this this hot brown girl or like Asian girl? I don't know. They have an adoptive son. Uh, it's real cool. So anyways, they put him up while they're in town. Um. There's a Atlas base. They go there. They're going to. They're like, hey, we have lice. Let us to Atlas. They're like, borders closed, bitch. Fuck you. Know what lice you need back in a fucking Atlas? Well, she's been like disowned by her family. <laughs> uh, she's like disgraced. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So this bitch Cordova. Uh, yeah. She's like, yeah. You know what? Fuck you, Shnee. She just got beef with Shnee. She's like, yeah, you don't deserve anything you get. I mean, that's uh, true. Yeah, she's like a weird... She's like She looks weird in this picture. That's because she's like this tall. Mm. She's like a lolly commander girl. Um, yeah, so she's like, nah, you can't come. Uh, so then they kind of have to brood for a bit. Everyone has to brood on everything that they've learned. Uh, Crow goes on a complete bender, and everyone loses track of him for like a day. Jeez. They find him, and he's like washed in the gutter, and he's like, oh, fuck. Uh, and Yang says, I've never seen him this bad. That's how you know it's bad. <laughs> um, um, Oscar ha Oscar like goes off. He buys a coat. That's like the next. That's like the next picture of him. Yeah, there he buys a coat. This is dapper young man. They like lose track of him, and they're like, "Oh shit, did Oz Oscar run off?" And it's like, "No, he just went and bought a coat." I don't know why that's a plot point, but it is. <laughs> and they felt the need to be very justified with his costume change. There you go. He's got a coat now. Cool. Nice coat. Looking dapper. Um, he's wearing green now. He wears green now. Like, the, like. Because he's merging, he's merging. Uh huh. Anyways, uh huh. Yeah. Um, he starts having like leadership moments where they're like, oh, you kind of are like him. Um. Yeah. Wait, did he get him fucked out of his brain? No, he's like dormant. No, he just like uh, stopped coming out. Yeah, he stopped coming out. Um, stopped. He stopped being in front, and now they're like merging, posing yeah. behind the scenes. Mm. Yeah. We are. Uh, Seems we are running low on natural light. We have a lamp right there. It is nearly 9 p.m. So. Anyway, we've got. So. What? No, it's not. It's nearly 8 p.m. <laughs> yeah, still. Whack. Yeah. Anyways. Time's there, a flat circle. That's why uh, the clock's around. Exactly. So there is. So, this side, you know what? Uh, Crow, Crow's like, everything's fucking wordless. We don't have a plan. We're stuck here. Fuck it. I'm just gonna drink myself to death. So the rest of them get pissed. Uh, so Ruby gets pissed at him, because Ruby has now kind of become their authority figure. Yeah. 
Uh, and she's like, you know what, just because you don't have an idea doesn't mean we're out of ideas. We're, we've gotten this far without Austin. Fuck the, fuck the adults, we're doing our own thing. Mm -hmm. So John comes up with a plan where they're like, you know, yeah. How old is Ruby right now? She's like 16 and a half-ish. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean they're all only like two years older than her, and he's like ten. Well, he's like twelve. No thing about John. You're talking about here, he's cracking a plan. He was like th throughout the whole series, he's like noted to be like he's a strategist also. Like he he was the leader of his team, and he yeah, was he's the leader of his having, team. He was having really good plans. Like that was always his thing. Not that his plans were great, but he always so he's Fred from Scooby Doo. Yes. Yeah. Kind of. Anyway, so his uh, so his plan is like, what if we just stole a ship and just flew there and then hopefully got past their border control. And they're like, well, that's like the best thing we got. Fuck it. Mm -hmm. So uh, they all break They all break up in a couple teams. Uh, she goes off to, dis she's going to disable their communications tower that they have in the town. So that way they can't detect them on radar. Because, mm -hmm. uh, uh, quote, she's, she's messed with Atlas Tech before. Or she sabotaged Atlas Tech before. All back. Um, the rest of them are going to. Oh, Weiss. Is, uh, Weiss manages to talk her way solo into the into the base with um, the locals. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way she can get on a ship and they can bring her back because uh, they weren't gonna let her in. Uh, she smuggles her in a suitcase because she's so tiny. Hilarious. Hilarious. Oh, she had, by the way, she has beef with her. They hate oh. each other. Um, because apparently she does this every every like ten years. She goes to get her eyes fixed in the same route, and every time she tries to smuggle something, she's not supposed to. Mm. Um. So yeah, they get onto a ship. Uh, they get onto a ship, and then immediately just like knock out the guys on the ship and take it. Cool. Uh, meanwhile, Blake has failed to disable communications. They don't know why. Uh, Yang gets really worried about this. Is like that's probably bad. I'm gonna go check on her. Mm -hmm. Uh. So Yang. Dries off in Bumblebee to go protect her, and then a big, big fucking fight ensues because they've been detected, and all this has gone awry. Uh, basically, this bitch gets through a big fucking robot, oh. like a big giant robot. Cool. Like there's big robots that are like twenty feet tall. This one's like, like the uh, two hundred feet tall. It's a mecha. It's a mm. straight up mecha. Yeah. They're going full Gundam now. Uh, anyway, the Gundams yeah. aren't very big yeah. actually. Is this the final fight of the season yes. with border control? Yes. <laughs> yeah, with border control. So, anyways, uh, they have a, yeah they have a big robot because they're on the sea and giant whale grim coming from the sea. A TSA. They, have, they have to fucking fight them. Uh, okay, they, so they need a Jaeger. Yeah. They need a Jaeger. Like it literally is a Jaeger because uh, during this fight shit gets bad enough to where a grim shows up and it's a fucking Godzilla grim. Whoa. It's literally Godzilla. It looks like Godzilla, it makes Godzilla noises, and it yeah. can shoot a ray from its mouth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyways, during this fight, they fight it, uh, they manage to take out its arm, which is a huge fucking cannon filled with dust, uh, by Ruby jumps into the barrel and shoots it just before it goes off. Uh. And then, like, barely survives. Uh, everyone gets real fucked up. And, uh, yeah, while that's happening, uh, so Blake is at the... Is that the place she's trying to disable all the communications? Uh, she, uh, we cut to her. She's on. The, she's like on the floor hiding, and next to her is a fucking dead guy. Mm. We're like, what's going on? And she looks and she like looks down around a catwalk, and fucking Adam Torres is there. Oh! He's there to kill her. He's ah! like, finally, I've been tracking you this whole fucking time, and you're finally by yourself. Holy fuck! Um, this dude will not give up. No, he's down bad. Um. <clears throat> So anyways, they have a they have a big fight. He chases her through the woods because he's still more badass than she is. Uh, she puts up a fight for a little bit, and then they get to where they're in front of like this big waterfall with a big walkway of earth between it, uh, and they're having a big duel. Uh, he gets her uh, pinned just like last time. He's about to uh, he like he like freshens the scar that she has on her side with like his sword, and he's like I'm gonna he's like I'm gonna give you fucking another one, and he like wheels up to. Uh, like cut her head off, and then right when he does that, off the top of the waterfall, on riding Bumblebee, Yang like flies yes. off and like crashes into him. Yes. And then Bumblebee like fly like flies off and goes into the river and is gone. Damn, no more. So then they have to. Good so night, then sweet prince. they post up. They uh they have a big long fight with him Hell yeah. where they're where they're all like almost out of energy, 
Uh, they keep having like fucking PTSD flashbacks from all the fucked up shit he's done. Mm-hmm. Like they have moments where like they're just sitting there shaking <laughs> in like fear. It's pretty awesome. Um, then uh, Adam goes full sicko mode. It turns out his uh, his semblance also is kind of like Yang's, so he can turn he can turn bright red Yo. and like send all your send all your damage back if you hit his blade. Damn. And uh, he breaks Blake's weapon in like half. Damn. Uh, while they're fighting and like launches her away so him and Yang are fighting and he does like the same uh, he does like a big dash in to like uh, cut her again in the same way uh, and it does like the same thing except uh, whenever he does it this time it like only cuts into his her metal arm uh, and she's like no I'm fucking stronger now you bitch mm-hmm. so she like goes again does her big burst fucks him up real fucks him up kind of bad and they're all out of energy. Uh, and then they do a team up attack where they pick up uh, the last weapon, because all the other weapons are fucking broken. Uh, they pick up Blake's like broken in half weapon, and uh, uh, Blake stabs him like through the heart, and uh, Yang at the same time stabs him through the back. Yo, like straight up wow. blood coming out, like fucking this dude is stabbed twice through all the way. He's skewered. And then he just like collapses. He takes his mask off and is like, "Wasn't worth it." And then he just falls off into the water and dies. And then they hold each other and like cry. Wait, does he actually say "wasn't worth it"? No, he doesn't actually say that. He says something else. He says something like dramatic. Yeah. He says like another. He says like he says like two more scars and like collapses and dies. So he's dead, dead. Yeah, he's like proper dead. Yeah. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Where's the marker? Where's the marker? He doesn't give an F. What do you, what no, do you give an F? No, where, where's the marker? Okay. Where's the marker? Give me a fucking second! Hey man, we only got like 10 minutes. Alright. It's All 15. Right. Mm-hmm. F is for respects. H is for disrespects. Fuck this guy. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, fuck him. He's dead. Let's leave him. H for disrespects. Yeah. There's so many cameras just shut off. Okay, well, we'll cleave him. Give him to me. He's already dead. We killed him. Great. Okay, now move. Anyways, uh, final fight. They're fighting the robot. Robot, uh, they they disabled it, and they're like, yeah, we get out of here. And then Godzilla shows up, and they're like, oh, fuck. We just killed their defense. They're going to die, aren't they? Oh, shit. Oh, no. So, um, oh, no. so team, team Ruby gathers their strength, and then they decide, like, okay, we got to do something. So um, they're like, okay, Ruby, you've been doing some, like, some like mental training with with Maria. Can you do your eye thing again? Mm. She's like, I don't know. Maybe. Shrug. Uh, so they go there. Uh, they land. They land in front of it as it's like destroying the shield barriers and like letting in a bunch of sharks mm. that like can walk on land and shit. Land sharks. Yeah, yeah. there's land sharks. Cool. Uh, they fight. Uh, they're like blasting it from the ship while Ruby is like standing on a big pillar in front of it. And um, right, uh, Ruby's carrying the artifact, the big lantern. And r- right before uh, the Godzilla is like charging at her, and she's like trying to do the thing with her eyes, where she like clears her mind. Uh, and right before she gets like completely destroyed by this thing, uh, she says, she goes like, uh, Jin, and then time stops, and she goes like, Oh fuck! Oh, God. And she's like, she's like, you don't have a question for me, do you? She's like, All right. You're tricky, this one. <laughs> do that again, I won't let you get away with it. Uh, she only has one more question left, by the way. Alright, three wishes. Three yeah. Wishes. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's like, well, if you think about it, she so lets her meditate for like a good few minutes. So she catches her breath and she thinks about, and there's a big flashback where it goes through all the seasons. Wow. But with like redone scenes. Sure. And it's like all the emotional moments, all the things that she wants to protect. Yeah. Because that's how you trigger your eyes. Uh-huh. And then, um,. As time like speeds up and starts resuming, she like immediately does the eye thing and like stuns the grim and like turns it to stone, but only like on the surface. So um, they like, yeah, we did it. We can fucking kill it now, and uh, it immediately starts breaking out because it's like too huge. Mm-hmm. Like she's not powerful enough to stop it. But uh, as soon as they do that, um, this fucking this girl with her big robot just comes back, and then they do and they do exactly what you think they're gonna do with a giant robot. Which is, sure, they've cut off one of its arms with the big gun, but the other one that was a fist 
it unfolds and it turns into a giant fucking drill because now yes. we have to do burn logic. Yes! So then she runs, Fuck Big yes. Metal Shoe starts playing, which is her own theme, and then she just fucking like drill uppercuts it <laughs> and then like drills all the way through it as it like bleeds and dies Fuck. in the ocean. Yes. And then she's like, you know what? You, you know what? No one will miss one extra ship. You can take it. Bye. So then, <laughs> then they leave on their ship. And that's the end of volume six. Red. There you go. That's volume six. I guess we're taking another break. <laughs> yeah, fucking goddamn. Keep dreaming about a better world. You keep wishing for some clarity. Volume 7. Uh, they arrive in Atlas, which is also Mantle. So how, how the capital of Atlas is, there is a... Yeah, you can see that. Um, there is a... The capital city of Atlas is, like, floating up above on a shitload of, uh, of gravity dust. There's, like, a mast on the bottom. Uh, it's, like, tethered to the ground with cables. Seems like kind of a liability. Uh, anyways... <laughs> Uh, so below it is like the, is like Midgar. It's just mid, it's Midgar. The shitty slums. The shitty slums that are down below. I pog. Yeah, he pogs. So uh, it's the Jetsons. All right. Yeah. Uh, it's called Mantle. That's what the lower city is called. It's called Mantle. Um, anyways, they arrive there. Um, they land there illegally because they're like, oh yeah, we stole, the, we stole this fucking ship. So... Uh, they land there, and she's like, oh, I know a place we can go to hide. So she guides them through the slums. There's a bunch of drunken homeless people and bald hat. Anyways, meet that guy. Gross, like, I feel right at home. No, this guy. This guy, uh, they go to a, they go to her, like, robo-doctor man. Mm. That's this guy. His name's Pietro Palandina. Remember who that is? Pietro. Uh, uh, yes. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Palandina, last name. This guy made Penny. That's who that is. Our girl. That's also who that is. Our girl Penny. Yo, what's up? He rebuilt his daughter. Does she have her brain? Uh, yes. Yo, the orange bitch is alive uh, again. Yo, what's up? She's back. She's also mad cute now. You can take down the F one. Yeah, I know. That's why I left her up there. You're supposed to remember her, because Ruby remembers her like all the time is like, yeah. fucking Cinder, you bitch. How oh, look, you replaced Osman with, yeah, look at that. No, I did that. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Um, so, yeah, so Penny's also back. Penny is, a, she's, she is the defender of Remnant. So she is the robot that, you know, she works for the Atlas, yeah. the Atlas military. Yeah. Uh, she defends the fucking slum people from, from Grimm because shit is so fucked down here that Grimm literally, like, just popped into existence because people are so miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Because of the wage gap is so bad. Yeah, it's so bad. There's like a shitload of faunas everywhere who are like basic, basically fucking like terrible mine grit labor. You see like a truckload of them going off to the mines for like their third shift yeah, of the day. Yeah, the salt mines. No, the fucking yeah. dust mines, dude. It's the yeah, dust mines. Yeah, yeah. This I place is like the dust capital of the world. Man, deeper in depth. Yeah. yeah. Um, so 
Uh, so Pietro, he's like a cool scientist man. He works for the Atlas military, but he also likes to come down here on the down low, and he just like gives people fucking free robot parts. He's kind of weird and senile. Cool. Just like a weird experiment guy. Okay. He's also like, he's also like sickly, kind of. Like he's got a cough, um, because uh, it's revealed later, but yeah, good question. You can wait until like you're done with work. So. All right, cool. So he's sickly, he's got like a cough. Uh, that's, it's revealed later uh, that the reason for that is that he doesn't have a lot of aura because the way he makes Penny, who is a machine with an aura, is that he gives a chunk of his to her. Whoa. So when she died, she lost that. Yeah, he has to do that twice So now. he's had to do that again. And if he does it again, he'll probably die. <laughs> Which um, he's probably willing to do that because, you know, he loves his daughter. Mm-hmm. Just like shit though. He's all about his oh, daughter. Oh, it's like, uh, uh, what's Pinocchio's dad's name? Geppetto. Yeah, Penny Yokio. Like Neo Yokio. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> he made it before you did. Okay, go. No, I wasn't upset. Tyrion looked like he had a fucking robot tail in the intro there. Yes, he did. He gets a robot tail. Does he still have poison from his butt? Uh, yes, he still has poison in it. It's okay. still poisonous. It just now has, like, a tube of poison in it. Good for him. Uh, as opposed to a gland, just like festering poison. Anyways, um, so they all show up, they meet Penny, and they're like, dude, holy shit! Penny, she knows these big salutations, she hugs everybody, yeah. it's super awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then a uh, uh, bunch of bunch of Grimm show up, they fight some Grimm, yeah. opening act and she ensues. Yeah. And then after that, the next like five characters oh, all here. I was playing with the tape, shit. Oh, you fool. You shouldn't have been doing that. So anyways, the next, like, a bunch of a bunch of Atlas military fuckers all just, like, oh, swoop in immediately and, like, tame them all without their noticing. Come take some of these. You only have two hands. Yeah. So, this guy, he's one. He's the main leader. Uh, they're the ace operatives, also called the ace ops. <laughs> that's, see that? That's clever. That's good shit. Uh, this guy, he's a reader. He's called Clover. His power is, oh, I get it. Yeah, I yeah. Don't get that. His power is uh, good luck. Uh, As opposed to Crow. Crow's so, bad luck is so bad he fucking lost his voice actor. He did. He's been replaced. Ooh. Oh, well, fine. Anyways, so yeah. Nice, oh, Clover shows up. This this girl, Harriet, who's like a running girl, she's like a rabbit. Hair. Super fast. Yeah. Uh, she's like super fast. Uh, her semblance is like flash speed. Um, there's this guy who is Marrow. He's a Faunus. Uh, and he, you know, he's on the he's on the ASOS because he's a real race trader like that. <laughs> uh, but he is also like, any anytime someone's like. Man, you know, we're, we're for fighting, fighting, you know, Atlas oppression. He's like, I know. That's usually his reaction. Oh. Uh, oh, my God. Got it. You got, like, nine. S- nine of these. I don't blame you, though. There's this, so many images. There's so many fucking characters. Anyways, here's another Aesop. Uh, her name is Elm. Uh, she's a big hammer lady. Uh, her semblance, and this guy's are kind of similar. Hers is that she can plant her feet, and, like, her aura will stick to the ground. Because she's so strong, she can like throw such a huge hammer around that she needs that, or she'll like topple over. Hmm. Uh, also, her you know her hammer turns into a rocket launcher, big rockets. Uh, Nora immediately decides they are best friends. <laughs> Amazing. And she says, "We are now, we are now both known as Thunder Thighs." <laughs> That's what she says. <laughs> Nora just decides that they are both now called Thunder Thighs, and she's having none of it. But. Did we even go over Nora's semblance, where she can, like, power up by absorbing electricity? She can do that. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, Does that, that girl that, have anything to do with that? Who? Does that, did the other hammer girl have any electricity power? No. Okay. This girl, her semblance is she can stick to the ground. Here, yeah. put more of these up there, because these are character redesigns. Yeah, I'm going to put them up there in a second when they actually get the redesigned. Uh, uh, this is Z- this is Zine. Uh, he, he's got weird stretchy arm powers, so he can shoot his, his semblance, he can extend his aura through his arms, so he's got big stretchy arms. He's Luffy. Like, like, yeah, like Luffy yeah, level yeah, stretchy, yeah. where he can go, like, 50 feet with them. Yo-ho-ho took a bite of gum gum. Uh, exactly. 
Um, so anyways, they capture they capture the main crew, except for Maria, who's just an old woman, and they just like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and also, uh, you know, they leave these guys behind, because they're good. They know them. Um, so that's when they get captured, they get thrown in for, uh, into a prisoner transport, and they meet this guy, who is your, in case you weren't sure how fast she was, by the fact that it looks like Midgard, uh, this dude's like, like, no, nah, bro, I was fucking protesting that shit. They fucking arrested me. Fucking fascist ass. Fuck this guy. Fuck Ironwood. Fuck Ironwood. Anyways, uh, he's like, wait, why are you guys all hunters? He's just like a normie. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, he's like one of the people that hates Ironwood. And then, so they take him in. So you got a, you have a question still, Keegan? Uh. Nope. That's what I'm hearing. Anyway, so they take everybody in. Um, as soon as they get brought in, they're like, hey, these guys are more important. Team Ruby, they're like kind of important. Uh, go ahead and uh, bring them to the, go ahead and bring them to school in Atlas, like uh, Atlas Academy. Forgive me, I remember. Okay. Uh, so that stretchy guy, what was he? Uh, Zine? Me? Is that guy? Yeah, he's this did, guy. Did he, did he eat the Omu Omu no Me? What's that? Series created by... Vine's that is his name. Omu Omu. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I get it. <coughs> it doesn't really make sense, but I got it. Uh, anyways, so they take they take them all in, and uh, some gormless guards are bringing them into Atlas whenever uh, uh, they're presented to Winter. Uh, Winter okay. sees them and immediately says, you have 30 seconds to unhand my sister and her friends before I fucking start hurting you. <laughs> Uh, so here's Winter. Winter's she's down there, Bob. Yeah, she is. She's now down. She's down here. He's directing under him. Um, also, this guy, he, he's on a beard. I would. I would. And, he's, and he's gone kind of full fat. He's gone even more fashy looking. He looks like Joel from The Last of Us. Yeah, he oh does look like, uh, like Joel from The Last of Us. Except he has more than one subject to enforce his daddiness onto. It's true. Yeah. He got yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he he receives them all. And is like, sorry about your opening, but uh, you like illegally immigrated, and like tripped like thirty alarms on your way in here. Why would you do that? And they're like, we stole the ship. And he's like, he just looks at Crow and he's like, God damn it, Crow. And he's like, that wasn't my idea. That was there. Oh wow. I didn't do that. Um. Oh shit, fucking Cinder fell. Oh no. Cinder fell! <gasps> oh no, her it's name. Thematic. I vlogged. <laughs> Yet again. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah. They are received, and then they are uh, brought up to speed on what's going on. Basically, uh, General Ironwood has decided, like, okay, we're gonna need to. Our plan currently is uh, now that we have one of the relics in lockdown, and we have. No, we have one maiden because they have the winter maiden, which is which is um. Have uh, they told us? Uh, yes, they have told. Us. Okay. Uh, she's in that back somewhere, but uh, she's not shown yet. So like, we have the winter maiden. We can't meet her because no one's allowed to meet her. Um, she is, uh, but she's like an old lady on ice, or not on ice, but she's like in ICU. She could die any day. Uh, just of old age. Anyways. They have, currently, there's like a big, uh, their big plan is they're going to Amity Coliseum, which is the Coliseum from Season 3. They're going to take it, which they, because they still have it, it's still floating. Mm. They're going to use it to get a, to build another beacon on top of it. So that way they can connect the world, and then they're going to launch it into space as a satellite. Okay. Mm. That is the plan. Cool. That way, no Grim can attack it. Right. Because Grim can't go into space. Um, am I missing anything? Let's see. Yeah, I well, the, the Grim are, are flat earthers. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so if there was a Grim that was amigo, then he could fly into space. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, I also don't get that. It's for the people in the back. All right, let's go. All right. What? So, so anyways, they get assigned to a they assigned to a mission. They gotta go clear out uh, dust mines so they can get a bunch of resources. Blah blah. blah build the thing. Uh. This is basically where the Aesop show off what they can do to all the crew, and they're like, oh, damn, we're pretty cool, and we have, like, some comparisons, so, like, 
You and my crow, you're pretty cool together. They like each other. They start playing cards. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they got like a banter. Um, anyways, uh, they clear out a mine, they secure it, and Team Ruby just starts like doing day work for them as huntsmen. Um, there's like a huge montage. It's pretty cool. They have, uh, uh, they all start bonding, and all these characters, they get to know some of these characters. So, like, Ruby and Harriet have a thing because they're both super fast. Yeah. Uh, but Ruby is like, just kind of stuck a bitch. Like, damn. Uh, yeah, so they do that for a while, and there is going to be... Uh, oh, yeah, so they're all taking different jobs. So the different jobs they get put on is... Uh, yeah, so their, their jobs are Ruby, Weiss, and Crow, along with Clover. They... Their job is to secure transports of materials to and from the launch site. Um, Blake and Yang, Blake and Yang, are sent to keep the uh, keep the site itself safe from Grim because it's they're still appearing in the mines because it's like a huge fucking dungeon. Video games. Are there dragons? There are not dragons. There are like centipede monsters that can like drill through the ground, cool. and also like golems that are like ghosts that are just a mask in like a bunch of black tar and then they can like phase through objects and possess them. Yeah, we saw that that was in the beginning of season four though. Yeah, that, that's in season four as well. Um, and uh, Nora and Ren, they go and they're doing security for Mantle, which is the lower city because it's getting all fucked up uh, and the walls are in disrepair. John, uh, he gets stuck on, uh, he gets stuck on school, school schoolyard duty. Our fucking guy. guy. Out yeah. there supporting the kids. Yeah, so. Our he, guy. Yeah, so he, he gets stuck, uh, because he takes the first job they offer, which is, uh, go walking kids to school and making sure they're safe. That's, it's so good. What a fucking hero. He's such a good <laughs> yeah. guy. So anyways, uh. Do they, yeah, do they get their designs? Yeah, they, they get they their get designs their, during this. They're all. Uh, because they all get upgrades to all their weapons. So all the characters get like some kind of subtle upgrade to their weapons. Um, there he is. Yeah, there's Blake. They also all get haircuts, yeah. except for Yang. Yang just has the same hair. She doesn't care. Yeah, she's a you know she's a, uh, a fire. It's almost like Weiss gets extensions. She like grows a lot. Yeah, she like hair. gets a, a large. She now is hair. Elsa. Yeah, she is Elsa. Yeah. yeah, they also have like the winter outfit now. Yeah, because we're gonna be here a while. That picture of Yang is like the highest res image of any of these. Yes, I had to take that picture myself. Because <laughs> the one that was there was like, it was like red tinted, and Your I'm like, that's going to look bad. Yeah, yeah, and here's Nora's new one. There's a little spoiler on it, but whatever. Um, yeah, you get to see see John with his new hair. Yeah. Uh, Looking fucking clean. Uh, can, uh, can, oh, oh, yeah, so while he's doing transport for all, or he's, like, protecting all the kids as they go to school, yeah. um, there's a little bit that's hilarious where all, all the moms of all the kids, like, they start crushing on him. Oh. So he's, so he's, so a bunch of fucking milfs start macking on John. Fuck yes. And they start giving him, like, food every time he shows up. Oh, fuck yeah, Slay King. <laughs> he's fucking sick. Good job, John. Um. Our guy. Yeah. Fucking Sokka. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so while all this fuckery is going on, um, there's a there's an election coming up, um, there that uh, where this character gets introduced along with her crew. She's a she's a motley crew. Uh, this is this is Robin Hill, and also her her friends who are the Happy Huntresses. I'll give you about thirty seconds to guess who that is. This is Robin Hill. She's running for fucking councilwoman. Uh, this is her, this is one of her happy hunters. This oh my is May Marigold. Oh my god. Yeah. That character. Yeah, you see that character? Yeah. Um, uh, so here's one of her other happy hunters. There's other ones, but they don't matter. Uh, I picked these because, um, she's adorable. She's a sheep. Ooh. Yeah, she's great. And her name's Fiona. Uh, and she, her semblance is that she can steal, she can put shit in her hand, and it, like, disappears. She's like a bag of holding in her hand. Oh, I wanted her to put things in her fluff. Uh, Robin's semblance is that if she is told she's like touching someone, uh, her aura will glow depending on if they're lying or not. So you can get detect lies. 
And um, I don't think she has a sunglasses. Okay. Um, yes. So there's a Robin Hood. Um, Robin Hood and Mary Men, Robin Hill, and her hack and huntresses, because they're all girls. Right. Yeah. There you go. Good job. There's your point. <laughs> he doesn't point it out. Um. We already have a little John. All right. Yep. Okay. So, uh, right about now, some characters start to arrive, and some of the villains start to arrive. So we have a. Uh, oh, Watts. we haven't had any new characters in a while. Cool. Who's <laughs> <laughs> got like? <laughs> just got like a shitload. <laughs> Anyways, so, uh, so Watts and Tyrion arrive. They're here to sow chaos and prepare for Salem, who's gonna do a bunch of fucked up shit here because they're like. I'm like, well, now there's a bunch of shit in one spot. Let's fucking get it. Um, Cinder and Neo, they arrive kind of closer to the end of this volume. Um, they'll be relevant later. Um, so yeah, those two, their, their goal is to currently sabotage the upcoming election. Um, so Tyrion is currently, he is killing anyone who opposes Ironwood to make him look guilty. Uh, because everyone's like being like yeah he's being real fashy right now because like he does a lot of shit without approval because he kind he has two council seats so he has almost a majority by himself because he's four <laughs> um yes so in the election the person opposing robin hill is jock snee okay yeah so he's also running he's obviously a dick fuck him yeah um why doesn't even go see him? Never Fuck let him. businessmen who are powerful become like acting government ministers, governments government seat executives. It doesn't work out for the people. Unless you want your poise to bull out of the fucking desert, die on the fucking line. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So they're doing all. Uh. So that election arc's going on. Uh. During the day of the election, it looks like Robin's gonna win by a landslide. So uh, the, the gang gets. Um, they get awarded two things. They get one, uh, Ironwood goes ahead and goes, hey, I know it's not much, you know, he's, he's being real cool. They haven't told him about all the Salem shit and all the, like, gin stuff that was told to them because they don't know whether or not they can trust him. He's like, you know what? You guys are doing really good work. Thanks so much. Uh, here, you all get your hunter's, license, hunter's licenses. So they all get licensed. Yo. They've all been on license the whole time. And now they can do their jobs legally. Now they can legally do their jobs, not without... Instead of just being with special permission all the time. Yes. Decriminalize um, hunting. So they have that, like a party. That is like so much better than like, oh yeah, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. It's like, yeah, Sora has saved the entire fucking multiverse twice and then he gets an F on the test because of bullshit. Yeah. So he's still a bitch by the time Kingdom Hearts 3 comes around and Riku gets to be a king man. But Riku, yeah. Riku is the cool guy. Anyways, that's yeah, a different, retarded. different lecture. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so they all break off. They get a night to celebrate while the gra- while the everything's happening. Um, Robin's holding a victory rally, so the characters that can go to it are uh, it's Ruby, Nora, and Ren are going to it, and Penny is also there as security because it's because she's like a you know she's a woman of the people, so she's concerned about. Um, Blake and Yang go to a club on a date. Hell yeah. They go dance on a date. Um, They go with uh, those two next characters. These characters show up. We trashed earlier. Yeah, we trashed earlier. They're irrelevant. Yeah, Team Punky. They just show back up. What's up? They're from, well, because they're from Atlas. Right. So they're here and they're just kind of like around. Sure. They train with them and uh, they're generally pretty chill. Uh, We're going to put them in the like, they're over here, like, who cares? They just show up. They're just they show up. And they have redesigns. Really not making this easy for me. Ignore it. Ignore it. They're whatever. I'm just putting them off the side because they don't matter. Um. Yes. So. Uh. That's what they're doing. Uh. Weiss is like fuck a victory rally and uh, fuck the club. I'm not going because she fucking hates neon. She's like fuck her. She's a bitch. And Yang says, well yeah, but as a club you can't talk. That's just what she says. <laughs> uh, so Weiss goes with John and Oscar to the movies because she's like, man, I don't have anything to fucking do. Hang out with the boys. Yeah, she goes to hang out with the boys. Um, Crow's just out drinking. Yeah. Actually, no, Crow is not out drinking. He's actually on patrol with this guy because he's given up drinking. 
Oh. Uh, thank you, Volume 7. Cold Turkey. Wow. He's Cold Turkey. He's quit. Good for him. Yeah. He's on a sobriety tour. On a sobriety tour. Um, oh, and maybe that explains why his voice is different. It made his voice clears up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. Head cannons. Yeah. Anyways. Is his voice any different? Yes, his voice is different. Okay. Like, you can tell. Like, notably? Yes. Like how, like He's how? a different guy. <laughs> no, but is the guy performing a different voice? Uh, not really. Is he doing his best Steve Blum impression? It's probably not his best. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, anyways, yeah, so Ruby, Nora, and Ren, they all go there. Uh, Nor- uh, Nora's, like, really down with the fight for the people, by the way, because, you know, she grew up as, like, a homeless girl. Yeah, she's a fucking waif. Yeah. Uh, Ren has, like, a whole knighthood thing. She's a street rat. Where her, his dad was, like, a cool hunter who defended his town to the death, yeah. so he's got a lot of responsibility juice in him. Oh, yeah. So anyways, uh, they go to this rally, and at one, at one point during it, uh, they're all three standing around, or they're all four, because Penny's also there. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ren goes... Why didn't Blake and Yang want to come? Like, why do they always go off on their own together? And Nora's like, do you not get it? Do you not? He's like, what? I don't get it. He's like, you know, sometimes people that are special together, they hang out individually, and then she starts talking about clearly them, and then Ruby is like, this is getting really awkward. Come on, Penny, let's go. (laughs) (laughs) So they leave them just, like, having a spat in, like, the middle of this crowd. Amazing. Um, Amazing. Yeah, uh, Marrow's there, and like a couple of days off, just like Harriet, souls are there. Uh, and they're just running security, so that way they don't get too rowdy around here. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, in the background, the scores are ticking closer on all the screens. Yikes. And it's like, uh, no one's mentioning it, so it's clearly important. Right. Um, so, uh, right when they're doing a, a countdown, and she's giving a big speech up on the thing for like the end of closing polls, uh, the cut to Watts, uh, he does a thing on a computer, and the power cuts out, oh. and then this dude, he barges in, and he just starts fucking massacring people, like, oh. straight up. Like, all the randos in there, it's like, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, uh, while, like, running around in the dark, because he's a faunus and he has night vision. Yeah. Because I guess scorpions have night vision? Probably. Why not? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Or, like, heat vision. Good enough. Or he's a mass murderer, so he has night Are vision. Are they one of the ones that do electromagnetism? Scorpions? Yeah. No. Okay. Whatever. You can, maybe because they're arthropods, they can see ultraviolet, and therefore, like, low light, lower light environments are brighter to them. That's my best guess. Okay. Hang on. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Before mass murder starts, I forgot. Uh, these two, uh, Nora's just like, look, man, I know you can't fucking talk, whatever, fuck it. So they make out. They're just straight up making out. Yo! First make out on screen. So Yo! I was like, damn, Ren is gone. It took oh, seven yeah. seasons. <laughs> we took seven seasons. Fucking the two characters just straight to make out. Yes, thank you. Yeah, something physical like, intimacy. They just don't make understand. out. They're trying. They have a messy relationship. It's kind of a problem. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> murder is happening all around them. It's really r- killing the vibe. Right. Um. Uh, he kills a bunch of people. He starts. He starts to attack Robin here. Uh, Tyrion does, and um. Before he can get to Robin, uh, Penny like saves her up on stage, yeah. and then uh, scares him off. But you know, damage is done. He already killed like a shitload of people at this rally, and then power comes back on. Uh, in like a slight lead, Jock is one. Ooh. Oof. Uh, yeah. Do bad you look. You have to recount if you get killed after you have cast your vote. I don't, I think, I think, you, I, think I think that still goes through. <laughs> I think it should yeah. go through. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, there's clear, he's clearly like hacked into some bullshit there's and caused some, there's caused some horse shit to happen. So anyways, rioting breaks out because people are like, this is some straight horse shit. Nobody likes this guy. How did he win? Um, so, uh, riots break out in the streets. Grim start like popping up everywhere. Uh, it becomes a nightmare. They have to clean it up. It takes like all night. Uh, a lockdown is declared. Everyone has to go home and not allowed to leave their homes. Season came out. Like, season, came out season came out like a year ago. Okay. <laughs> okay. It came out before last year. I will point that out. Season sure. eight came out after. But oh, man, this is 2016. This came out in like 2018. Right. Wild. Yeah. Or 2019. 
That's when it came out. 2018, 2019. And I definitely believe that it's just like incidental. It is this. It is yeah. like culturally timed for that kind of stuff. Yeah. It was maybe yeah. incidental, but I think it was definitely flavored by. Yeah. You know. I don't know. I haven't watched it. Anyway. Well, it's like that time during The Dark Knight Returns too, where Batman drives his flying Batmobile into the Twin Towers, which released in not September, but like July of 2001. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I have a very important question about Ruby. Go ahead. I have this bowl of spaghetti. Anybody want it? <laughs> or should I just throw it out? Um, oh, no. Just put it on the counter. Put, it, yeah. in the, put it in the microwave, put a napkin over it. Yeah, like that. Um, we'll cut that out. Maybe you. Okay, anyways. Uh, so after all this writing, he's like, calm down. Um, through just like hardcore subjugation under this. Uh, oh yeah, he's a, since he's a supporter of Tyrion Kills him as an example. Oh, damn. He's also there. He dies. That guy. He dies. Who cares? What is his name? Just can't catch a break. Uh, his name is Forrest. Cool. That is that is exactly the reaction I had. When I'm, like, <laughs> uh, I'm like, I'm on the wiki, and I'm like, whatever, put him on the list. F for Forrest. Yeah, F for Forrest. Um, so, F. overnight, big fight happens. Uh, still a bunch of grim. Uh, Robin, having lost the election, and knowing, like, this is some straight horse shit. Someone fucking rigged this. Uh, she goes full... Uh, she goes full illegal and is like, okay, we're just gonna start stealing shit and, like, giving it back to the people. So the stealing dust in order to reinforce, uh, and, like, arm the people to protect themselves. Yes! I'm into it. Yeah. That's even better than what the actual Robin Hood did. <laughs> uh, yes. Um. Because he wasn't stealing munitions. No. Yeah, he wasn't stealing munitions and, like, fucking explosive rock. <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, plan is hatched where they're like, okay, we need to, we need to, like, corner Robin, we need to capture her, so that way, uh, we can sit her down and talk her into getting everybody in line in, uh, in Mantle. So that way, if everyone's in line in Mantle, we can launch the thing, and then after we will launch the satellite, which has the, which will let the whole world communicate again, finally, after, like, two years, um, we will... Broadcast the whole truth to the world. We'll tell everybody about Salem. Tell everybody what's going on. Uh, we'll go full on level. That's Ironwood's plan. Um, so they tell him. So, uh, so they go to capture him. No, no. He knows about Salem. He's part of the inner circle. He doesn't he knows know about that Salem. Doesn't know about the gods. Doesn't know about the. Ground. He doesn't know about the gods. He doesn't know that Salem's a mortal. Right. He just thinks that Salem is like a right. person. He, he's just gonna get the word out. Like, here's what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Based on his. Perspective. He's gonna tell them right. about the maidens. Right. But he doesn't know about all the god shit. It's like, fucking, whoa, what? Um, they've been keeping that secret from him. So, they head to... Uh, so they all load up in trucks individually. They pair off so they can capture Robin. Uh, Blake and Yang are like... I don't know, Robin's pretty cool, right? Like, mm. Blake is like... I really don't feel comfortable capturing her. She seems like she's trying to do the right thing, helping new people. And Yang's like, you know what? I'm gonna stick with you on this one. Let's, let's just talk to her, okay? Let's just tell her what's going on, mm -hmm. and hopefully if we're face up with her, she'll be chill with us. So, um, so they, they're trying to stop by uh, these three. Uh, so May's power is that she can make a big invisible bone. So what she does is that she walks out into the road in front of a transport to stop it. Uh, and then it makes a dome of like imperceptibility around them. And then uh, the rest of the Merry Men swoop in and then like, capture it, knock the guys out, and take all the shit. Uh, she takes it by putting it into her hand. She can put a whole truck in her hand. Cool. Just slurp it up? Yeah, just straight slurp it up. Turns into, like, dust. Goes in. Sure. Um, so they go there. Uh, they spring out, and they're like, hey, we're chill. Uh, and they catch up with Robin, and they're like, okay, hey, uh, what he's doing, what Ironwood is doing, he's gonna launch a satellite, blah, 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 tells him the whole plan. And she's like, okay, uh, but they leave out Salem. They're like, okay, but who is he like working against? And they're like, we don't feel comfortable telling comfortable telling you that much. Like that's a lot. Just know it's for a good cause. We need to get the satellite up so we can talk to everybody. Uh, next thing, uh, so 
she goes away, kind of half trusting what they say. Or well, she te- she tests them with truth, truth hand. She believes them. She's like, still some shit you're not telling me. Uh, so next thing that happens, Jaxney he is instated as councilman. First thing he does, he's like, I'm gonna put Ironwood on trial. Fuck him. Damn. Uh, yeah. So he invites so he invites everybody to his manor. Uh, so all all these characters come there. Aesop's are there as like witnesses, and Ironwood is put on trial in front of the other council, the councilmen and councilwomen. Uh, this is Sleep, Councilwoman Sleep, and Camilla. They're the other two council people. They're there. That's all I can say about. Yo, that's like Black Number Five. There's a few black characters. Yeah, no, that's Number Five. Yeah, and the the point is that the the, the ratio has gone from zero to some and steadily increasing as the series Yeah, we got Trumpet Guy, we yeah. got fucking... There's a lot of Asian. Yeah, we got... There's a lot of pseudo-Asian, because China, most of it takes place in China, right. up until now. Now we're in, like, the winter place, so everyone's super pale. Nordic. Mm. Yeah, super Nordic. We're in, Look green, at Penny. We're in Greenland. Uh, anyway, so, Ironwood is put on trial by, by, uh, Schnee, mostly. Uh, meanwhile... Ruby Gang is investigating around because they're like, this guy, this, they're like, Jock, he's up to some horse shit. Someone this sus. is a fucking rig. So, uh, so they sneak wife past security. Uh, she goes, looks around the city, or looks around their huge manor. Uh, she runs into this. This is Willow. This is her mom. Her mother. Her right. mother finally makes an appearance. She's never appeared before now. Um, uh, she's that alcoholic mom, blah, blah, blah. Super depressed. She's like, you're really soft spoken. Like, oh, I haven't seen you in like, like eight years. How's it, how's it going? Um, being, uh, and she's like, hey, uh, I'm like a super paranoid. I'm like super paranoid. I have cameras like everywhere. I'm just gonna give you. She just gives Weiss a recording of um, of uh, his office where they find like, oh yeah, he met with Watts. Oh. Watts is supposed to be dead. According to them, because he's an old Atlas scientist. Okay. That's why he's a hacker man. Sure. So, uh, yeah, they show him, show that footage. They burst into the trial. It's real dramatic. They they turn the whole thing around on him, on the doc. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is why I'm fucking talking about people. They're trying to divide us. Uh, and he steps up and he's like, what's up? Back to a majority. Actually, he's at a full majority now. Cool. Because yeah, now, now he's like they've right. deposed one councilman, so now he's two out of three. Yeah. Uh, or two out of four again. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's basically got a seat back. Um. At this point, uh, Robin's also there. Robin goes. Robin has been invited cordially. Uh. She gets super pissed at him because he's like, you know, all the people that died like two days ago. That's your fault. And he's like, I just wanted to win the election. <laughs> he's like, I didn't do that. Uh, they arrest him. Uh, uh, he tells him, I'm gonna fucking sue your ass off. He ain't got time for that. Yeah. No, shit's gonna pop off here in a minute. Yeah. Um, Those papers will not. So, yeah. No. So, uh, while this has happened, uh, he became a councilman for like a day, and he, like a fucking dunce, Jock, why? Why would you give him this? Never share your password with anybody. No, no email IT person will ever ask your password. He gives it to Watts. What a fucking idiot. What an idiot. <laughs> he gives him his, like, complete control over, the, like, his fucking president password. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you know how this is, like, in Antarctica? He just shuts down the power <laughs> to the poor people. Just the poor people. Yeah. So that way they just immediately go, like, they wouldn't let us freeze to death, right? They wouldn't just, like, turn the heat off until we stop fighting, right? So rioting breaks out. People like start smashing in dust stores and just like burning them, mm-hmm. which causes them to massively explode. Yeah. Uh, rioting goes way out of hand. Grimmer fucking everywhere. The walls are getting torn down. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Tyrion is going around. He's just uh, he's like stopping people from evacuating. He's just like killing all the guards and leaving ships there, um, or like planting bombs on ships. Fucking shit up real bad. Uh, also, something that we see while this whole trial is going on is uh, Neopolitan is skulking around as one of the waiters, as you can see her eyes. 
sometimes. Um, you see that she has sculpted around. She has confirmed the position of Ruby, who mm -hmm. still has, or no, Oscar has the uh, lamp. lamp. Yeah, magic lamp yeah. with with Jin inside mm -hmm. and one wish main. Uh, so she reports that back to Cinder, who's also here now. Yeah. Uh, and Cinder's like, okay, we just gotta get that. And then she does the thing where she turns into Ruby and she's like, what about Ruby? And she's like, and then we can kill Ruby. We just gotta get the thing first, and we can kill Ruby. Damn, Cinder's the one on task here? Yes. <laughs> Character the Well, yeah, Cinder has her, yeah, she, you know, has her pride on the line. Neo's just out for the fucking vengeance. Also, if she fails to get the relic, she'll die. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so yeah, so while uh, the second wave of rioting is happening in Mantle, um, uh, these guys all go to the ground and they start trying to save people, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, Robin and uh, uh, Ironwood just tells the councilman and Robin, like, okay, no, Salem's the thing, Salem's the thing. They explain all of it to her. They, uh, they team up and they hold hands and do the truth thing. And uh, explain this to Salem, explain Salem to the whole population. Um, it's the old version, not the new version. So they don't know about the god shit yet. As soon as they do this, Oscar and Ruby are like, okay, we should probably come clean with Ironwood, because like, he's kind of spreading a lot of shit right now, and we don't want to have to overwrite that. <sighs> Too bad. Uh, so yeah, they tell him after, and he's like, great, now my life's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> he has that whole arc, except he has to deal with it while also being president of a country that's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how's his life a lie? Because he was, it's because the crows the, was, he worked for Osmond. Uh, yeah, the main thing is that Salem literally can't die. They did not, they were not told that part. Yeah, they oh. also weren't told, like, all of Oz's bullshit. They were also not told that Oz is literally Jesus. Yeah. Or that she is literally, like, God-level powerful. Because they've never seen her before. Um... They've just been, like, fighting here from the shadows the whole time. Um, well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. There That's is... Funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, one thing. Um, so, Neapolitan, right? Um, she's sneaking around, doing a bunch of shit. So, in order to just, like... Fuck with Ironwood, literally just to fuck with them. <laughs> uh, Neapolitan is told by Cinder, like, okay, here's a black queen made out of obsidian. Go put it in Ironwood's office. <laughs> fuck yeah. Just leave it there. <laughs> Amazing. So he, he gets there, he thinks, like, okay, we finally got everything under control, kind of. Like, rioting has happened, but hey, we evacuated a bunch of people. Now, most of the people on the ground are either in a safe district or they're up here in Atlas. Um, and then he comes back to his office, he finds a marker. And he's like, oh, fuck. We just brought, like, 20,000 people into the Atlas, into the Capitol. Uh, that's fucking really bad. They're going to do something, because the vault's up here. The vault's in the sky. Mm -hmm. And also there's the Maiden. And also, like, all them and, like, the loose relic. So he's like, okay. Uh, he calls Team Ruby in um, and has the Aesop's there. And he's like, okay, uh, Team Ruby, here's, here's what we're going to do. You're gonna give me the relic, and we're gonna keep it safe, okay? Um, and oh yeah, so while while that happens, something else that uh, Neo does, Neo also put one of those orb crim grim in there. Mm -hmm. She hid it in the room. Ooh. Whenever they're all in the room, uh, the the grim like just like rolls out uh, or like comes out, and they're like, "What the fuck's a grim doing here?" Cracks open, uh, image of. Salem pops out and just tells, uh, and just says like a bunch of horror shit to, to Ironwood again to fuck with him. Mm -hmm. This causes him to completely break bad because she's like, Yeah, I'm about to show up and just annihilate your entire nation. Mm -hmm. Uh, you fucked up. Fuck you. You're a dumbass. Mm. Uh, at that point, she says, like, Okay, here's what we need to do we need to get the Winter Maiden, we need to open the vault. We need to get the staff of creation, which is what they're defending. Mm -hmm. Staff of creation. We need to get that out of it, and then we need to use it in order to kill Salem. Mm -hmm. That's what he has decided he has to do. Um, even though she can't die. Even though she can't die, he needs to do something because otherwise, literally everything is fucked. It'll just be a, it'll just be beacon all over. Yeah, he doesn't want another beacon. That's something he literally says. Yes. Um. Uh. They say like, no. You should not do that. 
you're going to play into your hands, uh, then they square off with the Aesops. Uh, Clover's not there. Clover's on the ground fighting. Um, but these four are all there. Four on four. They're four on four. They have a four on four, four, on four fight. Um, the Aesops are like, okay, look, this isn't up to us. It's up to you. Whether or not we fight, it's, all, it's fully on you. We will do it if you do it. Uh, and they're like, you have no chance of beating us. We're the best, we're the best hunters and huntresses in Athens. And then Ruby's like, you were, bitch. Damn. <laughs> uh, Damn. Damn. Straight, straight shit talking them. Ow. Um, they have a, they have a cool, uh, oh yeah, they have a cool fight. Um, and afterwards they managed to turn it around all these guys. They're kind of tired though. This is going to be a long night. Uh, this should be known as the long night in Ruby because <laughs> the rest of this volume and season and volume eight are all one night. Jesus, Bruh. like <laughs> shit breaking bad. Sick. It's pretty fucking awesome. It's like twenty four. It's like yeah. Except Jack Bauer is the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> like basically, Jack from... Bauer was the bad guy in real life. Nah. No. Yeah. You're right. Basically, from the turnaround on Jock, uh, is all one night. Um, the build up to that was like a couple weeks. Um, so, and then, uh, also when Salem appears from the orb, um, uh, she says something, uh, Ruby says, we know you can't be killed, but we've seen you fail and you will fail. And then in response, Salem says, your mother said those same words to me. <laughs> and then she just like, oh shit. Gang also is like, what? <laughs> What did you just say to my sister, bro? Yeah. Um, let's see. There is... This is why I have... This is why I need notes for this part. The notes for these two volumes are like 12 pages. <laughs> There's a lot of shit going on. Um, oh, yeah! Shit just got oh, real. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, the, re the last reason they fight, uh, Ruby and Aesop's fight, is because Ironwood goes... Okay. Fuck the council. Fuck government. Uh, I'm just going to declare martial law. And uh, we're just going to launch... Uh, so his plan with the with the staff of creation... Uh, the staff of creation is the thing that's actually holding up um, Alice. Mm. They s public facing story is that it's gravity dust. There's big gravity dust crystals. But it's not enough. The staff of creation is actually the thing that's holding it up. Because magic. Yeah. Um... So what he's gonna do is use the staff creation to instead of launching um, Amity Coliseum, he's going to instead launch Atlas in the atmosphere, so that everyone on Atlas can't be attacked by Grimm, but also leave Mantle to die. He's just gonna leave everyone down there. He's like, fuck it, we'll save half the population. Lord Oh, it's uh, just like Promare. It's just like Promare. Yeah, it's just like Promare. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's his plan. That's why Ruby posed it because they're like, we're not fucking leaving people, man. Um, so they become a wrench, a wrench in the plans. Um, uh, they tell this to John, Nora, Ren, and Oscar, who are back at the, they're not at the manor, they're on the campus still. Um, so while that's happening, uh, they find Oscar's room, it's been tossed, they're like, what the fuck, there's like dead guards, uh, and then they find Oscar, he's like, beat up, he's like, Dude, fucking Nora just bugged me. What the fuck? Oh. Took the lantern. And Nora's like, what? And then John's like, oh shit, I know who that is. And he's yeah. like, that's fucking Neapolitan. What is she doing here? Uh -huh. uh, so they, they track her down, uh, but she manages to escape by uh, turning into guards and then ordering guards to go after them. Because sure. now they're all wanted. Sure. For opposing Ironwood under his martial law. Right. Do they perhaps deduce it by... Partly by the fact that, like, maybe Oscar said something like, well, it was Nora, but she wasn't talking at all. And it's like, nah, dude, she's a fucking blabbermouth. And it's like a joke. Um, no, it's that she attacked with an umbrella. Oh. Because she, she can't form any weapon. Right. Well, that would have been funnier than what I said, anyway. Sure, yeah. It's, it's told a lot faster. Uh, anyways, uh, oh yeah, one of the ways she escapes is that, uh, whenever she attacks Ren... Uh, she's still in Nora form. Um, she does a thing where she just like she's just like, she, like she looks at him like googly eyes, and then he's like, 
and then she fucking like nukes his, his gut and just fucking bam and then gets the fuck out of there yeah. Yeah. just twists his dick <laughs> yeah um oh yeah yeah so Penny has also heard that they're going to abandon Mantle uh, she's not down for this she's, da- she's down with the people and their struggle uh, so uh, she is currently with Winter Weiss's, bro- Weiss's sister and uh, they have been sent to claim the Winter Maiden's powers because Winter is going to accept the Maiden. All right, um, makes sense. That is the old lady. You see, old lady. Yeah, old lady. Yeah. God. So this is old lady. This is this is the Maiden. Um, uh, she's been held like in a super secret underground lab on Atlas, yeah. and the only person allowed to see her for like the past like couple of years has been Winter. That way, she's the only person she'll think of because she's like kind of senile. They, they don't want to, like, straight up kill her. No. So they're waiting for her to just die naturally, hopefully with winter around. That doesn't seem less cruel than what they're doing, but all right. You know. Yeah, you know. It's, it's, yeah, you know. They the have fascist, some principles. You know, the fascists. Some they, fucked up principles. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's, a lot of shit's happening to Ironwood, you know. Like, he's kind of throwing everybody under the bus, but also, like, he's very concerned with fate of the world shit. Fascists like to have that little push, you know? Yeah. Emergency. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, while that's happening, um, Penny's trying to talk Winter out of it, and Winter gives her a big talk about, like, you know, my emotions are telling me not to do this, but my, but my duty says I have to. No matter, uh, so no matter what, I'm going to follow Ironwood. Um, uh, yes. So, Oscar, who uh, uh, gets loose... Uh, he tells these three to go to the manor, or not the manor, they go to Timo, oh yeah, they go to Mantle to meet up with Ruby and all her squad, because they also bust it out. Um, and Oscar goes to the vault to confront Ironwood, because he knows he's waiting there. And he's like, okay, Ironwood, I'm going to talk to you as as like as much like Ozpin as I can, and attempt to calm you down. Um, it doesn't work, so, so Ironwood... Uh, decides like, nope, you're just a kid. You're just a kid right now. You, you are not, you're not wiser than me. Uh, so he fucking caps him. Damn. Oh. Pushes him off the edge of this <laughs> fault. Child death? Uh, he, uh, it breaks his, it breaks his aura. He falls. And then Austin, who's been like dormant for like two seasons, mm-hmm. like flashes forward like a little bit. Like he, he sees the eye thing where they switch, but he doesn't talk at all. And then he uses his cane, and he activates his cane right, by pulling the little breaker on it. Uh-huh. Then the gears spin up, then there's a big flash of light, and he bursts out the bottom of the island. Whoa. And then, like, falls and, like, barely survives. Um, after that, he lands in, like, total slums. And that is he a... lands in a church, in a bed of flowers. And, uh... Pretty much. A, hom- a, hom- uh, a homeless faunus guy... Who's like a uh, who's like a sloth? He gives him some soup. Oh, nice. oh there he you gives go. Him some good old slum gruel. Yeah, yeah, some classic slum gruel. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Yeah. Last thing that happens is, uh, Ruby and Weiss, they go to, uh, they go to where the Winter Maidens held because Penny tells them. Penny. They chase down Penny, and, um, they're going to. They're going there because they know that Cinder is here because they were in Ironwood's place and they know that Cinder's here. They're like, well, she's definitely going for the Maidens. This is definitely a bait. Um, so she, they follow her there. Uh, when they get there, Penny and Winter are fighting Cinder. Uh, uh, it's not going so hot. Uh, they get fucked up pretty bad. Uh, Winter, her arm gets, like, fucked up. She, like, scrapes the meat off to the bone on her left arm. Do you, do you see it? Uh, it's like burnt to bone. Okay, shit. Like she like shoots a fire thing at her, Ouch. or like cuts her with a fire sword. Uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Sick. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh. So, anyways, they're like, uh, she breaks the Winter Maiden Freya out of her pod. Uh, Cinder does, and is like, I'm gonna fucking claim you now. Uh, uh, and then Freya goes, I feel like I was supposed to do something. And then, like, a fucking wind starts to pick up, uh, and she goes full, like, no, I'm a hundred-year-old maiden. 
I'm like a total badass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she creates a firestorm that's like so, so fucking cold that like at one point Cinder trying to break into the tornado like sets herself on fire to walk in and like almost still freezes to death like on contact with the tornado. Damn. Uh, it's pretty fucking sick. She's, she's, just, she's just like burning to death and is like <sighs> trying to get through ice. Um, Penny, uh, Penny as a, as a, uh, as a robot girl, she doesn't feel cold, she fucking marches clean through it, yep. like a tramp, uh, like a true champion, and then confronts, uh, Freya, just as she's, uh, just as she's, like, juicing all her juice out there, and, uh, she holds Freya as she dies, her powers transfer to Penny, oh Penny becomes God. a winter maid, yeah. instead of winter, yeah, 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 fuck winter, Penny, like, Time to go fucking sicko mode on this bitch cinder. Hell yeah. Um, um, and she'll never overheat. And she'll never overheat. Um, yeah, so uh, she scared, So she fucks up cinder. Team Ruby's there. Winter is like, uh, Weiss, you're my sister. But I do have to arrest you, but I'm also mortally wounded. Uh, I'm going to call for help. Uh, you can leave now. Bye. <laughs> uh, so. PTYL. Vertebr- Vertebrate shows up with like Yang on it and all these guys. Uh, all their bros, and they get all the bird birds, they're out of there. That's the end of volume seven. Cool. And volume eight is or later the, that night. Yeah, yeah. Um, the very end teaser of volume seven is like after credits. Uh, there's a giant black cloud on the horizon, and then they zoom, you zoom in on it, and then like there's a, uh, you zoom through like a whole cloud of Grim. There's just a bunch of Grim flying to Atlas. And in the middle of the giant cloud of Grim, there's like the biggest grim that has ever existed. It's a fucking giant leviathan whale that's flying through the sky, and inside of it is Salem. Salem's like inside of it. Her whole oh base is in its head. Oh god. That's the heavy metal album cover. Yeah. That I posted a couple times. Yeah. Cause I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, this looks so sick. It does look sick. So like she sits on like where its brain is and like looks out the front of its head, which is like glowing. Fantastic. It's fucking sick. Um, Anyways. How I've been thinking this like kind of the whole time. How much of Ruby is Death Stranding, and that's why you like it. <laughs> the creature. There's a little bit of Death Stranding. Yeah, it's, like a, it's like a fallen world, and then like disruptions in the Force caused. Volume by six. Goo volume monsters. six is also a giant delivery mission. Yeah, and then like <laughs> and then there's like goo monsters that show up when you're mad about stuff, and dead people are pissed off. And, yeah. Uh, you have to re- you have to reconnect. You know the communication. There's a lot of tar imagery. Yeah, there's a big whale. Yeah, whales. All the monsters are the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of DNA in there. I won't lie. Anyways, so that's time for volume eight opening. This is literally my favorite opening. It's fucking awesome. Volume seven. Uh, so the thing that Crow was doing in the meanwhile um, is he was on the ground fighting. Um, they found him and Robin. They heard about Tyrion. He's going around killing people. 
so they're they're going to lure him out because he's hunting Robin. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to sow even more chaos while shit is completely fucked. These two guys have literally fucked everything by themselves. Literally everything, yeah. Just by just fucking pushing on the right spots. Mm-hmm. You're getting the glow up. <laughs> yeah. Power. Uh, so, uh, Robin, Crow, and Clover, while well, they're all fighting on the ground, uh, they lure out Tyrion. Uh, they captured him by uh, just baiting him into a fight with Robin. Um, and then the Logan prison transport. While on the prisoner transport, Ruby broadcasts to everyone in her crew, including Crow, mm. like, hey, uh, Ironwood's declaring martial law. He's going to abandon Mantle to die. Uh, we need to stop him. And then, uh, so Crow hears this, Robin hears this, Clover hears this, and Tyrion. Tyrion's like, oh, this is going to be good. Uh, Clover's like, I have to arrest you now, Crow. <laughs> While they're on this prisoner transport. Uh, anyways, Robin's like, no, that's some horse shit. I need to fucking kill Ironwood. Uh, so she goes like, no, fuck Ironwood. I'm literally going to kill him. Because uh, he's, no- he's done nothing good for me or my peeps. Uh, so uh, big fight ensues. Uh, at which point Tyrion breaks out of his, his, uh, faint, his handcuffs. Uh, he kills both pilots, and bef- uh, and Crow's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" As they're like crashing, he's like, "I'm doing our goddess's will." Bef- right before they fucking crash into the ground. Whoa. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, the fight continues on the ground. Robin gets fucking laid out and is like unconscious and like fucked up uh, from like Tyrion's like scratching the shaver. Uh, Crow and Clover and Tyrion have like a three-way fight. Where they're constantly like changing alliances because like they don't want him to get away, but he doesn't want either of them to get away. It gets weird. Right. And it's like that fight he just wants to kill both of them. Right. Yeah, it's like Pirates of the Caribbean too. So, yeah. It's like a weird multi-stage fight where they kind of all like change alliances like three times mm-hmm. that you can only that you just get from them looking at each other. Right. I don't mm. really understand that, but it sounds fuck. It sounds like a fucking rule. It sounds like it's, it's, the it, it's three dudes who all want to kill each other yeah. and are trying to get an advantage. Even though these two are like total, even though these two are like total bros because they've hit it off because they they can't he cancels out his bad luck so he's finally found a friend. Aww. Yeah. So, anyways, um, uh, how this ends is Tyrion. Uh, Tyrion at some point steals Crow's scythe, uh, oh, disarming him. No, his mecha scythe sword. Yeah, his mecha scythe sword. Uh, he uh, fucks up uh, Clover, whose weapon is a fishing rod, by the way. Okay, <laughs> what You is get that? it. What is that? Uh, Aesop's Fables. Aesop's Fables. Which one? Uh, it, okay, so fishing rods come up in several Aesop's Fables. Okay. Yeah, and he's the leader right. of the Aesop's. It's a recurring right. thing. I see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like how in Fables there's one guy who's Jack. Yeah. Right. So how it ends. Yeah. Is Crow uh, Crow's weapon is used by Tyrion. Uh, Clover makes a last stand against him, even though they're both disarmed. Uh, Tyrion fucking stabs him, mm. runs him all the way through, and then is like, "Well, the police are here. Crow, you can have the fall. Goodbye." Punished and he, Crow. Uh, and he just fucking uh, yeets with all yeets as the last man standing. Crow just like collapses at his dead friend, just like, "Fuck." Punished Crow. Shit's bad. So, so he did. So he dead. Uh, so yeah, Clover's dead. Yeah. Uh, Crow and Robin get rearrested uh, because she openly declared on a radio, like, "Yeah, fuck Ironwood. We're we're going full rebel on him." I ship Crover. Rip in peace. Yeah, rip Crover. They're a ship. That's tear, that's a real thing. Tear him up. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Rest in peace. She was pretty cool. And now Sign they're a team of four. Clover. Yeah, now they're a team of four, which is why they could fight Ruby and all that because yeah. Clover was only one. Yeah. Anyways, Down. love teams of four. Down. Love to see, love to see the. Love teams of four. Love to see the board just get it, just split the teams of four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love to, love for it to expand and contract. Yeah, that's the size of the board. So first thing that happens is um, uh, Neo and Cinder now having stolen the lamp from Oscar and all these guys. Oh no! They, got uh, they take it. They take it to Cinder. They give it to her, and they're like, "Yo, we're loyal, and we got our shit together." We didn't fuck up too bad. She's like, you know what, Cinder? You're pretty good to me, actually. Uh, I'll give you some special treatment. Uh, someone 
speaks out against this, I think it is Watts like is like, yeah, but she lost it in the she gives she gives him one like fucking look and he shuts up. Is then Watts like fucking guy crashing a thing? No, that's Tyrion. He was in the fight with all these guys. Uh, Watts has just been like on the loose, hacking on the run. Oh, okay. Basically, he's like hot. he's like going from different safe house to safe house, just like turning off security drones. So none of the el- turning drones none against of the them. elite four are dead yet. Uh, no, none of these elite four are dead. Okay. At the moment, neither is Cinder. You know, she's all. You know. Is Hazel doing anything? Uh, Hazel, Hazel is currently. Um, he's about to do some stuff. Okay. He's about what to. Are- Mercury and Emerald up to? Uh, Mercury and Emerald make their first appearance in a fucking long while. Yeah. Because, uh, like, after season five, they just weren't around. Yeah. And then in season eight, they show up and they're mixed in with this Motley crew again. Okay. Is there a reason they fucked off? Um, no. They were just with Salem the whole time, basically. Gotcha. Oh. And then they were in transport after these two left. Uh, Tyrion and James Watts. Uh, they showed up later. So they should have with the main force. Cinder lost her crony. Yeah, lost Cinder lost her cronies to Salem, basically. Lost all her buds. She was all alone. Um, Emerald is still, like, loyal to Cinder. Really? She doesn't really like Salem. She thinks Salem's scary. Yeah. Mercury, he's real edgy. He, he's pretty down for Salem. <laughs> yeah, because his, his dad was an assassin. That's where he's got his legs from. Uh, his dad trained him from birth to be an assassin, so he fucking killed his dad. Because <laughs> his dad sawed his legs off and gave him robot legs. What a dick. Brutal. That's, that's that guy's origin. Uh, yeah. What a clown. Um, okay, robot legs are really cool, though. Robot legs are pretty it's cool. It's like, what's the clown? Yeah. Oh, before, yeah. The, before the mending. Okay. Um, they go pick, uh, crew gets together, they pick up Oscar from the slums, they all meet in one place with, uh, Pietro, uh, Palandina, and they're like, okay. We need a fucking plan, because shit's fucked right now. We got people to save we got people to save on the ground, and we got like big evil demons to stop who are currently like sieging the entire city. Uh, Atlas has a big shield around it, like a big shield dome, so it's mostly protected right now. But currently, like, mantle is just getting completely fucked. Um everyone's like evacuating into like a dormant volcano. Oh boy. Um uh, yeah. Good idea. That sounds like it will play well for them. This can only lead to good things. No, it's fine. That doesn't. That, okay. It doesn't go off. Okay. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. Yet, this season. This season. This still season two more to go. go off. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um. Yeah. Um. Do, 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 do. Yeah. So they meet up. Uh, the crew meets up with the happy huntresses, and they're like, "Okay, we're on your side now. What do you want us to do?" Um. Uh, some some of the gang they want to go they want to help the happy huntresses and some of them they want to go stop Ironwood themselves or no no so the two plans are either help the happy huntresses because they're trying to evacuate people and save as many people as possible in the mantle yeah the other plan that um that Ruby um Ruby Penny and some and some of the others want to do is they want to rush the launch of Amity and they're just going to like. They can't get it off the ground and into orbit, but they can get it high enough up to where they can send out a message. Sure. They can get it up there for a few minutes. Um, that has some steps to it, but their goal is they're going to tell the whole world, Salem's here, in Atlas. Mm-hmm. Please come help. <laughs> uh, and that's their plan, and they're also going to tell everybody at Salem and say, like, if you can't come help, fucking arm up. Yeah, yeah. Bunker down. Because if she wins here, she's going to just roll over to the rest of the planet. Mm-hmm. Um, and they basically can't, if they don't stop her here, shit's fucked. Um, so, they um, break off into teams. Yang, uh, Yang, uh, yeah, Yang, John, and Ren, they form a smaller team. They go to help Robin and all the huntresses with Oscar. Uh, everybody else, being Weiss, Blake, Ruby, John, Nora, and not Crow because he's in jail, and they go off and they're going to, also with Penny, they're going to launch Amity. So how to launch Amity is they have to get permission from Ironwood's computer, so they need to break into Ironwood's room, or a part of the room on Atlas, uh, and then they're going to get permission to do that, upload it to Penny, so she's got a passcode, and then they're going to launch it by just like floating it close 
to the mine where all the dust is stored, and they're just gonna blow the dust up and launch the whole place into orbit, and they don't need to worry about it staying intact. Cool. On the way back down. That's their plan. He writes off on it, he's like, this is a lot of work, just fine, let's fucking go. Um, so they break off. Um, first thing cover, uh, uh, Yang, Ren, and John, their team, they're evacuating people, and uh, they're getting real fucking worn out. He's using a lot of his stealth powers, and John's juicing him a lot, mm-hmm. so that way they can get as many people out as possible without having to fight. Right. Um, so while they're doing that, uh, after, on like their third run, um, they get uh, uh, some Grim are coming towards them, and they're like, "Oh shit, ready to fight!" And then the Grim like, like get scared of something else, and they fucking run. And they're like, Grim don't have self preservation when they're that small. That's bad. What? That next thing. And guess what? It's like impossible. It's it's a, it's a giant fucking. It's a grim that's like twelve feet tall and like walks like a person. Yikes. Uh, it's called the Hound. Yikes. Um, it is sent by Salem. I know it's hard to see, but it's it's black. It's, it's, a, it's a werewolf. It's a werewolf. It's a giant werewolf. Uh, a big bad wolf. Uh, it's called the Hound. Uh, Salem says, like, oh, I did an experiment, and I made this fucking hound. Uh, she gives him an order okay. to, to just go retrieve Oscar. It's like, she just goes, fetch, and it leaves. Yo. <laughs> uh, it go, uh, it come, uh, It just comes down, grabs Oscar, uh, doesn't, like, bite in him, it just fucking scoops him up, and they're like, what the fuck? Uh, and then they, like, get ready to go attack it, and then it just holds up a claw to his fucking throat and, like, grabs him by the head. Uh, <laughs> and they're yeah. like, uh... Hmm. You might have to edit in some, uh, some visual aid for that, because the camera can't see that shit at all. Okay. Um, I can barely see that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's just a big grim. It's a big grim that walks on hind legs like a person. Uh, it can also evolve on the fly. So, it... So... Uh, after, like, getting some distance between it and the group, uh, it sprouts wings and, like, takes off to fly away. Um, they chase it down. They chase it down through, like, the whole fucking tundra on motorcycles. Um, it's, like, calling Grimm the whole time that are, like, coming to help it, uh, and, like, fighting them, wearing them down over time. Uh, it eventually gets away, and, uh, all their bikes are destroyed, so Yang, John, and Ren are stuck out in the middle of nowhere. They're like not even in connection range. Yeah. So they have to hook it back themselves before they freeze to death. Because uh, when they shut the heat off, uh, it is so cold in Atlas that they have to, where are you going? Uh, it's so cold in Atlas that they have to constantly heat the atmosphere. If they don't, like it'll reach like such a low temperature that you will just die outside. Oh. Like even after like a few minutes, you need to have an aura in order to be outside. And it will slowly drain you. Mm. Yeah. yeah. There are places like that on Earth where if you just breathe in the air unfiltered, it will freeze your lungs and you die. Yeah. yeah. Um, basically, if they didn't have John, they'd fucking freeze to death out here because he's a mega battery. But does Aura help? Or are you just <laughs> fucked there? <laughs> yeah, you gotta have to give us that part uh, of the lecture. Uh, turn into Souls 102. Got it. Um, nah, that one's actually gonna be about other Ken. Okay, yeah. So, um... While out there in the middle of nowhere, uh, Ren gets gets real fucking pissed off. He's just like, God, we're way over our heads. Holy shit, we should not be doing this at all. He, he, he literally goes like, Ruby's like a kid, and we're listening to her. Yang, what the fuck? You're the older sister. Take charge for once. Um, and they have to take shelter. They take shelter in like a, a small place while they repair their bike. Uh, Ren is outside just fucking brooding in the freezing cold because he's that pissed off. Um, and uh, that's the majority of what they do if you want another thing later. Oh, they also find a river of tar that is like flowing from where the whale is. It's like, it's dripping so much tar from it that it's formed a river that is Yikes. flowing towards the city. Yikers. Um, they're like, that's bad. We need to get back and tell somebody about that. Yeah, that's, that sucks. Yeah. Um, so while doing that, 
the main gang, they have to go do the main thing, which is they got to launch Family Coliseum by getting to the terminal. Mm -hmm. So to get to the terminal, they use May Marigold, who is the Invisigirl. Girl. Mm -hmm. a girl. They use her, uh, and Weiss's family has like a shipping thing where they have pneumatic tubes that go up to the flying city. Okay. So uh, they sit in the, they get in the pneumatic tubes, launch themselves up, and then they stealth their way around with Penny as a guide. And they get into like an inner computer place. Mm -hmm. uh, while in the computer place, um, they get the code, but whenever they go to leave it, it's like a big vault with an electric door. Um, uh, the ace ops are there. Uh, they lure Penny outside and then lock the rest of the gang in there. Oh. Yup. Um, uh, Nora's being all emo about being useless. She's like, God, fuck. My boyfriend will fucking. Mm. She's real pissed off about it. She's building up. Uh, Penny, being the Winter Maiden, uh, and also Penny, uh, is like pretty badass. So like all four Aesops like can't take her down together. Yeah, you're <laughs> Even though like they have like a, this dude, Marrow, he has a fucking broken ass ability where he can go heal and point at you and you stop. And as long as he's pointing at you, you just stop. Like like Sit Boy. Like Sit Boy, because he's a dog. Like Yasha, yeah. He's a dog. Yeah. He's a dog in a military. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, so he's pretty cool. He does that a few times to like grim, and then someone else comes up and just fucking swipes it. Cool. Um. Yeah. Then they have a big fight. Um. And Nora goes. All I do is just tell stupid jokes and hit things with a hammer. Uh, and hit things with a hammer. And then she takes her hammer and just fucking smashes this electric door. It juices the fuck out of her. Uh, which does the same thing that it does to uh, Hazel, where his where her veins get like filled with all the dust that's going through the door. Uh, she gets mega juice from this because it's also her semblance, so she has like double power. Uh, and just smashes clean through the door, uh, and then immediately collapses in horrific pain. Jeez. Uh, and she's like fucking out. Uh, with everybody out of the vault, the Aesops are like, "Fuck it, we gotta pull out." Type of plan B. They take. Uh, while fighting Penny, they steal one of her swords by ripping it off her back. Mm -hmm. And then they leave. And then Blake goes, that was suspicious. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, it was. And then they, uh, and then they burst out of there and uh, they head back to MVD Coliseum. They split off into some more teams. So are they going to make a Nega Penny? Um, there is. So, so yeah. So something has happened. Uh, in the mean, in the interim, um, that the Aesops were doing while they were doing planning, uh, they captured James Watts, so they've got him working for Ironwood in like captivity, uh, and they give him sword of Penny, and he's like, okay, so this, so the remote control on her swords goes both ways, so he's going to attempt to inject the virus from the so from the sword, uh, in order to take control of Penny. Uh, that's Ironwood's plan, because he needs the Winter Maid in order to get the power of the staff. Of the staff. Um, yeah, so, uh, meanwhile, Penny goes to deliver the code to Amity Coliseum, and the rest of the gang, except for Yang John. Yeah, right? Yang, who's in the middle of the fucking... Yeah, who are in the middle of nowhere. The rest of them go to the Schnee Manor, uh, because, I mean, now Weiss is like the head of the house, basically. Fuck yeah. Uh, and she's like, Everybody else is gone. Everybody else is gone. Them off. Uh, the only ones who can step up are like her mom, who is non-functional, and her dad, who's in jail, and her sister, who's in yeah, the military. Yeah, which is in the hospital right now. Which is also in the hospital as a military. Yeah. What about her twink brother? Uh, her twink brother, uh, no one likes him, so he's not in charge. <laughs> oh, okay. She has age superiority. Yeah. Uh, so they go there to hide out. Um, um, this guy right here, Klein, he gives her some treatment. And uh, then the next thing that happens is, oh yeah, so we go to Winter, who's in, uh, who's in the ICU. Mm -hmm. She's she's getting like robot parts put on her arm. Jeez. Yeah. Um. So while that's happening, uh, oh yeah, I forgot about that whole fight. Uh, that was a thing. Uh, thing earlier. The way they captured Watts is um, uh, whatever they give the they gave the broadcast like a while back mm -hmm. uh he falsely claimed that the uh that the andy coliseum was ready to launch mm -hmm. 
Mm. And Amityville Coliseum was a secret even from these guys. They didn't know that. Yeah. So James went there to sabotage it. Uh, he went there alone. Ironwood confronted him. They had a big solo one-on-one fight cool. in the Coliseum uh, while it's like activating and causing a bunch of gravity changes and shit. Right. Uh, it's cool. Basically, what happens from that is that Ironwood gets his, his arm trapped in a shield thing uh, that he pit, that he has put down. And he's like, okay, cool, time to take this place down. Uh, and then Ironwood just fucking, like, burns his arm off to fucking get free. His just, flesh arm. Yeah, his flesh his arm. His last flesh arm. His, his one remaining flesh arm. Wow. Uh, and he just charges him and fucking decks the shit out of him. Amazing. Beats him. Uh, it's pretty awesome. And I love beating nerds. <laughs> yeah, he just beats him like a fucking nerd. It's the rest of the show, he has, like, a black eye. Wow. Fuck him. Um, yeah, so that's how he gets captured. Anyway, so he's working for Ironwood. Ironwood now has two metal arms. Cool. One black and one white, just like his guns. Well, it's like his... <laughs> that's sick! Yeah, so, I love that. so his weapon now extends to his arms. So fucking cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, so while doing that, these two, he's declared martial law. They go to him in the hospital, and they're like, he's like gotten out of intensive care, and he's like, okay, I'm ready to command again. And they're like, no, you're not. Oh. No, you you fucking gone off the rails. We need to stop. He just pulls a gun and caps this guy. <laughs> he just straight kills him on the spot. Wow. He just says, "Fuck you, martial law. I do what I want." Jeez. I know what to do. You don't. Never trust the military. You're not even hunters. So this guy just dies. She she's like, "You do what you want." <laughs> she's like, "I'm an Atlas. I'll I'll stay here. I guess it's fine." This dude straight dies. Wow. Yeah. That's why, that's why I printed these two, so that way I could kill one of them. Right. <laughs> that's the main thing they do, is establish, like, no, Ironwood's fucking crazy now. Uh-huh. He just guns a man down in public. He's going off the rocker a bit. Um, yeah, so, at Amity Coliseum, you got Penny, you got Pietro, you got Maria, who's been hanging out with Pietro, you can fix her eyes, whatever. Sure. Um, and they're the only ones there that are going to watch Amity. Uh, meanwhile, Cinder... Uh, is like, has heard about they're gonna watch Amity and is like, we need to stop them. We need to go get Penny. So she recruits uh, Neo and Emerald. They go, uh, they go to Amity Coliseum. Big fight ensues. Maria actually busts out her sights and starts fighting with Emerald? No, not Emerald. She starts fighting with Neo. And even though she's super old and like can barely see and fight, uh, she's still badass enough to fucking put up a fight with Neo. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Why not? Well, they do the designs. Here's the designs of Put the Mercury on the other side. Mercury? Yeah, just put a new Mercury on the, on the right. Here? No, on the right of Emerald. Oh, got it. Yeah, here's Mercury. Uh, he just gets a jacket, whatever. He looks almost exactly the same. I almost didn't bother bringing him. Uh, she gets a cool winter coat. And is, uh, is generally like, shit's kind of fucked. Um, I don't know about this thing. <laughs> she ha- she starts thinking like that, like, I don't know about this one, guys. Oh, like, I don't know about this mass terrorism stuff. But, mm-hmm. I mean, Cinder saved me, so I guess I'll work it out. Um, she knows, like, a life death, basically, in so many words. Yeah. Uh, anyways, they fight. Uh, Penny is, like, getting hacked the whole time, so she keeps, like, like locking up and not being able to do shit. Uh, but they manage to fight them off, not before they, like, destroy most of the Coliseum. And destroy one of the the launchers on it. Oh, no. So uh, Penny has to like go fly underneath the uh, the Coliseum and like lift it with both her robot powers by having oh, jet boots yeah. and also being a maiden yeah. and being able to cast an entire storm into the bottom of this island. Fuck yeah! Uh, they managed to get barely the information out. Uh, it's a recording of Ruby it's being like. Uh, Okay, so there's this woman named Salem. Uh, she controls all the Grimm. It's real bad. Anyways, so it's kind of hilarious and charming, but also, right. like, uh, that's when her dad pops up and goes, What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he sees her daughter after, like, a year. He's like, Where is she at? What is going on? And then it cuts off after, like, a minute, because they barely got it in the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Um, then, at that point, yeah, so... Uh, next thing that happens, we're about half hour through the fucking volume. Jesus. This is a fucking dense volume. So, the River Grimm that uh, these three saw, Yang, John, Ren, um, they're like broadcasting 
on their on their cell phones, like, hey, anyone that can hear it, any military, there's a whole river of ground headed for the city. It's going to fucking kill people. Someone needs to come out here and contain it before it gets to the city. Um, by the time the Aesops get around to hearing it, because they are, oh yeah, Penny after that transmission, she's like out of energy, she falls to earth. So Aesops, they're patrolling around the outside of the city trying to find her. Um, so while patrolling, they run across these three, and they see the river gram, and they're like, ah, fuck. That's bad. That's really bad. And, That's then, bad. Uh, and then they arrest these three, and basically as soon as, while they're doing that, uh, the river gram, like, becomes sentient, oh. and sh- shoots itself as a cannon at Atlas, like, at the bun- underside of Atlas. Ooh. Does it stick? Does it uh, catch? Uh, enough of it, like, a lot of, while it's just spraying all over the shield, uh, a bunch of the like burrow worms, they dig into the bottom of the island Uh-oh. and they like uproot one of the shield generators and like Uh-oh. it starts to like all collapse. It's all falling into mantles, killing even more people in mantle. Mantle's like half destroyed at this point. That's an it's issue. now even more destroyed. That's an issue. Um, and as soon as this happens, then the entire air force, which has just been like orbiting and sieging, uh, just like fully swoops in. The giant whale leviathan that Samuel's riding it just like crashes into the island and lands on it. Uh, yeah, at this point, all the people that are in Atlas, who one day ago, like everything was fine. They were just having an election. <laughs> they were just having an election for like a council and they're like, yeah, whatever. Like they say people, they're still having like fucking picnics. They don't even know what's going on. They're all so bougie, they don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. They don't even check their phones. Uh, uh, they're like, why did the island just shake? <laughs> And also, why is the shield down? Uh, at this point, they're like, okay, everybody go into the subway, because shit's going to get really fucked right now. <laughs> um, so the whale starts releasing, like, spewing out, like, entire lakes of, of grim oh, onto the boy. thing. And they're, like, running out of its mouth um, as it's just, like, coughing up blood that turns into more monsters and mm-hmm. starts running out. Um, the entire Atlas military fucking lands, like, because they're all been orbiting. Uh, and just like shooting into the crowd of Grimm. They all land and like unload entire fucking armies of them. Uh, and they all start digging trenches in the fucking fields. Cool. And we have a whole like World War, we have a whole fucking World War II battle scene of like D-Day, but with fucking Grimm fighting, fighting against all the Atlas military with their giant robots. Fuck. Uh, it's totally sick. It's badass. Awesome. Meanwhile, Hound delivers Oscar to Salem. No. Uh, S- Salem. When she gets Oscar, she's like, wow, you're fucking hiding behind a little kid? What a bitch. What a bitch. Straight calls him out. What a she's bitch. like, okay, Hazel, you know your beef? You know your beef with this guy? Where uh, his beef is that uh, his daughter uh, went, to a, went to an academy and died in training. Uh-huh. He's like, fucking child soldiers, I swear to God, I can't believe you do this. Yeah. So he's just here to for fucking vengeance. Uh, he just, like, beats on and tortures Ozpin in order to get how the lamp works. Because they don't know how it works. Uh, what happens to that? Okay, yeah. So, Ospin's scheme that he tells to Oscar, because he's still kind of in his head. He's back in his head now. Uh, and he's taking he's taking the pain, most of it. Like, whenever he's in being tortured, he switches back to Ospin. Oh, it's like Yami Yugi. Yes. Yeah, dude, it's like Yami Yugi. He takes the pain. Yeah. Takes the pain. Um, so, yeah. That's happening. Hazel's torturing him. And... He tell, uh, and he, Osman is like, okay, look, I'm not going to tell Salem the password. I'm going to tell you the password. Do with it what you will, but believe it or not, she's not telling you what everything. Mm-hmm. You know, he reverses the thing he did. Mm-hmm. And basically convinces him over, the scene, over like multiple scenes, like, hey, she's not, she's not out for you, buddy. She's out for herself. Um, uh, this, Emerald also hears this. And is like, yeah, I'm pretty anti Salem right now. Like, first bet, I'm gonna go off. Yeah, I'm gonna jump right. ship. Yeah. Um. So they go. They go to the gym, and um. Uh, uh. He tell. Uh. He tell. He lets Oscar summon the gym. They don't ask any questions. So I still got one question left. But he's like, okay, well you were telling the truth on how it works. So, I'm just gonna trust you on that one. Um. So, that happens. He and Emerald help him break out. Uh, meanwhile, 
uh, the three that were captured, Yang, John, Ren, um, they were captured by Aesop's. Uh, Winter is also in there with them. And they're like, hey, Oscar, who's really important, because he's Osbin, has been captured by, by Salem. And they're like, we need to go save him. We'll do it. And Winter's like, oh, there's currently a mission by Ironwood. We're going to nuke the whale. Okay. <laughs> like, it's on, the, it's on Atlas. We're going to plant a nuke inside it and blow it up. That's our plan. That's what we got. So, what, do they call, what do they actually call it in the universe? They call it a bomb. Um, but, you know, the implication is... Right, it's it's, like, it's, it's like, a heavy word. Yeah. It's a heavy word. Yeah. They don't just say, like, a bomb. They're like, no, when they speak about it, it cuts to the bomb, and it's, like, huge, and they're, the like, bomb. still making it. Right. Um, it's totally sick. So anyways, they're like, that's going to happen in, like, less than an hour. Uh, but if you want to go in there, Winter will, like, pull rank... Tell them, no, release them, let them do it. Let them go save Oscar. So she pulls rank on all of them. They're like, you're going straight up against orders, but okay. You pull rank. Uh, she lets them land. They go in. Uh, this is when shit kind of pops up a little bit. So Ren, Ren, John, Yang, they sneak in. They find Oscar. They find Emerald. Emerald, Yang has some fucking beef with her. She's like, Slaps her arm and is like, what the fuck? We're not working with her. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Hazel, who's also there, uh, uh, Salem, Salem shows up, sees them, immediately summons Grim from the ground to just pull them all to the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, Hazel's like still standing and is like pretending like he just got there. And then uh, she's like, go put Oscar back in his fucking chamber. Uh, so he goes up to Oscar and he's like, he, hand, he like, goes to pick him up out of the thing, out of the arms, picks him up by the scruff, hands, shoves the staff into his hand, and goes, no, no more children. Puts the kid down, turns around, stuffs fucking, like, five sticks into each arm, and then just, like, runs up and just sucker punches the shit out of Salem. Fucking Fuck. straight one punch yes. her. Uh, her, like, head disappears. Whoa! And she goes, like, flying, like, down the whole fucking, uh, like, they're in, like, an airspace. Oh, my God! Uh, I mean, she, she, like, immediately starts, like, cracking and getting back up. And sure. Like, and it's like, you fucking bitch, how dare you do this shit? Yeah. I'm gonna kill all of you. Because Salem is Vandal Savage, and therefore indestructible. Yeah, so, um, Hazel is, like, fighting her. Austin's like, the rest of you, get the fuck out of here. We're about to pop off. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, this is when the coolest shit ever happens in Ruby. Episode break. The rest of the characters all leave. Um, the characters, uh, Winter and the Aesops, they land. They're unloading the bomb. They got a bunch of guys. They're gonna do a strike team. They're gonna go in there. And then, then, uh, the episode starts. And you have this warning pops up. We have... Volume 8, episode 10, Ruby, goes full sicko mode. Warning, <laughs> this content contains flashing lights, which may potentially affect photosensitive viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. That's how you know shit's gonna pop Holy off. Fuck, they're gonna make the flash, they're gonna make like the Porygon yeah. flashes to give Japanese kids seizures. Yeah, so they start unloading the bomb, and then fucking white appears all over the whale. Boom, the city, the city, like the whole skyline is fucking dead white. Everything gets whited out. Ironwood's like, what the fuck? All the people on the ground, dust is settling, the whale's fucking gone, all the forces are scattered, what the fuck happened? Uh, Ironwood calls into Winter, and it's like, good job on a successful mission. And she's just like, we didn't even fucking plant the bomb yet. <laughs> Ironwood's like, what? Is it our girl? No, it's fucking our guy. It's our guy. It's our guy, he used his fucking staff. Guy. Whoa. So, okay, in his staff, okay. how it works is, over all of his lifetimes ever, yeah. he made a weapon where, over time, every strike he does to it, half the energy goes into the weapon. Oh, fuck. He has never used, he has used it once. Jesus. The one time he used it is when Oscar was about to die and falling through the thing, and he pulled the thing on the weapon, and that's how he blew out the bottom, right. without any aura. Uh, the second time, he used, like, fucking almost all of it. Yeah. Uh, he's like, yeah, that'll be enough to where Sam will take a few hours to get up. Uh-huh. Uh, the whale is gone, and, like, a third of the island, like, evaporates. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. 
Um, not, not a great look, Oscar. Ouch. That's some casualties. Anyways, uh, it's totally, it's totally awesome. It's the, it's the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. um, totally awesome, sweet Alabama liquid snake. Yeah, yeah. So, at that point, um, this guy dies. Uh, the rest of them got, uh, most of the people got away. Um, Salem's fucked up, but obviously, you know, you should come back. Rip that guy. At some point, rip that guy. He was a real one. He went out like a hero. Um, this kill, this is not kill the hound. The hound is sent back out to get, to get Ruby before this happens. Oh. Everyone is sent back out to do something right before this happens, usually, right. or just about. So, Neo and Cinder, they go, and they're going to, they're going to get Ruby along with, I think they're going to get Ruby. No, they're going to collect Penny, that's what they're doing. They're looking for Penny. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Mercury and Tyrion, uh, they're sent off. Uh, they're sent off into distant lands to for future plans. So they're out of the rest of the season. Okay. Bye, Mercury. Yeah. Bye. Um. Uh, our girl, she's joined. She's joined up with the squad. Yay! She's, she's over here guy. now. She's over here now. Heck yeah! Oh, she's a good boy. And she's a good boy now. Face turn. Um. They all meet up back at uh, Ruby HQ, which is now the Shinee Manor. Yeah. They're all still there. Nora's still real fucked up. Um. While waiting there. Goodbye. While waiting there. Um, um, Penny uh, crash Penny crashes into the manor, okay. like into the like front yard of the manor. Mm. And uh, they get her, they start trying to help her, but she's like fucked up in a robot, so they don't really know what to do. Right. They have like a normal doctor, and they're like, Can you just make her stop leaking? Because she's like covered in green goo and they don't know what that does. Mm. <laughs> Uh, she's also like ticking out and tweaking really hard yeah. because she's like Being flashing red eyes yeah. and saying like I have to fucking go unlock the vault. I have to do it. I have to do it and kill myself because uh, that's the order that was sent to her by Watts. Um, okay, yeah. So Watts, he's in prison with Crow and Robin at the moment. Uh, Cinder and Nia, they go there. They're going to rescue Watts in order to control in order to hopefully control Penny mm -hmm. and then hopefully get the thing. So they go they go there, they bust Watts out, uh, who is also there with Crow and Winter. They incidentally get broken out because they just fucking smash in there with maiden powers and like sure. fuck it, smash and grab. Yeah, let's go. Uh, so those two get out and at this point Winter's like or not Winter, uh Robin's like, Okay, let's go kill Iron Man. Sure. And Crow's like I'm in agreement at this point. <laughs> I have not been treated well by this man. No, um, on the way up, they run into Winter, who is transporting uh, Maraboy, who uh, who spoke out against Ironwood and like was trying to tell the Aesops to not to like stop following his orders because he's clearly lost it. Uh, right before he gets executed, Winter just like punches him and pretends to arrest him so he doesn't die. Sure. And pulls him into an elevator and is like, look, you almost died, you fucking idiot. Okay. Look, here's what we're gonna, and then Crow and Robin, like, hold him up at gunpoint, and they're like, and then she's like, okay, we're on the same side, okay? Mm -hmm. Alliance. So, a plan is hatched. Uh, Ruby, Team Ruby, uh, they're basically lost on what to do, so they come up with a plan where they're like, okay, the only way we can think to save all the people is we need the staff. We have Penny now, and we can kind of keep her under control because her human half can like keep her alive. Yeah, Winter. Winter is now back in action. Winter's back in action. He's got a robot arm. Yeah. Pretty cool. He lost a lot of shit. Yeah. Um, but not her sister. No. Yeah. Um. So they had to they they had to plan while Nora is still recovering, and they're like, okay, we're going to go. We're gonna get take Penny. We're gonna take her to the vault. We're gonna have her open the vault, and we're going to use the staff of creation, which um, also, which uh, they know they can use to make anything because Jim told them in flashback, in the Great Lost Fable. Uh, so they're going to use it to save Penny, uh, and they're also going to use it to save everybody in Atlas and in Mantle 
by summoning portals to get them out of here. Okay. They're just going to abandon it. Um, so that's their plan, to get everybody out. Um, the way to do that is because, at this point, I was like, what if we need Penny? What if we need Penny? Mm. We want to save the mantle. She's the key. We need Penny. She's literally the key. He knows, just he knows that Team Ruby has it. So he's like, you know what? Uh, you have an hour. If you don't give me Penny in an hour, or call me, or try anything else that isn't doing exactly what I tell you, I'm going to just nuke Mantle. Jeez. Yeah, he's just like, yeah, I'm just going to push it out an airlock and let it fall until it hits the ground. Rough night. Rough night for the people down there, let me tell you. I mean, there's not a lot left, but there's still, like, a sizable refugee camp in the crater uh, with all of these people in it, or these merry men. No, not the cute, not the floof. Yeah, not the floofy little Fiona. She's so cute. She's moe as fuck. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, that's his ultimatum. So they have their plan. Um. Meanwhile, uh, Nora's all fucked up. Her and Ren haven't seen each other. This has all been a night of hell. Mm. Uh, Nora's has some character development. Ren has some character development. They go to each other. Yeah. And uh, John's also there healing Nora. Cool. He's like, okay. He's like, you know what? I'm sorry, Nora. Uh, I fucked up. I've been a bad teammate. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have broken off from you. I shouldn't have been like, yeah, you know what? We shouldn't do anything. No, you think you were right. I think we had to do whatever we can. That's all we can all do. Because everyone here, everyone here is just as lost as us. We're fucking uh, like we're as good at as any to help these people. And then Nora's like, yeah, I'm. Like, I'm glad you're glad you're back here. But she gets all she gets all emo about like, oh, I don't know. How can be is like a partner to you. Mm-hmm. Says that it's cool. John is like, I'm gonna give you guys a minute. <laughs> and he just like he just like anime scoots out of there. Like I'm fucking. This is not a conversation for me. No. Um. So anyways, um. Nora starts crying. She has self worth problems. So she's like, whenever he's not around, I feel like I don't know what to do. Cause they're like they're like two halves. Yeah, they're like attached. They've like grown. They've like grown independent. Uh, and Ren's like, you know what? You do plenty on your own. You're totally, you're totally cool. She starts crying and he goes, boop, on a hit under her nose. Oh. And I'm like, dude, what a god. I love this man. <laughs> he immediately jumped from like mid tier to like, damn, he's top tier character. That's all I needed. I was like, oh. But then they're like, you know what? We're going to sort this out and then make out. It's cool. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, so. The What's plan? happening with the dog? What's with the dog? The dog's with the dad. <laughs> <laughs> the dog is okay, people. The dog Players is fine. Right? As long oh. as the dog's okay. Okay, so. Um, oh, what about the uh, what about the uh, lesser than dog characters? Uh, black guy and Disco Pinkie Pie. <laughs> oh yeah, they were on the front lines in the trenches. They're in the fucking trenches fighting. Oh them. yeah. They were in, like, military outfit, because they're straight up in the military. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Good for them. Uh, Watts has been rescued by Cinder and is, like, on a rooftop, uh, at which point uh, Cinder uh, laments the fact that Salem's been all fucked up, and he's, he's just like, God damn it, I fucking hate everything. Uh. And um, she gets real pissed off at Watts and is like, You're a bastard. You're just, uh, you're just a cheap fucking bitch. Uh, you don't know how to do it. Uh, all you can do is like trick people and lie. Yeah. And she's like, I'm the one deserving power. Salem should have me as her favorite. Because yeah. she's kind of like the bitch that Salem just sends out to do shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this point, uh, he go, uh, he tells her, quote, you think you're telling everything just because you suffer. But suffering isn't enough. You can't just be strong. You have to be smart. You c- can't just be deserving. You have to be worthy. But all you've ever been is a fucking migraine. Uh, uh, and she's like about to fucking throw him off a ledge. Wow. Because he can't bring Penny to her. Because he's like, that's not how hacking works. I can't just like command her. I like gave her a problem that she has to deal with now. She's like crippled. Um doesn't fling him off a ledge, is like, fine. You know what, the last thing you're gonna do is I'm gonna get you into central command, because like, everyone's fucking leaving at this point. Mm. Everyone's been evacuated, uh, except for all the military personnel. They go to central command, they kill everybody in there. There were a bunch of gag characters in there, they did really funny bits oh. uh, with all the ASOPs. 
Uh, you see them all visibly dead. Oh, fucking dead. Fucking dead on the ground. There's blood. All their shit's burning. They leave Watson there and they're like, okay, you're just here. Just fuck everything up. We're going to go. Uh, we're going to go get uh, Penny. We're going to go to the vault. We're going to do all this shit. Um, does Watts have a semblance? Watts does not have a semblance. Okay, he's just smart. He's just a, he's just a guy. Okay. Uh, I think. He just has connections. Uh, he has, the, he has connections. Dallas. He's a big hacker, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So gang's back together. They go out uh, to do their big mission. Um, yeah, okay. So their plan. Uh, it's kind of unfolds in a lot of stages and comes out really quick. So, they lure Ironwood out, they have Penny, uh, they say that they're just going to send Penny there, when in actuality, they send an airship with, uh, uh, Emerald, who's up here now, uh, they have, like, Emerald, John, Nora, Ren, they have, like, all, all these guys, and also Winter is there to receive what Ironwood thinks is Penny, mm. but is, uh, but Emerald, like, mind fucks him, I think that's just, uh, so that he doesn't see them until it's too late. Okay. Once they've lured him out, and Winter's gone traitor for him, mm. uh, they lock Ironwood down outside, and the rest of them, uh, Team Ruby and Penny, they fly up through the bottom of the hole in the bottom of the vault, so they haven't had time to repair. This has been one night. Uh, mm. They go, they go to, directly to the vault. They get Penny to open it. They get the staff, uh, clean, easy, and they summon this dude. Last paper. The last, the last paper. Oh God. This dude. His name's Ambrosius. Uh, he sounds, uh, he sounds like Troy fucking Baker. Okay. He's, he's not. He sounds awesome though. Cause he's just like, oh, what's up? I'm here to make shit. How's it going? Um, time stops and they're like, okay, we have two things for you to make. Uh, one. See that girl over there? And they point to Penny, and he's like, oh flies over there and looks at her and is like, this is interesting, what I gotta do? And I'm like, okay, we need to make an identical duplicate of her using just her robot parts. Because Oscar warns them that this dude loves fucking monkeys pawing people. Yes. So like, super specific, like, make an exact duplicate of her, of Penny, with just her robot parts. He's like, what about the rest? And they're like, do what you want. Do whatever you want with it. He's like, Mm, I'm tickled by this. Mm, you you got to my funny bone. I like it. So he makes an exact duplicate from a robot parts, taking all the robot out of her and leaving the person. So he takes all the robot parts that have all the hacky bits in there, yeah. and it turns into a robot. And then on what's left is Penny in a human form. She gains like human limbs. She has flesh. She has flesh. She's got like a warm inner set, She's inner sanctum. She's a real boy. She's a real She's girl. A real She's a real, she's a real Pinocchio. Yes, and then the robot version of her, like, freaks out and goes, like, full spaz and tweaks on her and, like, reaches out to her face and then just, like, collapses and dies. And she looks at it and goes, uh... She, she has, like, a fucking moment. And then uh, she sees Ruby and is like, Dude, I'm still alive, holy shit! And hugs all of them. She's like, dude, this is what hugs feel like for people, people? Sick. Oh, wait, then they can't, now they can't upload the Winter Maid into the cloud. The, no, they cannot. <laughs> She's still a Winter Maid. She's still a Winter Maid, by the way. Um, she can also still summon swords, but they're now like hard light swords. Cool. Uh, they're still the same color, though, so it's cool. They're all green. Um, so then they're like, okay. And then they summon Ambrosius again. And they go, here's the second witch. And he's like, you guys again? Okay. This usually takes a while. <laughs> uh, so he, so they're like, okay, here's what you need to do. You need to take a, you need to make, uh, can you make portals that will just take everybody and spit them out in vacuo, which is the desert place mm -hmm. uh, that we haven't been yet. Uh, and he's like, well, yeah, I mean, if you just get it to where a bunch of portals can all go out to one portal and somehow they don't all intersect. And they're like, okay, okay, never mind, never mind. Now, what if we send everybody to a central place? And then, from that central place, funneled them into a big door. He's like, that sounds more reasonable, but what kind of place? This is kind of, like, where on the map? And he's like, they're like, oh, like a vault. Like this place. Because oh. the vaults are in, like, a wheeled, they're in a weird, like, uh, sub-dimension mm -hmm. of reality. It's like, it's a flat door and flat wall. 
and inside there's like an entire world okay. that isn't anywhere on the planet. So he's like, okay. Uh, and they're like, yeah. So what we want is a bunch of doors to pop up all over, and they like have a bunch of places marked on the map because everybody's in subways or in the crater. We want them to pop up all over the place, and they take you to a subdimension, and in the subdimension you can go to a big door, which will let them out in fact, it was a nice one-way ticket. Um, he goes, you got it. So, snaps his fingers, does it. He's like, come back to something more interesting. <laughs> Pieces out. And I'm like, I think that worked. Oh, God, please hope that worked. Yeah. So they all go, oh, before he's, oh, and then he comes back just for a second and goes, by the way, in that uh, subspace, don't fall Okay, bye. And then he disappears. Oh. And they go, that's bad. Yikes. Anyways, they, so all these portals appear. Um, meanwhile, uh, John or Ren, uh, they've subdued, uh, they've kind of fought off Ironwood for long enough. Uh, they, uh, oh, Crow, Robin, and Winter, not Winter, Crow, Robin, and Marrow, Dog Boy, mm -hmm. um, Mero's holding the Aesops by pointing at him. Meanwhile, they are disarming the bomb. They're getting ready to get rid of it. That way they can't do fucking the whole city. Okay. Um, they head. <clears throat> so, while doing that, they... Oh, yeah. So, while doing that, Watts turns the security on them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, like, AI, like, AI robots and all that. Sends robots to go stop them. Interrupts their plan to stop the nuke. And um, they load the nuke onto a plane. They're, these guys break out. They load the nuke onto a plane. Harriet has gone fucking off the wall. Uh, she's a bitch. So she's like, you know what? It's not about, it's not about what's right. It's about fucking duty. And Ironwood told me I'm going to fucking nuke this bitch if they try something. Uh, and Zen, Zine down here, he's like, you're just, I'm like, okay, calm down. He's real Zen. He's a real dude. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so that's what's currently happening. So, anyways, that happens, um, how that ends up is Crow, Robin, all of them are trying to stop them, uh, they arm the nuke, but, uh, Zine, ultimately, he flies the ship away and, like, enraptures it in a bubble with his aura, because he can extend his aura, mm -hmm. and, uh, he sacrifices himself in order to save the people. Damn. Damn, mm -hmm. rip him. Okay. Uh, that's, that's her boyfriend fucking dead. Uh. You, you find that out the last second, you're like, damn, this sucks for you, I guess, and also him. Yeah. Damn. That guy. Here are the people. people. So yeah, like, most fucking Aesop squad is all dead. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So at this point, what's going on? Okay, yeah, so Team team Ruby, uh, they head inside the inside the teleporters. There's, like, a bunch of walkways, all uh, Rainbow Road, to a bunch of connecting platforms that all go to one big one. With the big door, let's see on the back you open. So they start. Ten minutes, goddamn. Shit's gonna pop up. Um. So John is going to send sends out a broadcast. This is like, okay. So now that we've removed the staff, the city is gonna fall. Don't worry, because and then Watt switches his broadcast off. <laughs> Just to be a dick. Yeah. Um. He shuts down all communications right when he does that, and they're like. Uh, well, I guess we gotta deliver the message on foot. So they start just running, like, sending all the people they have on their team, just running through the portals and being like, okay, hey, everyone on the other side of this portal, come through, come the, through the portal. We need to get the fuck out of here, because in, like, five minutes, the whole city's gonna crash into itself, and everyone's gonna die. Uh, so they start doing that. Um, Winter goes to stop Ironwood, who, the last effort is going to, uh, he's come down to the vault. They have they have a big final duel. Um, uh, and they're fighting while this is going on. Um, while in while in the place, they're funneling a bunch of people through. Things like are going pretty good. They have but then Cin uh, Cinder and Neo they appear. They like come through one of the portals. They see Team Ruby. They see Ruby. Uh, they haven't seen her in like fucking five volumes. They're quarry. They're fucking quarry. It's right there. And guess what? She has two. She has two. No, she doesn't have two art. Yeah, she has. No, she has the. She has the one artifact. She has the, the staff. Yeah. She has it with her. Um. So yeah. 
Uh, Cinder just straight up, they just straight up gank the team. Oh, damn. Uh, a big fight ensues um, during, uh, and then whilst uh, it starts, episode ends. Next episode. This is the last episode. Oh, God. <sighs> Volume 8, episode 13. Ruby goes full sickle mode all over again. Warning. Uh, warning. Content warning. This episode contains themes of death that may be distressing for some viewers. Oh, God. Viewer discretion is advised. Yikes. Yeah, I see that. Um, so, this is not good. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to like this one. So, anyway, oh, so, uh, halfway point of the episode, um, they're all fighting. Or not halfway point. At the start of the episode, uh, uh, Yang... Uh, Ruby, Blight, they're all fighting Cinder, or they're all fighting Neo. Cinder's fighting uh, Penny and Weiss and John while these guys are all running around trying to get people through as fast as possible because it's like it's an evac zone and as soon as they popped off, they just started blowing shit up and tossing people over the sides. Yeah. And whenever they get tossed over the sides, you see them fall and then they disappear. Hmm. Like they turn into dust and they're gone. Yikes. As in, like, how Pyrrha died. Yeah. Or, like, how Ozpin died, like, five times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so they see that, and they're like, oh, God. Uh, so, fucking Neapolitan, uh, she, she guns at Ruby. Uh, Yang, watching her back, uh, takes the blow for her. Uh, she doesn't get impaled, but she gets fucked up real bad. And then uh, Cinder follows it up by, like, blasting her. Uh, and she goes off the side, falls, <laughs> deleted, she's gone. <laughs> no! <laughs> Rip that fucking paper! <laughs> okay. Okay. So anyways, that happens. Blake sees this. <laughs> Blake goes full sicko mode. Blake starts making fucking clones like it's nobody's business. Uh, yeah. Now the show is just Rube. <laughs> so, so, uh, oh. Ru- Ruby is also like, oh god. Uh, they're fighting Neo. Um, uh, they get yanked. Uh, they keep using hot, they keep using the people who's trying to get through to distract Penny. Penny's all about saving people. Yeah. Uh, so while they're doing that, uh, they blast Ruby off. But Yang swings down, catches her. Uh, on her grappling hook, and the cinder just fucking flies by and cuts the rope. They both fall. They, they both get deleted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Weiss sees this and is like, what the fuck is going on? Oh, God. John also sees this and is like, oh, that's really bad. She had, like, the eye thing. That's, like, important. Yeah. Uh-oh. Um, uh, Nora and Ren, they go through the other side. Uh, Emerald also goes to the other side. Officer also goes to the other side. Or through Vacuo, because on the other side, Ren and John are boosting so that they can try to keep this place as stealthy as possible. When they pop out to the other side, they realize uh, they're in Vacuo. There's a fucking desert storm going on. Oh, so they can't connect to the city that's nearby, and they don't know where it is. Uh, also, all the people are like piling up out here and it's getting harder and harder to mask them. So Grim is going to start showing up. So Grim starts showing up because he starts fading. Uh, shit's fuckaroni. <sighs> Anyways, uh, while fighting, um, Penny is fighting Cinder. And, uh, yes, so, uh, as a, as a, uh, as a bad as a, as a badass kind of finale to their fight, um, they're fighting. Uh, Penny is like bleeding out, about to die. She's been fucking impaled. Uh, John is sitting there like, "Fuck, dude, I got, I gotta heal you. You're human now. I can do that." And she's like, "No, okay, you gotta get as many people out of here as possible. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make my last fucking choice." So, anyways, cut. Iron Hood, Winter, they're fighting. Oh. Winter on the fucking back foot, oh. about to go down. And then. She gets fucking winter fire eyes. Yes. So Penny fucking Penny fucking just passes oh on to her God. in the middle of the fight, and she goes, 
She goes, I can't fucking believe you did this, Ironwood. You did this. You kill Penny. Uh, fucking straight slam a cow, fucks him up, smashes him into the ground, awesome. and is like, I gotta go help them. Goes straight through a portal, uh, and starts fighting Cinder. More shit's going on. Uh, uh, Neo fucking grabs, uh, Neo, like, knocks Weiss off. Weiss grabs her. They're both hanging off the ledge. C Cinder goes down, looks at, looks at fucking Neo hanging off the edge. Sees Winter, uh, sees Weiss also there, disarmed. She just looks at her. It's like the same shot from season three, and she's like, <sighs> flips up her, uh, then just straight up mercs Neo on the spot. Whoa. Just like point blank spears her. She goes falling down. So does Weiss. Winter goes to save them. It's too fucking slow. They hit the barrier. Whoosh. Oh, whoosh. Jesus Christ. Whoosh. Whoosh. Oh, God. This is one episode. This shit's whack. John sees this. He's like, what the fuck? Oh, this lady died a while ago. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, anyways. Uh, all these people fucking... Uh, uh, they're like, oh shit, what the fuck? At this point, they're like, she's like, I'm pretty satisfied with how this is gone. She goes back, she has the staff now, she's got fucking riddle thing, uh, she's got the lamp, she's got fucking, she's, she's got her maiden power, and at this point, Salem lets out a fucking roar that's so loud you can hear it in the other dimension. Okay. She's like, well, my boss is back alive. Bye. Goes back through. Goes to deliver, uh, comes out, right where Ironwood is, sees him fucking on, her, on his last legs. Goes like, oh hey, check me. Kills him on wow. the spot. Finally. Dead. Fuck that guy. Yeah, I the word. he's dead. She delivers all the shit to Cinder, or all the shit to Salem. Mm -hmm. uh, Cinder gives her, like, here's staff creation, here's this. I'm also your maiden now. What's up? Oh, you're like, minute. You can start recording on your phone. Yeah, I know. And just have it be a... Anyways, so that hap- so, and Salem's like, good job, Salem. You are now my main bitch. She's like, I'm sorry, but James Watts died. Cuts to him, and uh, she made- so she used staff creation in between Salem showing up, mm. and just made his room locked and filled with fire. So you see him burn to death. <laughs> wow. You just see him banging on glass trying to get out as he's burning to death, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> so anyways, both these bitches over here now. Sucks to suck. Um, and they all, uh, in, in the last ditch effort, as the last person uh, from the city goes through, uh, who is, uh, uh, who is Winter, uh, the, the realm immediately disappears. The last person there is John. John just falls and also disappears. Uh, just like rub it in, dude. Uh, the end. That's how it ends. Deal with it. <laughs> See you in like two years. Wow, Ruby, my favorite anime from Japan. Not kids though. Not kids. Not stuff. kids. Stuff. We got rid of like the whole top row. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> What happened? The <laughs> so what happened to Ruby? it must be it must be like season nine's gonna open and then and, and there's gonna be some like it's gonna be like open on Ruby somewhere like Where's talking Ruby to on? some like the god of life or something like like what? we don't see them they're gone no but they're right it's, yeah, it's like it's left open but like well, but like dead. also they're gone they're Did they uh, fucking, the last thing that happens is winter is like is like she comes through it's all desert and like. The Grim are like swarming the crowds. It's like a fucking sandstorm. He just watched her whole like family get killed. And uh, she just fucking like breaks down and like smashes the ground crying and then it cuts the black. Jesus fucking Christ. So, so, tons of open questions. Yeah. What the fuck has happened to the bitches in the desert town? How are they gonna get saved? What the fuck happened to Team? Think... What the fuck happened to Ruby? <laughs> team Ruby. The name of the I show, think, they're just gone. I think the town being saved would be out of theme for what's his just Perhaps. Happened. Our guy, Jean. Our guy, Jean. Also gone. As well. Gone. Additionally, what the fuck Salem knows about Ruby's mom? Oh, yeah. So, that actually that actually is covered a little. That oh. is hinted at a little bit. Okay. Um. So, the hound. 
They corner it in the mansion. Okay. I forgot to forgot to mention that. So the man it comes to pick up Ruby. They all teamed up to barely fight it and kill it. Okay. Uh, when they uh, when they crush it a lot and beat the fuck out of it, the tar like melts off and reveals and like the skull falls away. And there's a person inside. Whoa. A person with silver eyes who's a faunus. Oh. And is the one who's talking and like controlling it. And he's like all mind fucked. Okay. Uh, and then they just like put him out of his misery. Jesus. Uh, afterwards. Uh, Ruby explains this to Yang. I can't point to them because they're dead. <laughs> uh, but she uh, explains this to Yang. Yang doesn't get it. Ruby is like, that's why, that's why. That Fonis had gray eyes. And, she's, and Yang's like, that's weird. Maybe that's a thing. She's like, no. That's why she wanted me alive. That's what she did to her. Question mark. So what's up with that? So probably at some point she'll come back as a Grim? That's my, that's... That's the okay. theory? Yeah, that's... Or she's already dead. Yeah. And was a Grim at some point. That's the two working theories. Well, maybe she's the whale. Fucking nuked. Gone. Who knows, baby? Um, what the fuck is up with the kid? I mean, we know what's up. He made up. it through. We know what's up, but like... Everyone else is, how, how, is either implied how, or shown to make it through. How are we going to deal with this kid I still think. being inside Austin's head? And what the fuck do we do with that going forward? Yeah, they're all these are all implied to have lived other than her who's deaf. Well, man, remember when the biggest issue in this show is that Piranico's died? <laughs> remember when this big show, the biggest issue in the show is, who am I going to bring to prom? <laughs> <laughs> remember when the biggest issue in this show was that, like, during the OP, their thumbs are sticking out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's the Ruby lecture. That's what, what happens. Yay. Stay tuned for season nine. Stay tuned for Ruby 102 in like six years. Baby, it's red like roses. Red like roses. I'm the king of Ruby. Fuck. Where's the this hood? Where does this hood start and end? This hood is so weird. Loving the outtakes here. Yeah, it's all in the outtakes. Okay, hold it aloft. And then scream. King Ruby!